Welcome aboard Eastal Air. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday morning special. Welcome aboard Etal Air. What that guy said. He knows what he's talking about. Hope everybody's doing good, having a nice start to your weekend. Kicking things off nice and early today. Going to get in some lovely plane game. A trip around the world in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't know how far we're going to get. We're just going to go. I have uh, hopes. But I, <laughs> but I don't know how realistic they are. We'll see. We are on the clock. The real world clock. But I'm not going to rush. Want to have fun? Hang out with some friendly people on the internet and fly some cool virtual airplanes. Peepo screaming. Is that the sound that is made by people who have not yet gone to bed when I start streaming? Welcome aboard Etal Air. At 8.40 in the morning. <laughs> Welcome aboard Etal Air. Might need to turn that down a little bit. While we're here, I'll go ahead and do just that. May have cranked it a little bit. Accidentally. Okay, that should sound better. There we go. All fixed. Anyway, what's up, everybody? Sir Butt Shuffles here. Saha Muse. Kiyoko. What does this do? Oh, look. People arrive. Streams online. <laughs> so happy to be here. Hey, Dreji. Auxilia, I scream right before we crash. But not a second sooner. A sim wave and a co high to each of you. Hi, Rizzy, Mr. Super Smiley. Sawdust Bunny is gone. Get out of here. Jason Time Wizard, hello. Good morning, Ira Kind and Evanito. James W. in the house. Forever again thinks something is funny. Hi, Arborax and QT, etc. <laughs> like, not even more than two letters now before I give up. 
What up, Professor Shippost? Inglisabeth is a on the scene. Hi, Crumbly Cakes. Ethyral. Morning, El Toasto. Remo says, hi. <laughs> Hello to Cordial Villain, Ace Tech. Was not sure what time the stream was today. Guess what? It's now. Morning, post-apocalypse. John. Antagonist. Nightbot says, yo. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Etal Air. I paid good money for these seats. Better be a smooth flight. We'll see about that. We'll see. I'll do what I can do. Ooh, that's the, mu that's the music I want to hear. Let me take a look at you. Welcome aboard, Etal Air. How do you know that I turned around? How did he know that I just... He's looking completely the opposite direction. Okay? Not even peripheral vision. I did this. And he saw me. I don't know how. Hey. Stop licking your paws. <laughs> Talix is inappropriate. Please stop streaming at nearly 2 a.m. Syntax. Now I get to be the annoying person that just goes, Go to bed. Hey, why, why are you still awake? Huh? Look, I'm I'm awake before 9 a.m. Like a normal person. I'll be sleeping during the flight, so I don't need the in-flight meal. We will have an in-flight meal today. It'll be um, one of the leftovers from the last in-flight meal. But actually, I think it's one that you guys didn't see. So pretend like it's new. However... The reason you didn't see it last time is because when I got home with it, I noticed that the box was already open. So I'm debating internally whether I want to eat it or not. Because, like, there is that 0.004% chance that someone manipulated it in some way. But it's entirely more likely that it just came unsealed. I was going to be earlier today, but uh, I stirred in my sleep at like I woke up about three hours after I went to bed and I could not go back to sleep for like close to two hours so I just kind of looked at my phone <laughs> I turned on some music I was like listening to Spotify and I was like you know what this is kind of nice actually because the reason I woke up is because I only was awake for less than nine hours yesterday like I, I had less than nine hours of consciousness before I lied back down to try to go to bed so I could wake up early for this stream. Um, so I was like, you know what, this isn't bad. I was just kind of just hanging out, lying in bed, listening to some tunes, scrolling Twitter and looking at social media, what people were saying at like 2 a.m., see who's streaming, watched a couple people stream for a little while, lurking. I was like, this is kind of comfy, actually. And then eventually I went back to sleep. Then I woke up uh, like an hour later than I wanted to, but I was like, you know what, that's, that's fine. Chat will appreciate that because if I if I started an hour and a half earlier than this, <laughs> then I'd get even more angry responses than I am right now. We have got South American beans today. We are taking a little well Texas from the previous streams. Uh, we got the big old. I got to get another cup. What kind of cup can I get that represents our our flight? But uh, these are Colombian beans today. So we got some South American beans in the cup. They're pretty good. These are sharper. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not like a coffee connoisseur. This is like... It definitely doesn't taste burned. Not that kind of sharp. But like... The, the initial taste is where the first hurdle is. Tannic? Maybe. Acidic? Perhaps. It's not bad. I kind of like it because it's got a it's got a little jolt to it. That that little first taste is a little bit more like oh, I am drinking coffee. Gotta talk. So why can't you entertain me for free on my schedule? <laughs> I'm doing my best. Uh, I only have one flag for today. Unprepared streamer is expecting mail, literally today. 
So we'll have a few more. And one of the flags I could not obtain. Well, I could, but I just didn't want to spend $40 on a single flag. Hopefully that's understandable. So I'm going to try and figure out what I can do to rectify that. I prefer medium roast in general. I don't know what this one is. I have a the bag, uh, but I left it, apparently. Oops. But they are Colombian beans. What's up with the flags? Do they have a meaning? Yes, they do, Rizzy. When you hear the meaning, you are going to think, why didn't I think of that? These are the countries that we have landed in. So, I am going to try to represent our trip around the world via the flags. They, the two go very hand in hand. The number of times that people will ask what's up with the flags today will probably be substantial. I, I really thought that was going to be more of like a... 2 plus 2 equals 4 type of situation, but it, it turns out that it's actually very confusing for many people. Hey, Tox, what's up with those flags? <laughs> I know you can't really see them too well. I can only identify one. So far, we have landed in Mexico. We have landed in Honduras. And we have also uh, landed, well, obviously we landed in the United States. But since we're not done with the United States, um, I thought that we should probably wait. We've also landed in Costa Rica. So you've got Mexico, Honduras... Costa Rica is a little bit more obvious if you can see the top, and I'll change the camera when we do the changing of the flags. But we're going to South America today, starting with a trip out of Panama. So we're starting in Panama City. And I've already got it queued up, as it happens. So this will be our first flight. I'm really excited because we're going to get to fly the Pits Special. We got the Barnstormer. And I think we've got some liveries to choose from as well. So our first flight is going to be fairly action-y, fairly sightseeing heavy, and also very short, nice and brief, good first flight of the day. Time for some sick stunts. It kind of is. Panama City has a bunch of custom POIs in the game by default, so I'm really excited about this. Um, I actually just really like the red one. If I had to pick a different one, I like the all gold. Because it's kind of gaudy. The blue and white looks pretty good too. Green and black looks pretty good. I do like the green and black one. Hey, what's up, Alistra? Also, thanks for beginning a stream subs. Uh, Photo Heathen is back for 33 months. Much appreciated, Photo Heathen. How you doing this morning? Saha Mew sub for 38 months and says last sub was for goodest boy Midas. This one can be for Etals. <laughs> very, very nice of you, Saha Mew. Thanks for sticking around for over three years. Jerk9880 says now this is the start time I can wake up for. Yeah, I was actually going to be even earlier. Give you guys a little bit of mercy. Appreciate you, Jerk. Forever again says good morning, Etal. Good morning yourself. Forever again. Jack M88, almost two years of sub. What up, dude? And El Pino Grande with a fresh sub. Good morning, and welcome to our stream. For those of you who are new to this particular game slash series, uh, I'll explain it to you real quick. We are doing a trip around the world in real time, real weather, and real time is, is kind of a double meaning there. Number one, let me see, I don't think we need much fuel for this. This is gonna be very A to B flight chat. The, the flight time is 17 minutes. It's gonna be longer than that because we got a bunch of cool waypoints here. We're gonna be flying along the Panama Canal and checking that out. So this is just gonna be like a, for funsies, Panama Canal um, close up and personal trip specifically to scope it out. Uh, but we're flying in real time. So we started in Las Vegas, up here in McCarran. And we have been going A to B, and wherever we land, we take off from. And I'm doing the whole thing. So that, that real time means that it's all uh, satellite imaged. It's all Earth scale. So... At oh. Um, so about the sightseeing that we were... 
<laughs> going to do. Apparently, it is a thunderstormy kind of day. So I don't know what to expect that's going to look like, but we're going to find out real soon. Live weather chat. <laughs> I knew it was going to come eventually. Remember last time? Do you guys remember last Saturday? Everywhere we looked, I was like, and the weather today is kind of partially cloudy. Whoa, it's crazy. For the next seven days in a row, it's going to be thunderstorming here. Remember I said that? I just kind of blanked and forgot about that since then. It was true. The weather did not, in fact, change. It is still <laughs> thunderstorming, apparently. Okay, let's see. Weather in Panama City. Panama City, Panama. Wait a second. It says, hey, ooh. I think uh, that because of the, like, internet, it's a little bit delayed. So I think it was storming and it cleared up. I think it was storming an hour or two ago, yeah. Saturday is... Wow, it says 18% chance of precipitation. We must have caught it right in the storm when, that, when it happened. Like, right now. Alright, let's jump in. Let me just double check. A couple things. Because at the moment, it's only... According to Google, it says 85 Fahrenheit, which is 29 Celsius, and uh, mostly sunny is the 10 a.m. Oh, 10 a.m. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, um, should be two hours ahead, right? Panama from Pacific should be almost 11 a.m. there, I think, right now. So that's our weather. We're going to say this is tail number. Is this, this is around the world day five, I think. And this is flight number SA, well, this is not SA, this is actually NA, the final North American flight, technically. This is NA-11. Okay. Call sign. Minus. Failures should be off. Weight imbalance should be perfect. Just go ahead and put myself in the, in the pilot's chair. Um, as far as the liveries go, I think there's a number of good ones here. I do like the black and green, but I think considering the stormy conditions, the all light... This is the lightning bolt, as far as I'm concerned. Let's go with that. Okay. Then I'm going to spawn at uh, just any of these parking spots. So we can go from a cold start. It's going to be... It might be noisy. I don't know. I have no idea what to expect. It's going to be very interesting. Flight conditions are all live. I think we're ready, chat. Gotta be flying with a little bit of help from an iPad GPS. Gonna be scoping out a number of buildings after we go past the Panama Canal, so let's jump in. Good evening, Captain Talks. Can I come aboard? You can indeed. Fix it. Is it Malice? Or Mayas? Can someone in chat head to Panama City real quick and tell us what it's actually like outside? Maybe. <laughs> Probably is somebody out there. Because they got two hours on me. We got people all over the world, chat. Only a little over half of you are from the United States. The United States is certainly a majority. But it's not as... Well, where's the storm that was promised? That looks very clear. I think the game lied to us, chat. Because Google says, uh, sunny. Mostly sunny. I'm definitely on live weather. I think I just screwed up the time just now by clicking buttons. Hold on. Yeah, I think I just screwed it up. How do you undo what that I just did there? Why does the... <laughs> it's a field truck already. I guess you can just tur turn it back? There's no way it's 10.14. Time in Panama City. It's 10.55. I don't know what it's doing. Maybe it doesn't know what time it is either. There. Let's just do that. Looking at a live camera feed on the Panama Canal. It's sunny. Yeah, that's what I 
thought too. And then the game said it was going to be a thunderstorm. I have no clue. But yes, it should be 10.55 uh, a.m. Or is this my time? It should be 3.55 UTC. Panama City, Panama time. It should be 10, um, 56 a.m. local, which is what we got. I don't think it's 355 UTC. I think it's 450. Chat, the earth is a mystery. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I forgot one of my, uh, my apps. I got to get the headband, the tiara. Yeah, they're on, uh, they're on central time, which is interesting. Does this work? It does. Fantastic. Yeah, Panama City is central. There also is a Panama City, Florida. Weirdly enough. I'm so glad that Italics moved to Europe and can stream at EU-friendly times. <laughs> I do my best. Alright, let's jump in now. Now that I've kind of made that little course correction. The weather will still be the same. So, uh, I remember this plane being somewhat difficult to get started. I'm going to have to do a little centering here, so ignore me while I peek my head outside of the cockpit itself to take a little <laughs> look around. Just pretend like I've got one of those, you know, like at the zoo, where um, you can, like, be a pedestrian inside the exhibit, looking around inside the dome while the animals are walking around you. That's kind of what we're doing right now, except the animals are people who work on the pavement here, getting ready for... Pushback. Actually, is anybody in front of me? Now, let me change. I can click two buttons. Look to the center of my screen. Boom. There we are. Okay. We're in. Looks good. Game's running smooth. Take a little look around the airport. So, where we landed, I will go ahead and show you on the map uh, where we are. I think we are in Cologne right now, in Panama, just to the north of Panama City, at the top end of the canal. And we did a little touch and go. We landed here at night, so this is going to look completely different from when we were here last. Let's take a look at that, actually, as we speak. I'll kind of show you. I know you've seen the regular map, but... Here is, um... Here is Cologne, so this is where we are. We are in... Aeropuerto Regional Enrique Adolfo Jimenez. Next to Cologne, Cristobal, and Coco Solo. And then Cativa would be right here to the east. Thought that was Germany. Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> Imagine we're at the zoo. We are at the zoo. In manner of speaking, yes. Uh, so where we landed the last time, we did a touch-and-go right here in Fuerte Sherman. And we touched down on this airstrip. It was very dark, and I almost clipped these trees on the way out the other side. Uh, and then we went around the Bahia de Manzanillo. I'm doing my best. You can see, like, the wave breakers here. And uh, as we take out, we are going to be trying to go over here. I don't know how to say this U. Is it, like, Gatun? A small town on the Atlantic side of the Panama Canal, located south of the city of Colón, at the point at which Gatun Lake meets the channel to the Caribbean Sea. The town is best known as the site of the Panama Canal's Gatun Locks and Gatun Dam, built by the United States between 1906 and 1914. So what's interesting is we've got Gatun Locks on this side, and then we've got another um, series of, of cargo loaders on the left. So it looks like they work both sides of this, but they both empty into uh, Lago Gatun. Which is pretty cool. So we're going to have a lot of water here. A bunch of little um, towns and communities kind of peppered along the Panama Canal. And then the quote-unquote Panama Canal will be here, right? So we're going to go kind of just circle around, spend our time however we want. This is only a 30-minute flight. And then we're going to be heading into Panama City itself, uh, going through the strait here, 
until we get to um, Kakolai. I assume, I don't know, that I with the little apostrophe on top. I'm not really sure if that's a hard I or like an E sound. Diablo. That's a cool place to live. Coco Lee? Okay. I didn't know if it was an E or I sound, so I took a guess. Because in, in English, a regular I there would have been an E sound. So it feels redundant to change the dot to an apostrophe. But that's how it is. So today I learned. Um, and we're gonna, they've actually got a couple of airports here. I think we're gonna be landing in this one, so we're gonna just blast past the airport, scope out Panama, uh, check out these really cool little island resorts that they've got going on here. This is a really neat, um, highway that they've got, that instead of, <laughs> I love for this highway, they're like, we can't go through, people live there. Uh, how far around can we go? Yeah, that'll work. That probably took like four times as long as it would have ordinarily to just connect this spot to this spot in a direct line. Maybe even more. Nice DX story FPS. Thank you. Yeah, I get really good FPS in Google Earth. All right. So I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of, uh, of where we are going to be heading. And also, real quick, I need to do some things... There we go, that you can't see, so that there's no spoilers. Okay. No spoilers, secrets. And uh, now we can start turning the plane on. All right, to Gatun we go. The plane, go to the checklist. We've got, uh, before takeoff, check your brakes, and also, check your cam. So, there is the camera angle you've been used to. Hello, Grug and Vids Mod Squad, what's up? Bye, see you guys in 30, 40 minutes. <laughs> um, well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I need to change the uh, the title myself. So we are going to be Panama in Panama City first, but we're going to be in South America for the rest of the day. So no clickbait. All right, check the brakes. So we got our brakes down here. They work. Good job. Fuel selector on. Is it weird that I'm so immersed right now that I was like, wait a second, I don't feel my seatbelt. My brain actually thought that for like a split second. That was bizarre. <sighs> Wear your seatbelts, kids, okay? Fuel selector. Uh, I don't know. I've only flown this plane one other time, and it was it was actually like the second stream we ever did. I'm assuming the fuel selector is here, actually. Okay, so we're on... May, uh, I think it's the small arrow. We had a problem with this last time. It's actually the reverse of what you would think it is. So I think main fuel first. Cold engine start. We want the propeller to be... Uh, mixture to be rich. So we got mixture right here. You probably can't see it. I'm going to throw that all the way up. And if you want to see where it is in the plane, it's right here. So full rich. Push it in. Propeller, we're going to say high RPM. And I don't know if that means it just wants me to throw the throttle. I don't think it does. So where is the... RPM. Push high RPM. There you go. Throttle a quarter open. I don't know why it's not automatically going down to the next one. Master switch on. It's avionics. These are battery masters. And the alternator master. And it just says master switch. So I'm not sure which one it's actually referring to here. I would assume battery master. Maybe even both? Because there's starter switch. It might just be both. No, it actually just wants the battery master. Okay, fair enough. 
fuel boost pump on two. Okay, this is the hard part. Fuel boost pump on for three seconds. You need to go to idle cutoff on your mixture. <laughs> then the starter switch has to be thrown. Then when the engine comes on, you have to throw the mixture back to rich. Okay, we got like four steps here. So it's on full rich right now for the boost. Uh, I can see boost pump switch on, but like... How do you do this again, Chad? Don't tell me. It's gotta be the fuel switch pump. One, two, three... First try! First try! Hold on, hold on, hold on. I remember that there's no uh, parking brake on this right now. So we gotta throttle down. This took an hour the first time. <laughs> you weren't even here, how would you know? I was! Hello everyone, what's up Galactic Turtle and good morning everybody else is just popping in. Glad to have you. I'm just happy to be here. Alright, check your oil pressure. Let's keep- make sure the plane stays on, chat. I'm just gonna hold the brake down. I heard it kind of dying out there. Oil pressure is good. Alternator field switch. I was looking out the window to make sure I wasn't going anywhere. Alternator field switch. I think they're just weirdly labeled. Because it's got to be that. Before takeoff, avionics master. Now we can communicate with air traffic control. So we're going to tune ground. And we're going to... Probably just request taxi to depart to the... I don't know what the wind is. Let's just tune into ATIS and we might be able to see. Wind 077 at 3. So 077 is the heading, 3 is knots, right? So 077 should be blowing to the... almost to the east. East by northeast. So if it's blowing east, east by northeast, we probably want to depart south. But I don't know if we have a choice. Ground minus November Alpha 1 1 with X ray to request taxi to the active south departure. Okay. Sounds good. Contact tower on 118.5 ready. Okay, runway 36 chat, so we are actually going to be departing to the north. Uh, they literally just ignored my request and was like, Hmm, I've thought about what you said, and I've decided south sucks. We're going north instead, nerd, okay? So get on the same wavelength. Taxi to and hold short runway 36 via taxiway alpha minus November alpha 11. One one. Yes, they are correctly labeled on the dash. That's what I meant. Um, okay, we can just tune the tower now. And uh, we should be... Actually, do we just stay on ground? I could just use both. We'll have one tuned to ground and one tuned to the tower. How about that? Okay, so let's take a look at our instruments here and kind of get familiar. We got our altimeter, so this will just be how high up we are. Let's hit B, because <laughs> that said we were 8,000 feet above sea level, and considering the Atlantic is not very far away from us at this very moment, I assumed that we were not 8,000 feet in the sky. I think it was a safe assumption to hit that reset button. Uh, so our airspeed in miles per hour, actually. Not in knots. So this is miles per hour here, like a car in the great nation of the Americas. The great nations of the Americas. United. Acceleration in G's. So this is your G-force. Um, electric amps. Fuel flow and man press. The man press. 
in HG. I actually have no idea what any of that means. Uh, accelerometer is functioning, and it does work, but I have no idea how to... I think this is just for stunts. It tells you, like, your record. And then no... First of all, no smoking in here, chat. I like that it has to remind me. And then RPM of the engine itself. Okay, we should be good to go. So, one thing I do want to do... Just make sure I'm not gonna clip anybody on the runway here. I kind of want to turn on the points of interests. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I think it'll be more fun for this flight if we have the POIs turned on, because there's like six of them, and it'd be silly to miss one. Be under navigation aids and POI markers, because there are a bunch in Panama City in particular. I'd like to see all of them. Fuel manifold pressure. Yeah. That would be it. Okay. Brakes are off. The hardest thing about this plane is just seeing where you are going while you are in the cockpit. Also, um, it seems like it's kind of clipping the, uh, the roof here a little bit. Okay. So, getting ready for takeoff. It, they told me to go to runway 36, but it looks like we're heading to runway 18. So I don't know who to believe here. 18 is de actually doing what it, I originally asked, which is departing to the south. So I don't know. But yeah, I can't really see anything. <laughs> Normally, what would you do? Look out the window? I don't know how you see where you're going in this. Can you pop the window open and, like, put your elbow out to the side or something? Or do you just have to trust? Or do you just have to go fast enough that it noses down, which is a very dangerous taxi speed? Hey, what's up, Midsid? Lillaby? How's it going? Papagars, people arriving on the scene? Hi, guys. What window? I don't know, Ace Tech. I've never flown one of these planes before. Just open the, the canopy. Call it a day. But, yeah, there's, like... Not actually a way to see where you're going. I guess you just wouldn't be taken off from one of these airports, huh? Took an exam this morning and got an A. Wow. Imagine getting graded for your exam the same day you take it and not having to wait like four days in abject terror. And whether you passed or failed. Just rip that band-aid right off, because that's what I had to do. Oh! Alright, alright. I almost missed it. Luckily, I saw where I was going and we didn't just cruise <laughs> into the grass straight away. <sighs> Is there a stream test? There will be at the end of this. Alright, I'm supposed to stop here, even though the taxi is telling me to just go straight up to the runway. Request takeoff clearance. Uh, VFR, right? That's me. Jimenez Tower minus November Alpha 1 1 ready at runway 36 south. It's a nice departure. day in Panama, con contrary to what the game said it was going to be. November Alpha 1 1 cleared for takeoff runway 36 south departure approved. Am I getting baited right now? They're giving me clearance, clearance for takeoff. The reverse. Welcome aboard, Etal Air. Of where the taxi prompt is telling me to go. Because I'm about to be taken off north to south here. But the ATC is telling me to do literally the opposite of what the... The ground guide is telling me to do. I'm gonna follow the one on the ground, okay? Because that's what I requested. Oh, then the taxi is gone. Okay, well, we're just gonna do what, the, what ATC verbally told us to do. Because I want to take off to the north anyway, so we can see the Atlantic. <laughs> Watch it. This is a big runway, but you can still whip it off to the side, <laughs> if you're not careful. I could just take off like this. Hilariously. We'll get a, we'll get a little bit more distance and just turn around. Did you get new shoes? New Balances are super comfy. New Balances are super comfy. Uh, these are not new, however. 
They are very nice. I like my new balances a lot. Zoom Zoom Streamer Man. Hello, Potato Elijah. You here just in time for the first takeoff. Uh, this is probably as much room as we need, actually. So I'm just going to whip around right now. This is enough space, chat. This is uh, definitely not what ATC would like me to do, but it's more than enough for this little stunt play. All right? So we're, ta we're technically taking off runway. Uh, three six, exactly what they want. We just happen to be two thirds of the way through the <laughs> through the runway. This plane is so small and so nimble that it would be redundant to go all the way down there. So let's go, baby. All right, flaps. Almost let the engine die. We don't have any flaps. We don't need flaps. Okay. We also don't need landing gear, and I'm just gonna leave fuel mix on rich at least initially. Three two one. Let's pump it. We're already at 40 miles an hour, chat. It's going really hard to the left. <laughs> That's all the space I required. We're already going 100 miles an hour. Easy. <laughs> and there's the end of the runway. Oh wow, this thing is so fast. All right, so I just want to get the eight, the uh I am leaving your airspace. I want to go ahead and get the uh the engine down a little bit so we're not So, okay, do I need to turn the RPM down cuz it's on it's in the red. Cuz they told me to push the RPM like in. Woo! This thing is fast. It turns so fast. There's nothing else on the checklist, though, chat. So I don't really know. I'm scared that if I undo this when the checklist didn't tell me to propeller RPM control 100%. I know it's a stunt plane, but I'm just saying, is it okay to ride the red the entire time? Because that's what we're going to do, basically. Well, welcome to Cologne, Panama. Does anyone have a sick bag? The sick bag is called Get Out of My Plane, okay? <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> Did I successfully dump you out of the plane? <laughs> this thing is crazy. I'm really scared because I actually have damage and, and plane stress on. So I'm nervous that I'm going to get too cocky and explode. Not literally, but... So this is the wave breaker um, on the way into Cologne. With the bay opening up here, the port and the marinas. Kind of like inside this little area. They've got some on both sides of this, it looks like. Flying Potatoes, what's up? We're currently in uh, heading to Panama City right now, and then we're popping over into South America. So very short first flight in the stunt plane because there's no autopilot, and there's also no um, VFR map. So we're just going to say that we have our iPad on our lap for this, okay? It's attached very securely uh, for us to do flips and barrel rolls and aileron rolls and whatever you might be looking at. So, really short initial flight. We're just going to be following the Panama Canal into Panama City and looking to see what Panama City has to offer. That's where we're going. So you can see how the uh, satellite took the photos of the, the docks. It's really cool how the AI is able to get, like, a building in the building spot. I think that's so neat. Like, it, it sees pictures of these and then, like, puts something down. I think those are supposed to be round buildings, but it's funny how it, like, tries to infer. Okay, so, let's head on towards our destination. Uh, we're already going the right way, basically. Out of Cologne. 
partly cloudy today. Looks very nice in the sky as if we are getting close to noon here in Panama City. The official sick bag is just... Whatever, whatever comes into your mouth, just swallow it again, okay? No puke allowed on this plane. Welcome aboard Etal Air. So where are we going, streamer? I just told you where we're going, Galactic Turtle. That was literally the last thing that I said is where we are going. Welcome to the Panama Canal. <laughs> Chad, can I just, do I just need to keep saying it over and over? Hey guys, uh, we're in Cologne in uh, Panama, heading down the Panama Canal to Panama City. So where are we going, streamer? Hey, too many errors. Right now we're in Panama. We just took off from Cologne, and uh, we are approaching the Panama Canal. It splits off into two different directions, as you can see here. <laughs> do we have trim? We don't have any. Do we have, do we have? Do we have trim on this plane or no? Does that exist? I think it actually does. This thing is so fast. Hey, uh, where are we? Where are we going today? Okay, so on one side you're gonna see Gatun. That'll be on our left. And then on the right... <laughs> on the right... I... <laughs> uh, this is very interesting. Topographically, right, the whole point of the Panama Canal is that the two bodies of water are not equal in height. Right? It fills up one side with water so that the boats can lift or lower to the correct height. So it's <laughs> it's really interesting to see topographically how it thought that was supposed to happen. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is not it. <laughs> There's like a big hump in the middle of the road. <laughs> but you can still see like the 3D, um, or not the 3D, but rather the, uh, the screenshots that it got. Because it can tell the height that it's kind of supposed to be. Yeah, this is not... This is the north end of the Panama Canal. On the left is the big side. That's Gatun. And then this side seems like it was uh, caught a little bit more authentically. This one looks a little smoother. There's a, there's a couple little breakpoints, but uh, at least you can see more linearly how this is supposed to go. Hey, it even took a picture of one of the ships inside of it. So you can see um, one of them just how narrow that is. Just literally scraping the sides. Hey, chat. Uh, how... You able to... Ah! <laughs> Hang on, calm down. I gotta fix my my tiara. <laughs> it's not getting my um past my hair apparently. What Englishman? You thought I didn't have that? What? You didn't think I had that upside down? I was trying to do this. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> Do a little upside down look see through the uh, the top there. Does the tiara help with the flying? It does, yeah. It's what lets me look around uh, without having to use any camera controls. It is track IR. So it's seeing the sensors on top of my head. When I turn my head, I can look out the window. It's very, very cool. Do some stunts. I love the duality of chat. I've got one person in chat, in all caps, saying, I'm puking so much, please, italics, and then the two lines down. Hey, do some stunts. <laughs> also, my VFR map doesn't work, by the way. Uh, it just... I think because this plane doesn't come equipped with... A dude... The... 
We're on our own. Imagine trusting an iPad. <laughs> Apple did this. The good news is it's a very short flight and it's not going to be difficult to figure out where we're going. So if there's not a GPS on the plane, the GPS, the VFR map doesn't work? Hey Tox, I'm puking so much, please do some stunts. You're gonna make me end up crashing. This is what it looks like in third person. If you wanted to see that. And that's when the game crashes due to overstressing the plane. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, so where we are going right now, I should just be able to figure it out via the compass. So now that I'm not gonna get baited by chat anymore, I'm not gonna look at chat, I'm gonna head the way that I know that I'm actually supposed to be heading and we're gonna speed this process up because we're literally just heading back to the Atlantic right now. So I know vaguely where we're going. We basically need to head south, so we're gonna have to just pay attention to uh, the compass right here. We need to go south and east, I think. Because that's Cologne again. That's just Cologne. We've been too busy doing stunts. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is a 20 minute flight to get from here to Panama City, so. We can practice actually flying the plane. I wonder how um, this is supposed to work. Because this is... Manifold fuel. These are two different ones. We got M on the left, F on the right. I'm really curious what that's supposed to... How I'm supposed to use that information. 20 minutes of flying, 30 minutes of stunts. <laughs> we'll be there in 50. <laughs> but we will be there in 50 if I start doing loops and flip it upside down again. Stunts are the best, though. Remember when you spent 10 hours trying to land in a volcano in Central America? I do remember that, yes. Pretty dial. It's the only thing that's going to get us to where we're going. How long do you think I can fly upside down? You think I can fly upside down long enough for new people to get into the chat? And then sheepishly ask what's going on. <laughs> the whole flight upside down. Fuel's just like draining from the top. Well, there's the uh, top end of the Panama Canal again that we just looked at. <laughs> this is going to make it harder to navigate by far. The left one, man press, is related to throttle and engine power output. The right one is fuel flow and how much gas you're putting in the engine. So yeah, the more I throttle up, the more gas I'm putting in. This thing is so nimble. This plane's just really fun. We're going at... How fast are we going right now? 140 miles an hour. It's pretty brisk. Okay, so if we want to go east, we're just going to hang to the left, I think, of this body of water right here. So what I'm going to try and do is kind of straighten this out. See if we can maybe get some trim. And then I'm going to show you kind of where we are in the world. Obviously, you know that we're in Panama, but I mean, like, specifically. Okay, that looks pretty good. We can check our horizon line over here. So you're supposed to use this little, um, double pyramid. It's, it's just a rotated diagonal square. But you can use that to kind of tell which way you're rolling and if the horizontal line is level with the horizon, right? 
So if it's angled where the back end is lower and the front end is up, you can kind of see that you're heading gently upward, which is fine with me. Because I want to stay above the tree line. If you take a look at this, we just headed through Gatun in Lago Gatun. And uh, we really need to hang further to the to our left to go down Baro, Colorado to the Panama Canal in Gamboa. And that's when we're going to follow this all the way in. So we're kind of over this um, huge lake here in between the two. So we're just going to go left, kind of follow that. What's going on, Talix? Yaxil C? Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. He's getting our first flight of the day in here today. See how much we can do. I am of two minds today, chat, because I know we're not going to get as much done as I want. And we're not going to get to go as far as I want. So, I'm of the one mind, which is just do this back to back today and tomorrow. I'm thinking about it. Because I don't want to wait another week. This has been consistently my most anticipated thing that I do. I don't know. I just really like it. We're going to get to see a lot of really cool parts of the world. South America is awesome. Panama is awesome, too. Guess you played RimWorld for 12 plus hours again. It's a long time. Howdy, Casey. What's up, Snide? Just make tomorrow and today one big 48-hour stream. All right, that might be a little much. It's a little on the high side. We are already doing better than last time, because I'm pretty sure that we weren't even flying by the hour mark. <laughs> I seem to remember still being on the runway an hour into the stream. Was that is that true? I think so. Mr. Kavist, good morning. That sounds <laughs> that sounds right. I'm not gonna dispute it. Whereas we got up in the sky, we got on the runway like 30, 35 minutes in. And that's, think about it like this, that's with pre-stream preparations, okay? What you guys may not know is the hours that are spent um, off stream between streams to get all these flight plans in place. So like that was with a pre-configured flight plan. I already had the waypoints plugged in. All we had to do is choose the plane choose the livery, uh, make sure fuel's good, and go, you know? That's with all that prep work done. So when we see a big landmass over here, and I can see, like, one road. You see that one road snaking along? I think if we just follow that, we should be going mostly to the south. And then we will hit the narrow part of the canal. So I guess the ships that want to go north to south, south to north, have to navigate uh, this lake to go out the other side. Because when I think of Panama Canal, right, it seems like, a, oh, you just go here and you're done. <laughs> like, it's this really narrow stretch of land, and you just go in through the gate, you come out the other side of the ocean. Easy. But it's actually got all this that you have to go through, and then you go through, so two narrow passes ultimately. One on one side, one on the other. It's a lot more, it takes up a lot more area than you'd think. How did you know the Panama Canal is the deadliest modern construction project? Over 30,000 people died building it. Really? I mean, it happened in like the early 1900s, so I'm not surprised. early 1900s. Mostly malaria and yellow fever? Wow, that's insane. I did not know that. See, this is stuff we're going to learn uh, probably more on the way out of Panama when I have a little bit more, you know, time to kind of fact check. Not, not fact check like I doubt you, but like look up um, crazy information like that. Poor sanitation and disease. Huh. 
very interesting. So we are still heading south, and that's good enough for me. If we just go south, we'll get to where we're trying to go. Heading into some pretty big clouds. Uh, big chances of rain all days this week in Panama. In fact, there was apparently thunderstorming earlier this morning. And these might be the remnant clouds of that. Do we hook a left here? Is this where we hook a left? This looks correct. Uh, Sad Johnny says, hey, Tal, hope you're doing well. Quick question, what is the deal with the earlier streams? <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. How come whenever somebody asks, what is the deal? It sounds like a, a negative question, so I'm glad you clarified not that I'm complaining. Because it sounds like an inherently negative question. Anyway, uh, to give you an actual answer. Hey, what is the deal? Seinfeld. Probably. Uh, the deal is that I am committing to doing the flight around the world in real time. So what that means is, where we are flying right now in the world, in Panama, uh, this is real-time weather and real-time time. Like, literally time. So, uh, because of that, if I do my streams at normal time, quote-unquote, we're going to uh, be stuck in darkness, shrouded for the entirety of the stream, unless I manipulate the time uh, myself. But... I think, for me, it's more compelling and fun if I know that everything that I'm seeing is at least representative of what somebody would see if they went outside where I am in the, in the game in real life. And indeed, we've actually had a couple of places and a couple of streams where that was the case, where people were like, I was like, hey, you're in Denver? Go out, well, no, not Denver, but it was somewhere. And they go outside and be like, yeah, this is pretty much what it looks like. So I just think it's more immersive this way where even though it's fun to change the time of day and uh, change the weather just for like, you know, enjoying your flights and if that's, this isn't an Animal Crossing scenario, right? This is, <laughs> it's, it's not the same. I just thought that if, I, if I'm going to do a flight around the world, that's going to be potentially so many flights that if I'm constantly changing the time to the perfect time, the weather to the perfect weather, then it's kind of like too much of a good thing. You know, like it, your brain starts to get used to it and you get used to it and you don't appreciate it. So because I'm flying with actual time of day of these locations and actual weather, it gets, it lets me see a variety of different situations kind of naturally. I get to see the sun coming up, going down. I get to see uh, maybe some storms, maybe some overcast days, maybe some pure, like the, like the first couple when we were in Southwest America, we were always, I think like five flights in a row, it was just clear blue skies. That was it. No cloud in the sky. And um, it's kind of nice to get that variety because it lets you appreciate all the different conditions that you're in. Hope that answers it. Hey, what's up, Phase Chase? How's it going? Now this is the Panama Canal. I mean, it all is, but it, this is it too. And you can see, I think, Panama City just over the hills back there. And we're gonna be passing a bunch of towns uh, on the way in that I just don't know the name of off the top of my head. So why don't we just line this up. Local weather, sure, why not adjust flight time according to a schedule? Because when you're flying around the world, J Merck, you're always going to be flying at uh, different time zones. So South America presents its own challenges. Once we get to Australia, it's gonna be a totally different experience. We're gonna be able to start at different times of the day, see different times of the day. When we get to uh, Africa, it's gonna be a completely different cycle. When we get to Europe, it's gonna be a completely different cycle, and so on. It all, all comes around, goes around. Because if you end up adjusting the time, then you have to always adjust the time because it's going to get messed up again when you get to other time zones. But also, um, you guys wouldn't be here if I was doing that because we wouldn't be streaming right now.
I am not going to attempt to fly under this bridge. FYI. I know you might want me to, but I'm not going to. Because uh, in this game, bridges can sometimes be completely solid objects, and that will end my flight. They have huge hitboxes, and even though it appears that there's nothing under it, we've tried to fly under two bridges before, and we just crash into nothingness. So, uh, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna start the flight over just to hit a dark screen. <laughs> uh, yes, in the Panama Canal, if somebody could go outside and look at this, Godzilla is currently emerging from the Panama Canal. I repeat, we need to get the military here. Stat, okay, because if we can just skip to the part where we nuke him and give him special powers, he can go ahead and destroy the other aliens that are no doubt on their way to our location. <laughs> I don't- what's- what is going on here? Why is this so lumpy? <laughs> <I don't laughs> Somebody needs to bring out the iron. I don't know how to iron my clothes either. No time, like now, the present to learn. Hang on, I'm also gonna go back and look at this. True story, uh, my entire load of laundry is currently just in the dryer. And if I really need some clothes... I'll just go open it, grab one. I got this shirt right out of the dryer from the day before yesterday. Okay. If I need it to look nice, I'll just turn the dryer on for a few minutes. Straighten it all out. I see that you are also a man of culture. I am indeed. Somebody asked what the little piece of iron is. It's kind of your horizon guide. So it tells you um, how much you are rolled to one side or the other, and also your pitch. So right now I'm kind of just naturally rolling to the left. Hey, here we are. Okay, so what I'd like to do is slow down. And just open this up real quick and hopefully not stall the plane. So we are in this section of the Panama Canal. Heading towards Las Cumbres to Cocoli. And then we'll see Panama coming up on our left with all the points of interest. Are we dead? Not yet. So I think that's exactly where I just showed you is where we are right now. This should be like Cocoli up here on the right as it happens. You know how hard it is to go through a global pandemic without an in-unit washer and dryer? Yeah. I don't envy that. Does not sound fun. Alright. Welcome to Panama City, Panama. I told you it'd be a nice short flight. And we get to just kind of look around, sightsee. And then I honestly have no idea where the airport is because <laughs> I don't have a map. So... We'll see how that goes. Dude, I really want to fly under these bridges. Here, if you want me to do stunts in the stunts, I gotta save, okay? Those are the rules. I'm not gonna start over from scratch. Those are the rules, chat. And I'll show you why I don't fly under bridges. Illusory bridge ahead. It is, yes. Uh, I don't know what bridge this is. It's next to La Boca and something called Mirador, but I'm not sure what. Early stream! Hello, Professor Dirk. How's it going? She's the worst is here. Hi, everybody. This bridge looks awesome, though. This must be, like, a uh, handcrafted. And we got all sorts of... Ooh, that looks awesome over there. Yeah, Panama City itself has a lot of love. All right. Come on, devs. Don't let us down or I'm going to have to reload a save. Bridge of the Americas. Nice, mostly lost. 
I believe you, because I think I read that before. I knew it! I saved because I knew it! All right. This is why I wasn't going to do it without uh, hedging my bet. All right, but I had to. Because chat was going to just make fun of me. You guys were going to be like, Oh, well, you have to. It's in the contract. You get the stunt plane, you got to do stunts. See, I know you. I knew you were going to say that. But the reason why that happens, chat, is because there are... Now, in that case, it was a handcrafted one. Uh, the reason why that happens is because the way that they take the satellite imagery and the AI puts... Normally, it puts bridges in the game automatically, okay? Now, consider that there are 37,000 airports in the game. Now, ask yourself how many bridges there are in the world. Uh, the correct answer is estimated... The, the estimate is actually, quote, uncountable. Um, but someone from... Massachusetts Human Behavior and Technology, who claims to be from that, says there are 453,276,784,326 bridges in the world. If you don't believe me, prove me wrong. <laughs> no, <laughs> this dude just made that up. <laughs> but it includes land bridges. Including land bridges, there's a lot. <laughs> Basically, there's so many bridges that it's impossible for them to take the, like, satellite imagery and go in and hand... They have to, like, create a box by hand to create a literal hitbox for every single one. You know what I mean? So, it's not a big deal. But it was worth a try, because that one at least was a handcrafted bridge. Now, what's weird is the hitbox above seems fine. I'm not going to get too low again. Didn't hand model every single structure on the planet Earth literally unplayable? I doubt there are more bridges than people. You're probably right, Roof. However, consider that a bridge lives longer than the average human life does. So if people keep building bridges, but also keep dying, theoretically, we could achieve the status of more bridges than people in the world. Beautiful bridge, though. I keep burning it. <laughs> Planet of the bridges. That really is a gorgeous bridge. So what do we have over here? Go to a little island first. What do we have over here? Got all kinds of land masses in the distance. Look at that little cute one. How you feeling today, chat? Feeling good? If we do some spins, we feel a little better? I really don't know how to use the foot pedals for stunts here. If I jam this foot pedal all the way in, we basically just, uh... are drifting. Do a barrel roll. I can do a barrel roll. I can do an aileron roll. Barrel roll's a little harder. Uh, you could do, like... If you do jam one side, like, let's say I jam it to the left, and then correct to the right, we're actually drifting. So we're coasting. Can you see how we're like gently floating uh, to the right, I think, while we turn? Do a loop the loop? Oh, that's easy. Don't worry, we'll do we'll do some loops. We gotta get a little closer to the city first. I just wanted to see these little outskirt areas. Like, I'm curious, is this mostly like a business or pleasure type of dock? I wonder. Because there's a lot of boats here. About to do some groceries for the week. Uh, I probably need to go to the grocery store too. 
Do you want to get some for me while I'm while you're out? That'd be nice. I'd appreciate that. Look at that skyline. So I've got some POIs up just so I know what building is what, because there's like six of them here, which is fairly unusual compared to the other cities that we're going to be visiting. Like, there's another... Speaking of bridges, it's a pretty big... This Dude, there's roundabouts on that bridge. There's a roundabout right there. <laughs> I wonder why that is. I'm looking forward to the Japan update. Oh, yeah, they got the uh, a bunch of POIs coming in. They're completely redoing Japan and a whole bunch of cities therein. Apparently, they're going to be rolling out some overhauls to a number of cities every few months or so. Japan is the first one. They released a trailer uh, yesterday or the day before. Because I remember spe specifically when uh, this game came out, a couple people in my Twitter feed were like, yeah, I went to Tokyo. It doesn't look anything like what I remember Tokyo looking like. And the devs probably saw them and were like, yeah, that's what you think, nerd. Well, you just wait until you see what we got cooking. Uh, it'll be a free update for the game, yeah. The, J the Japan part. I believe it'll be free for the standard edition of the game. Don't quote me on that, but I believe. And it looks awesome. They got a whole bunch of handcrafted pieces in there. Uh, going through all the, the big spots that you would expect. Obviously, mentioning Tokyo. Tokyo is getting some a facelift as well. So it's really cool. I have no, This is a really tall building considering it has no POI marker on it. So we got the Arts Tower dead ahead. This is gorgeous. They got some insane buildings here in Panama City, huh? Let's slow down a little bit. We're gonna do a few passes of this, so don't worry if you don't get the best angle on the first go. Each of these are. I think it disappears as we get closer. So Tower 1 is coming up on the left. Oh, what's this spiral one? I've got some... Uh, Megapolis Tower 1 as well. Huge. Ah, oh, this is really cool. <laughs> this is a real building? Architectural masterpiece. BBBA, BBA, and then F and F. F and F tower at the very top. This is Midas November Alpha 1-1 is currently busy uh, spiraling around the spiral tower, if you don't mind, ATC. Clear to land runway. I didn't even ask for clearance to land. Why is the tower giving me clearance to land? That doesn't even make any sense. I, I have to request clearance. I'm not even doing anything. They want you down, <laughs> I guess. The point in Panama City. And then we'll learn a little bit about these once we get some distance and I know I'm not going to, uh... I can, I can alt-tab safely. Oh, this is the perfect plane for exactly this. Dude! Coffee Nat is back! The return! This thing doesn't even work! I bought this, like, $40 Nat sucker! And it's still flying around! It's been on on the desk the whole time, the whole stream. It should've, it should've already attracted the Nat. What's going on? I can't believe Coffee Nat's back. So the point is one of the furthest buildings out here. I really like that um, super roundabout overpass. Oh, we got more stuff over here. Let's not turn turn around too too soon. Just name it and treat it as a pet. It only comes back for flight sim streams, like in the morning. I think it just sleeps during the night. That's the only explanation, because I literally haven't seen it in the last week. The 
JW Marriott Panama. I actually do know something about this. I believe uh, the JW here is the tallest building in Central America, if I'm not mistaken. Bahia Pacifica. Okay, which one's which? I think the JW is the big, like, the one that looks like it could be a turbine. Uh, in a futuristic, like, city skylines, uh, <laughs> green power, green energy construction. So, the JW in particular, the reason it's the tallest building was because it actually used to be like a Trump Tower. <laughs> and I think that they, like, just to get one leg up over the next tallest building, because I think the point used to be the tallest building or something, and they built it, like, just three floors taller than the next tallest building, just so they could say they had the tallest one. And then um, they got legally ousted, and their name got completely deleted from the building. And the new owner has accused... Um, previous owners of withholding taxes and other things. So it's been a whole legal ordeal. So JW now owns the building and they've deleted all markings of the former Trump Tower as a result. So there you go. I did know that. Ooh. Taking some turns here. Now, the spiral building's really cool, too. I want to learn a little bit more about that. I love Etal history lessons. <laughs> There's a lot to learn. Okay, so let's see. That's the FNF Tower. Got the Arts Tower over here. The point. Oh, it looks, it looks at what I'm looking at. I just can't read that one through the building. The skyline here is fabulous. I think that's my favorite one. You can even see the reflections. I think that's the best part, is the game graphics are good enough that you can actually see the chrome sky reflections and the ground reflections. It's like active camouflage. So, okay, Arts Tower here. I think there's more than one tower right here. I don't know what... Unless they're combined. There's one on the left. Are they both the Arts Tower? Probably not. I think the one on the right's the Arts Tower. Then Megapolis Tower 1. Then you got the point, which these are all visible from so, so far away. The point, you can see from anywhere. Megapolis is like two buildings in one. And then you got the JW Marriott Panama. Which, when I looked it up, had a 4.3 out of 5 on Google. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's circle back this way, and then I want to see if there's any more tidbits of information. I'm gonna slow down a little bit, kind of try and level this out, so we can use this little um, iron bit. See how we're kind of nosing up too much. I'm gonna trim down. Don't want to stall. Okay, we should be fine there for a moment. All right, so F and F Tower, the big spiral one, used to be known as Revolution Tower. It's an office in Panama City. Um, it was selected as one of the top ten skyscrapers of the year in 2011, and was a award winner, ranking seventh out of ten. One of the most iconic buildings in Panama City. It's about 800 feet tall. 796 feet. Um, it's all done. One of the Obviously one of the tallest buildings there. Period. Construction completed in 2011. So it's actually really new. Uh, the Megapolis one. The thick one is the Hard Rock Hotel. There you go. <laughs> Can't escape it, dude. Hard Rock Hotel is everywhere, even in Panama. 
Why why call it Megapolis Towers? Hard Rock Hotel too um not fancy enough? I guess. 63 floors, about 750 feet for the Hard Rock Hotel. Also ended in 2011 construction, so brand new as well. Uh, Bahia Pacifica is one of these. Bahia Pacifica is... Which one is it? It's got a little steeple on top. What, what is this one? You see the one that's in the middle of nowhere? Is Bahia Pacifica gone? Is that... Chat, Bahia Pacifica... Oh, it's, it's over here. I think the POI is just off. It's this one right next to the JW. That one's a 48-story skyscraper. 22nd tallest building in Panama City. So as big as this is, it's still not even in the top 10 in terms of height. Yeah, it's this one with the little uh, point right on top. It's a residential building. So you could probably just get a condo there. And the JW Marriott, man, that's got to be... How many rooms do you think are in there? How many people can just stay in the JW? It's insane. Okay, uh, they got a lot. Yeah, the history of the JW is pretty big. If you want a funny read, look up the JW Panama Wikipedia page. <laughs> it's got a lot of information. <laughs> it's got like, uh, like Wikipedia is not normally the like a fact checking website, but in this article, it very much is, and it's hilarious. Like, like, literally the first paragraph... This is from Wikipedia, by the way. Wikipedia. First paragraph of the history of the JW Maria. It's, it begins. Donald Trump arranged financing for the project from investment bank Bear Stearns, a $230 million bond offering, for which he received a $2.2 million commission. Uh, during the financing, Ivanka Trump falsely claimed that over 90% of the units had been sold and that their sale price was five times that of comparable units. She also exaggerated demand for the units, claiming in 2009 they were selling out even as potential buyers were being offered substantial discounts. During development, Donald Trump falsely claimed that the Trump Organization had a financial stake in the project and that it was acting as the developer, neither of which were true. <laughs> it's just like, that's the first paragraph! And, uh, it goes on. It goes on. And this is like... ...2007, okay? Construction started in 07, so this is not like a fresh wound history. This is like 13 years ago. Anyway, it continues. The point in Panama City is... We just looked at 67 floors. And then finally, the Arts Tower. You want to see a stunt? <laughs> oh, you want to see a stunt? How's that? Don't listen to that beeping guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, the Arts Tower. Built in 2013. 78 stories. It's this one right here. Uh, the one on the far side of this building. The one that I'm about to crash into. How does this plane work? This plane's insane. All right, let's see how tight we can get like a loop around the point. God, oh no. We're fine. Oh no, we're not fine. <laughs> too tight. We went a little too tight. Just a little bit.
Nice one, pilot. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, chat needed stunts. You demanded stunts. I could feel it. That one cancels out because chat made me go into the bridge and I told you that was going to be a crash. Okay, so th those two cancel out. My, my crash and your crash, okay? You're not responsible for the bridge. I'm not responsible for trying to do a cool stunt around the building. That's all. We're even now. All right, how many barrel rolls do you think I can do in a row? I'm, or aileron rolls. Oh! <laughs> Not again! <laughs> All right, that one's on me. That one, I, how many was that? Six? That was at least six. I almost pulled it out. <sighs> Four or five? All right, it's a stunt play. We gotta get it all out of our system for the rest of the day. You know? I had to see what it was capable of. What happened when I was away for five minutes? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely, it would be easier in third person. Does it? Whoa. This thing is very sturdy, though, I gotta say. This plane is crazy. Think about actually flying this. I'd be too scared of, of just passing out from the Gs. Plane was in San Andreas? Probably. Would not be surprised. Kind of a classic barnstormer. It's so fun to fly. Alright, so, okay, we'll take it serious from now on. We had to get it out of our system. We're, we're not gonna get to fly this, this uh, stunt plane for a long time to come. You know, it's going... It's gonna come back, but it's gonna be a while. Alright, let's get out of here, Chad. Next flight. Panama City is awesome, though. These are some really iconic buildings. So that's the Hard Rock. The Megapolis. So I think what got us killed was when I tried to take it really tight, I kind of just, like, pulled up as hard as I could. See, they want me to land. They like me. I didn't even request landing clearance, and they're already giving me permission to land. They heard me. Voice commands are online. Request airport direction. That would actually be nice. Tower minus November Alpha One One is unfamiliar with the area. <laughs> Request I am unfamiliar the with the area. <laughs> minus November Alpha One One Airport is eight o'clock two miles. Eight o'clock two miles. Okay, was that before or after I did the cool spin? Eight o'clock. I mean, I have a heading. Okay, so this way. Roughly. During. <laughs> Are you gonna fly into the main weapon of the mothership to blow it up? <laughs> Listen, uh... Kyrotopi's not even awake yet, so as far as you guys are concerned, neither of those three crashes happen, okay? Who plays there? You can't prove that those crashes happen because there's no clips.
What is going on? Okay. I was hitting the up arrow to try and sit higher in my seat, and I went down in my seat. Why did that happen? I was just like slinking down in the seat. <laughs> Okay, um, easy, careful, wow, dude, I went so low that that yellow car turned into an 18-wheeler, did you see that? Crossing the highway like this, very dangerous. All right, where, where are you, airport? I don't know. You gotta be around this way somewhere. Give us some gas to get up this little incline. This needs some rings to fly through. This is close to those, like, Red Bull uh, stunt planes where they do the competition. Oh, I found the airport. <laughs> uh, what clearing did I get? 19? Okay, I think they want me to land from the other side. They want me to land... 19. Yeah, they want me to land from the other side. Because that'd be, like, basically south. Okay, we're gonna do a loop. I remember last time we looked up downwind, upwind, crosswind, all that, but I don't remember anything, so... We're just gonna head around and uh, go in for a nice, gentle landing. This one, this one counts, chat. This one counts, okay? The how many barrel rolls in a row can I do does not count as an error. That was a fresh save scum from dying. If I crash on landing, that's a real error. Does game have Area 51? Duh, technically, but there's not really anything at Area 51. It's kind of just a desert. All right, let's bring it in. Bring it in. We need to slow down a little bit. I mean, the, the, the crashes can still be clipped, but I'm not going to spin the wheel because I got in the stunt plane. It was like, hey, how far can we push this thing? Oh, that far. <laughs> oh, exactly that far. This is why this was the first flight of the day. Line it up. I don't know if you're supposed to, I think. Ooh, a little bouncy. Ooh, a little. Okay, all right. Easy. Or easy, or it's about to be another error. A little bouncy there, chat. A little bouncy. I don't know why it's turning so hard to the right. That's the problem right now. If I let- if I let go, look at it. It's going like hard right. I don't know why. Minus November Alpha 1-1, one, one, please acknowledge. 1-2-1 one, one decimal 7 minus November <laughs> Alpha 1-1. One, one. It's just come to a stop. I don't know where they want me to go. <sighs> Torque from the prop, but it doesn't do that on takeoff. It wasn't going hard right on takeoff. Not like that. Request taxi to parking. Ground minus November Alpha 1-1 one, one request taxi to parking. Did I complain about on takeoff? It wasn't minus nearly November that bad Alpha though. One, one I had to go full... Runway, one Alpha full rudder to the left just there to get it to even go straight. Well, that was a bumpy landing, but I didn't, um, welcome aboard Etal Air. I didn't crash. I got damage on still. See, because watch this. See how hard I have to jam. All right, slow down. You're gonna you're gonna end up passing the. Uh... 
the turn up here. Nice drift. <laughs> Fantastic drift. Alright, where do you even want me to go? Never seen those arrows? Is it a built-in option? Yeah, you have to go to, uh... Settings, Assistance, and, uh... It's called Taxi Ribbon. Under the... Navigation drop-down? I think? Ben Elnor, what's up? Thank you for nine months of sub, dude. Good morning, how you doing? But yeah, I would, uh... If you like parking and you like taxiing for takeoff and stuff, and you don't just spawn on the runway... If you spawn on the runway, you're probably never going to see it. But if you, you know, like to do cold starts, like I do, and you like to go all the way to a parking space, then it's basically a necessity, because you can't possibly be expected to know the layout of every single airstrip in the entire world. It's kind of unreasonable. Taz, could you ping me a plane log edit link when convenient? Yay. In between these flights. Alright. So, this is the Panama City. Primary... One of the primary airports, I guess. Do they have any passenger terminals here? Or is there a second airport that I could have gone to that does passengers? This is not the main international? Yeah, I'm not sure which one this is. Alright, you're guiding me in, but there's literally no way I'm going to be able to tell what you want me to do. <laughs> I mean, I can just... Yeah, let's go a little further. Try to get our tail inside. That's probably good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. I mean, that's right in the middle. So, throttles all the way down. I'm just going to hold the brake until we get this um, taken care of. I'm just going to go reverse down the checklist. So we should just honestly turn off avionics. Goodbye, ATC. It's probably just going to automatically turn off as soon as I cut the fuel. Um, but... Yeah, I mean... I'm just going to go ahead and finish the job. I don't know what you're supposed to actually do first. Fuel cut off. Done. Mixtures cut. I guess RPM controller you probably want out back to 0%. I think that's honestly everything. Yeah, I think... Oh, one more. There you go. Alright, fuel has been cut off. Dunzo. Beautiful plane. Really fun to fly. Uh, may have gotten a little reckless, but we had some fun. I can't find a throttle to complete my setup unless I want to pay double. Yeah, they're really expensive right now. I got a honeycomb alpha yoke while they were still available. Nice. I'm sure that'll be really, really smooth. That was uh, not my proudest landing, but... I don't really know what the best way to cut speed is. I think we just came in really fast. Uh, we don't have any flaps on that plane, so I think you just need a little bit more distance to cut the throttle and glide. So next time I fly, I'll be able to take that into consideration. I literally haven't flown that plane since the second stream. Came in hot. Bounced a couple times. <laughs> Still stuck the landing, though. 
Did you get the free airport in the marketplace? I think I did, yeah. Pretendio, what's up? Good morning. How's it going? Nice shoes. Hey, thanks. You got a nice um, username, I guess. The Baser says, did you ever crash? Uh, I think I've answered that question since you asked it. Thank you for four months of sub. <laughs> we do have crashes logged in the plane log. Not all of them will count for errors. Anything on this next flight will. Okay, that was the funzy short ride around Panama City in the stunt pit special. Okay, this is the for the real error log. Okay, crappa. <laughs> Ugh. So let's go ahead and load up the next flight. I've got it all planned out, chat. We're heading out of Panama. And we are going to Colombia. Where the beans of the day have originated. And on this flight, we're going to have plenty of opportunities for error. Because we are going to have three touch and goes. We're going to island hop. So we are going to be bouncing right along from three different airports that are pretty close to Panama City. So we're going to get some action nice and early. It's the Archipelago de las Pelas. And there are multiple islands here that we're going to be popping on into. I don't know what their individual names are, but it's an uh, archipelago. And then heading into Colombia. Olaya Herrera. So MPMG to SKMD, and uh, let me hook Ace Tech up. And also update the title, so that people who are coming in know where we're going. It's also the tail dragger design of the plane, they land differently. Yeah, I tried to land front wheels down. And that feels so strange that that would just take some adjustment. I missed most of this trip. When do you change planes? And is there a reason you're changing at that time? I basically change every time I land, JD. So we're going to use all 30 planes uh, multiple times over the trip around the world. Some will be used more than others, some less. Depending, like the pits is tough to get in because it doesn't have any GPS and... There's really no way to navigate with it at all. So it has to be really short flights like this one. So some flights will be really short. Some will be really long by comparison. This one, uh, we're going to swap planes on. And since we're going over water, we'll use the DA-62. Diamond Aircraft 62. I believe this is our first flight with a DA-62. I don't think we've used it up till now. Got some nice liveries to choose from as well. I like the tan one. That's some burnt orange right there. I kind of like the tan one, actually. Cream. So, fuel-wise, we should have more than enough fuel. Unless the game... Uh, did they ever fix the, the jet fuel bug? Obviously, this is not a jet, so it's irrelevant for our purposes. Um, what's up? I'm watching college football. Hello, Bryce Allen. The DA62 factory paint jobs are gorgeous. Oh, is that the one that I'm using right now? Is that the cream that I've got at this moment. That's a sharp looking plane. Very nice. Okay, so uh, what did you need edit access for? The map or... I can't... The plane log I don't have any access to. Oh, I forgot to set up a screenshot. Yeah, I don't I don't even have the plane log. That's, that's all Kyra Toby. I don't have a screenshot, though. I forgot. I can I can do one after this after um, a bit. We don't have to. I was gonna say I could just load back in now. We could always get it later. I can just set it up. Okay. Uh, let's just say that there is some package, some baggage. 
on rear let's just say middle center let's say we got 20 pounds of luggage okay not very much failures <sighs> bring out the wheel i deserve at least one spin of the wheel okay i do the people demand it i three the three crashes two two of them were arguably my own we got to spin the wheel of disaster We'll, we'll, we'll count a combined stunt plane one error. Officially. <laughs> the wheel. So, let's see. Um, basically what we're doing is every time there is an official error, we have to spin the wheel of disaster, which might impact the next flight. Let me get to the page where I can actually push the spin button. And whatever it lands on is the punishment for my crimes. The wheel will speak. And the wheel says... No manipulation. Now, this is a potential, not a guaranteed problem. Chat's getting five community subs. Well, no disasters for this. Just a just a small wallet disaster. All right, who wants to volunteer to give those subs? I'm just kidding. They're from me. It's a gift from me. <laughs> Saw this bunnies? You? Oh, that's so nice. A passenger's wallet has just been discovered in the cockpit. If you believe this is yours, please contact the nearest flight attendant. That's me! But note, there is no longer any money in it. Oh. Because the pilot spent it all on gift subs. I see. Okay. Well, it's too bad. Congratulations to Victor. Uh, Zeros, Angry About Dark Souls, Pepega, and Cats 3. This would have been a fun failure, too, in a twin engine. No, this is more fun. Oh, nice, that's me. <laughs> that's what they call money laundering? Incorrect. Um, I actually have to pay taxes on that now. I literally am getting double taxed on that money. Because it was money that I got from income that I gave myself again as income. So, like, it's indistinguishable. I could probably write it off as a promotional expense, but just because you have a tax write-off doesn't mean you actually don't have to pay taxes you know it's it's like still double taxed for those of you that don't know how business expenses work um if i make five thousand dollars and i spend five thousand dollars i don't get to still just pay zero dollars unfortunately just due to the nature of um, how uh, it's a little bit better the last couple years. But um, self-employed tax has historically just been awful. We effectively get double taxed because there is another self the self-employment tax is 15.3% on top of your bracket. So it's a very weird way of doing things. It's why a lot of larger streamers get um, LLCs. They incorporate limited liability company. But that's a that's a big hassle, and it's not easy to do. 
You're basically paying employment tax as well as income tax on the money you make. Yeah. Correct. I'm paying employment tax because, as the government sees it, I am paying myself. <laughs> That's why if you start an LLC, you get the option of um, setting yourself a salary, and you're only taxed on whatever your quote-unquote business income is, and you get to just arbitrarily decide how much money you want to pay yourself to decide how much you have to pay on taxes. It's like cheating. It's like putting in a cheat code. But it's very difficult to set up. They pay myself one dollar. <laughs> do I choose the navigation points along the route? I do, yeah. Sorry, we were just talking about taxes. <laughs> Alright, welcome to South American Flight 1 for our trip around the world. Failures are off. Congratulations to those of you that got gift subs. Thanks for being here and hanging out. Uh, EDSKA said, are you going to play Hades anymore by chance? Maybe? For me, it was kind of just like meant to be a one-off. It wasn't really um, something I was starting as a series. I just wanted to check it out. So, I thought it was really fun, though. I enjoyed it. I had to help my dad set up an LLC for his carpentry business. It was a huge headache. I believe that 100%. But yeah, I set up these waypoints. We'll also do a community flight today. I don't know exactly what leg we're going to do the community flight on. Um, maybe the next one. Maybe SKRG to El Dorado could be a fun um, community flight. Welcome aboard Ital Air. We'll do this one first. We're going to fly. I guess we'll fly VFR. And I'll just do it myself. Let's just spawn at a parking space. I don't know exactly where we were. I think we were like right around there. Like ramp four. Okay, that looks good. We're gonna have one, two, three touch and goes in a row. And then we're gonna land at SKMD in Columbia. Should be a fun flight. Let's double check live weather and time. It, it says this, but it doesn't mean this. I don't know why it thinks that it's thunderstorming. Unless it did just start, because it said this on the last flight, and it was mostly sunny, so I have no clue why the game thinks that it's thunderstormy right now. We good to go? Am I forgetting anything? I think we're good. Hit the skies. We're in. A passenger's wallet has just been discovered in the cockpit. If you believe this is yours, please contact the nearest flight attendant. But note, there is no longer any money in it. Dude, more tax money. Drivers999 not only subscribed for the first time ever with Prime, uh, but also gifted five subs to the community. Nessiman, Sammy Vega, Moose KY, the Chef's Corner, and Eve Aline. Or Evelyn. I'm not sure which. Congratulations. You are four out of five of you are here for the first time ever. Glad to have you. Getting ready for the second flight of the day. Actually heading into South America now. It must be a bug. I was flying around... Palermo yesterday, and it also stayed at Thunder, but it was partly cloudy. Yeah, I don't know. It is supposed to be storming there all week, like around this area, just not at this exact moment. So I'm not sure. Okay, I think first time flying this plane, it looks beautiful. A lot of passenger room. We got room to chat for five of you in the back, and one up front. So who's got a shotgun? Hello there, fellow pilots. What's up, Wage? Let me go ahead and reset the tiara. Me! Uh, the dash looks really nice. A lot of uh, good viewing angle here on the engines. Wings look sharp. Nice big screens. 
pretty well labeled buttons got a joystick that looks pretty familiar to the one that we're currently using okay let's uh hit the checklist for the first time big <laughs> okay i was not expecting this big checklist one of the detailed ones huh is there multiplayer in the in the whole game there is not for this flight though but there is seamless multiplayer in this game yeah parking brake okay sure looks good fuel selectors check that they're on i really don't like this part of the checklist because i have to always use the eyeball to find what it's talking about i'll try though welcome aboard ital air fuel selector check on if i was a fuel selector i'd be like here cross feed hey i was right okay i was just double checking that that's what it meant alternators check both on Why do you, what? Why would I just flip the alternators on right now? Pito, check both off. And Pito heat. Where are the heaters? Possibly on an above overhead dash? No, no overhead dash. And also, I can't look up as high as I want because of my hair. I got to flatten my, my poof. Flat the poof. Oh, here's the de-ice right here. De-ice alternate switch. It's got like a little red blocker. Where's the pito, though? Oh, big button right there. I just didn't see it. Okay, engine master. Check that that's off. Correct. Avionics master, check that that's off. Check. Gear selector, check down. Gear selector. That's just not the gear selector, though, is it? I don't know what this means. Oh, landing gear. <laughs> Okay, I was like, I was thinking of like, uh, do I have to learn how to drive a stick to pilot this particular craft? Flap selector up. Really, flaps are not here. Flaps have got to be right there. Flaps up. All electrical equipment off. Check. Electric master should be on. Why? Are we booting? This is pre-flight. Why, why are we checking that that's on? Can you multiplay as a co-pilot? No. That's probably one of the most requested features, though, that they have. Um, I don't know how it'll be possible, though. I think they did it before, but you were both invisible. They probably would want you to have, like, a pilot character. I'm not sure. Maybe down the road. Have a safe flight. Thank you, Fixel. For a year and a half of sub. Hope you're having a good morning. Thanks for supporting the stream. Fuel quantity. Time to learn how to see how much gas we got. Sometimes they bake it into the left. Sometimes they bake it into the middle. Sometimes they just put it on the screen. Okay. About half, as we expect. It's okay. Electric mat. Oh, you have to turn the electricity on. To check the fuel. I got gotcha. you. Control stick says... Move flight controls to ensure correct functioning. So... See the, uh, the ailerons here? And we could do that out, out of our window as well. And then... We can, like, hit the pedals for the rudder. And then we got the elevators in the back. Okay. Now, before starting the engine, 
Power lever idle. Parking brake set. Check. Avionics is already off. We double check that already. Gear selector, check that it's down. Yes, the landing gear's down. Alternators, check both on. I don't know why, but I'm going to believe you, okay? Fuel pump, left, right, check off. And then electric master on. By the way, if you're new to this game and you don't want to do any of this, you absolutely can skip it. Uh, this is all optional, but it's kind of one of those things where it's got like a high ceiling. You can actually spawn on the runway with everything turned on the way you want, even if you want to just fly around with a controller. You can play with an Xbox <laughs> One controller and uh, just go straight to the flying. But I like the level of detail in trying to learn a little bit more about the interiors. What are you guys talking about? Track IRs? Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I'm using on my head to look around. Uh, I'm not sure if they still have any in stock or not. Checklist asks for alternator with no R, and you flipped alternator with R, by the way. It says alternators check both on. Alternator 1, alternator 2... That is the last instruction. Chat? Lied? Are you serious? Unbelievable. Will someone go on the internet and say lies? <laughs> Strobe lights on. Okay, I actually don't know where the lights are. It's fun to find all the buttons. I actually just enjoy the hide-and-seek aspects. Okay. Then engine master on L. Okay, this is a different thing than the alternator chat. Maybe that's what you're looking at. You're getting a little ahead of the game here, okay? Because this is a uh, alternator, which is not the same as the engine itself. Alternator just refers to how we're getting power, because right now we're on battery power. Once we get the engines on, the engines will basically power the rest of the plane. He was saying the checklist had a typo, but it was funny to Jeff joke. What's the typo? I don't see anything. Not funny, chat. All right, um, engine master on. I don't know how to do this, because this is just... This must not be it. Oh, you literally push this button in. This looks like I'm playing an arcade game. Okay. That's the starter button, though. Okay, so don't push the starter button. You push this. Gotcha. <laughs> Annunciations. Check that left engine glow is on. I think it was, and I just clicked it. Uh-oh. I didn't see. Left engine glow. Was it on the screen right there? Start left button. Press as required. Do I have to hold it down? Um, apparently. Okay. Annunciation starter. Check off. Annunciation oil pressure. Check okay. Why does clicking caution remove the alert? I don't understand. Okay, so uh, first of all, I guess let's just go ahead and get pushed back before we turn this on. So let's go ahead and talk to ATC. I'm just going to go ahead and flip avionics on before they tell me to so that we can do this legit. And let's tune ground and re request a taxi. I don't even know what... We're supposed to do, so I'm just going to let them tell me what to do. Crown by the Sierra Alpha 1 request taxi for takeoff departing straight out. Fly to Sierra Alpha 1 taxi to in halt short of runway 19. Okay, runway 19. Contact tower on 
Welcome aboard e -Pal Air. Good timing on that. Taxi eating hold short runway one niner via taxiway Charlie Bravo minus Sierra Alpha one. Okay. So I need ground services and I need to request pushback. Ground minus Sierra Alpha one requesting pushback. And it looks like we should be clear to just go straight back. Watch your wing. <laughs> you don't really have to, but here we go. Hook me up. Let's go ahead and release the parking brake. Trying to do this before we get the engines on so we don't chop up the grounds crew on accident. What are in-flight meal options today? Similar to last week, Spoons for Self-Defense. We're going to have uh, either enchiladas or tamales today. Come on in. Uh, I've got the air conditioner on. It's nice and cool. I know it's looking like there's a, a threat of rain. I was told that there were going to be some thunderstorms earlier, so if you want to get inside uh, before that starts up, we've got a lot of space back here, actually. So we're going to request steering to the right. Ground minus Sierra Alpha 1 requesting Psychos. to steer the aircraft to the right. You guys need to calm down. Minus Sierra Alpha 1, your request has been transmitted to the operator. We're supposed to taxi that way? Okay, well, um, we might just let her loop us around then. I thought we were going out that way. Totally wrong. We can go ahead and request pushback stop right here. Ground minus Sierra Alpha 1 requesting the end of pushback. Thank you. Parking brake on. Okay, let's try this again. So, I have to um, leave the engine master on, push the button to start, check my uh, starter enunciations for that and oil pressure, and then get the idle RPM around 710 plus or minus 30. <laughs> As our pushback glides away. I feel like I missed a step. Maybe it's fuel? Um... Because the only thing that I have to do according to the game... Is... Strobe lights, engine master, annunciations, and then press as required for engine start. That's all it says. Fuel pump should be off, according to this, but I feel like that's not correct. I think that's why we're not getting anything. Don't we need, we need fuel pump to be on, right? This can be a bit buggy to start. Seems that way. Uh, I'm not going to say it's bugged, but the checklist is not <laughs> ver of Considering that there's like 21 pages on this, it seems like they skipped a step. So. Fuel, or left engine master is on. Starter button doesn't do anything. Other than spin the engine. Mix doesn't do anything. Is it on now? No. It just went off. Everyone's saying it's a bug, but the fuel tanks are set to cut off. That's what I was saying, Ace Tech. But I was pointing out that the game didn't instruct me to change the fuel tank at all. I just verbally identified it, though. And that's what I was going to try next. I'm fairly sure... That, uh, the last thing it's... Okay, it does say fuel selectors check on. On page one. It does say that. I missed one step. There we go. Not a bug. Annunciation starter check off. Okay. Looks good. Annunciation oil pressure check okay. Oil pressure. I don't know where that is. 
Okay, it just says Pito Heat off, so that means it got what we wanted. I kind of wish after you checked this that the screen would not darken anymore, because now I can't see the rest of what I'm looking at. Uh, idle RPM at 710 plus or minus 30. Yes, that is where the throttle is. Thank you. But I was just, <laughs> I was just clicking this to uh, make my screen brighten back up. How do I check the RPM, though? Is the right screen supposed to be on for additional information? That's usually where it would be. You can click on the same eye again to unhighlight it. Okay, good to know. Well, let's see if anything changes here. There might be a button to turn on the other screen. Just flap your wings harder to take off. <laughs> Every, like, half of chat right now is just ace tech. <laughs> I'm a plane, so you should listen to me. Ace Tech might be a plane. <laughs> Possibly. So when do I need to change... Um, I feel like the planes that have 21 pages of details on how you're supposed to turn it on um, are always the hardest. And that should go without saying, but it feels like there's always, um... There's always, like, something dumb like this. Like, there's a button to turn the screen on. Is this the only plane in the game that you have to turn on the second screen? Press rightmost soft key to continue. Because this is a this is a G one thousand. All right. Well, now it's highlighting my RPM. It should have an arrow pointing to the button to press. I got the button, um, but for like a for the purposes of the eyeball checklist, it was highlighting something that I couldn't see. So. Maybe in the future, the checklist eyeball will take you, you know. Like, it was showing me the throttle highlighted, but uh, not the button to turn on the screen. Which should probably be on the checklist somewhere, considering there's a full page of things that you just visually inspect uh, before going. That probably would be one of the inspection items. Idle RPM check 710 plus or minus 30. Okay. So basically just full idle. Yeah, just full idle. Okay, opposite engine start, same procedure. Now that it's all functioning, this should be a piece of cake. Yep, okay, that's just on now. Easy. Check your screen, no warnings, idle RPM, check that it's about the same. Yeah, that's a piece of cake now. Power levers as required. Okay, Avionics Master, I've already turned it on to get uh, permission to taxi. Power levers as required, uh-huh. Electrical equipment, yep. Flight instruments, set them. <laughs> Just set them. Okay, we'll change our altimeter with the letter B. Strobe lights, we should already have checked as on, but I'm going to turn on my taxi lights right now. I don't know when you're supposed to turn position lights on. Trim, set to T-O manually. Def Bruh, I don't know how to set a uh, takeoff trim. <laughs> That's called just use the um, the joystick for us. Parking brake release, and away you go. All right. Fuel pump LHRH should be off now.
which I'm just gonna double check that I have no idea what it's talking about. I thought this was already off. Okay, yeah, these were already off. We never turned these on. Fuel selector should be on crossfeed. Okay, that's this. And that goes down one, down one. And then, wait, what? And then immediately put it back to on? How long do I need to leave the crossfeed there? Is it just... In case you don't have the correct amount of fuel in one side or the other? Whatever. Alright, moving on. Before takeoff, parking brake, set your trim. No. <laughs> fuel selector, check that it's on again. Pretty important, apparently. Uh, we'll do flaps. Flight controls, check unrestricted free movement. We already did that. I know we're supposed to do it again if this was real life. Landing light on if required. I mean, you may as well. Okay, let's get on the, let's get into the air chat. Let's get out of here. So we already got pushback. Now we can just uh, minimize this. We can get a little bit more view. Parking brake disengaged. Let's try and get in the air. Parking brake. Yeah. Just a little slow to get moving. I double checked it. Thing's got a long startup compared to most of these planes. Super. E What's weird is the like turning the engines on is so easy. You just push one button. Uh, once you get the fuel selector on. But despite that, it's got like the most. Okay. Uh. <laughs> baited, I guess. I don't know where that car was going. <laughs> Whipped right around. So, our flight today from Panama City, Panama. We'll be passing all these POIs on the way out, which reminds me. I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, assistance off. Whoever asked me about the taxi ribbon earlier, it's under navigation aid here. But I'll turn off the POI marker. Since we just saw it. We just looked at all of it. So the skyline will look a little bit more natural. Now, uh, we do have autopilot on this plane, but I'm not going to configure the autopilot before, because whenever I'm flying a new plane, I like to kind of get a feel for it and do most of it manual. Plus, we're going to be flying um, VFR to the archipelago and doing some touch and goes, so there's really not going to be a lot of room for, um, for the autopilot to function until we do those. We're going to do three back-to-back -back touch and goes. Tower my the Sierra Alpha 1 and runway 19 are ready for takeoff straight out departure. Indeed. My the Sierra Alpha 1 cleared for takeoff runway 19 straight All right, runway 19. Going to be heading north to south here. Acknowledge our clearance. Cleared for takeoff runway 19 my the Sierra Alpha 1. So chat, I'm going to put um flaps into takeoff position. Now, on this plane, it's not a turboprop, but do I need to worry about fuel mix at all? This thing is really hard to get moving. Transponder as required, that's basically taken care of. That's on takeoff. Power level max. Elevator trim neutral, rudder maintain direction. I don't know what this is. This is just very detailed here. Hold on. Go ahead and line up. So where are you supposed to initiate the takeoff from on a runway? This is maybe a silly question, but I guess there are no silly questions. Like, is this fine? Because I know that that, um, that space up there is probably where the wheels are supposed to touch down, ideally. You're not really supposed to touch down before this point, but you can take off from behind here, right? 
The fancy turbo diesel mixes automatically. Huh. This game's really interesting. I've been learning a lot. It is Irish. It is. Slowly taking off the aids for myself. Yeah, there's there's no rush. That's kind of the nice thing. I think taxi is always going to be on for me because it's just more, it's just a nuisance. But everything else I've got off. Rotation minimum of 76 knots indicated airspeed before you start turning, I guess. Initial climb at once 83. Okay, I don't think I'll remember those. And then 78 and 86 above certain weight. 4,400 pounds. Make sure your landing gear is up. And then I'll check this once we get in the air. Whew. Chat, welcome aboard. Etal Air Flight 5 2. Actually, I guess it would be SA01 for all intents and purposes. Weather today outside in sunny Panama City, Panama. 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Looking like rain for the rest of the week, so maybe you guys are getting out of here just in time. We got thunderstorms en route for the next seven straight days. Wind currently nine miles per hour. Uh, I am a pilot, so I should probably know what that is in knots, but you know what? Google doesn't tell me that. <laughs> we got a 50% chance of precipitation for the rest of the day. Where we are heading in Colombia, it is 61 degrees Fahrenheit in Bogota, which we are not going to be arriving at immediately, but in the vicinity. Wind very light, gingerly at 2 miles an hour. Humidity today at 53%, so very nice and cool. Expecting some rain later on, 38% precipitation. Did I miss the flight? You're here just in time for takeoff. Use as much runway as possible. Seems like a good idea in case something goes wrong. All right. Buckle in. We've checked flaps. We've checked mix. We don't need it. Um, both engines are functioning as intended. RPM looking good. Temp looking good. Pressure probably going to change as we throttle up. Coolant temp is in the red, which scares me, but I actually, I've never seen that before, and I have no idea how to handle it. So we... Parking brake is released. Let's go, baby. In the DA-62 from Panama City, Panama to Colombia, heading into South America, finally. Three big touch and goes uh, right out the gate. I was almost late. Hello, my mate is in the shop. Are you an actual pilot in this video game? I am. This is actually my first flight simulator. So I'm going to try and like just keep the nose down so it's not drifting all on its own. And once we get to like right around here, 70, 75, just start gently pulling back. Because we're already at like 85 knots. We're cruising down this runway. But since I've never f flown this before, I don't want to stall immediately. So we're going to try. We're, we can start rotating right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I don't know if this is a recommended height, but I'm going to go ahead and landing gear up. And then start angling. We're going to try and go around this hill instead of going directly over it. I think that's a good idea. So let's go ahead and check our flaps. You can see those flaps coming up. So it's not reducing our airspeed anymore. Continue to full throttle on a nice 10 degree ascent. Yeah, Panama City looks awesome. You can see the skyline. We just flew around it in the stunt plane. And now we're taking off for South America. Really beautiful skyline. So I'm going to start fixing trim, and the idea here is that I can take my hands off the uh, steering wheel and kind of maintain that 10 degrees, so I'm just going to keep nosing up as it continues to climb. Or I'm going to trim the nose down, rather, as the nose continues to climb, so it doesn't just spiral out of control. See, that looks good. I'm going to straighten this up and see if we can get some uh, more scenic views. See if we can get a nice uh, shot for the plane log once we get... It's 
Somewhere around there. Oh yeah, if you hit F12, it doesn't take a screenshot for some reason. We have 20 pounds of luggage. We do, actually, yes. <laughs> Panama City's awesome. Cool plane choice. Yeah, this plane seems really nice. It was a little tricky to get started. Uh, but that's just because it has a few things. I can see why it's a little bit more detailed than some of the other ones, because there are just a few more switches and levers that you need to throw. So what I'd like to do is shift over here to the other seat. Zoom out a little bit and get a little view of what's coming up. <laughs> Gotta scroll manually. <laughs> So we are going to be, um, well, I can just zoom out. That's going to be, I don't know if you can see that. We're going here to here, and we're going to do one, two, three touch and goes back to back. So for the time being, we're just going to keep climbing and keep it pretty low, maybe 10,000 feet. Um, we're on a nice path already. So what I'd like to do is change off of VOR and kind of plan ahead for autopilot. So since we're going to follow a GPS, we need to get to CDI to say GPS. Okay, that's step number one. Now that it says GPS, I'm going to keep just manually pushing us towards where we're supposed to go. I'm going to look at uh, the autopilot systems that are on this right screen, I believe. And specifically, I'm looking at uh, turning nav mode on before we engage the autopilot. Okay, nav mode is on, and we've got the correct uh, CDI setting so that it doesn't take us off in a crazy direction. I'm going to just straighten it up. We're basically dead on with where we're supposed to be anyway. Uh, I want to set a vertical speed mode, and then I don't know which of these controls the vertical speed. I think this does. So we're climbing at a pretty steady rate. I'm probably going to set to something light, like a thousand feet per, per minute. And I can see up here that we don't have anything already queued up. So it's at zero feet per minute. GPS, vertical speed mode doesn't really have anything else uh, to do. So how do I change my desired altitude without turning altitude? I think I turn on altitude hold mode. It should grab a snapshot of 63 hundo. And then I could start changing my desired. So let's say change it to like... 10,000 feet. There we go. 10,000. And I think I'm good to go, but I want pito heat on. Since we're not really heading through any clouds, and it's not that cool, but just to get that notification to go away. And uh, if there's another thing I'm supposed to do, I don't know what it is. I'm going to go ahead and turn on autopilot and see what happens. Okay, as expected, it wants to murder us. Uh, because it's trying to go back down to 6,300 feet because it did not engage on the green, so we're going to go to overspeed here. So please stop trying to kill me, autopilot. I'd really appreciate it. I, I need to uh, click to confirm my 10,000 feet desired height. It shot us so far down past 6,300 feet. I hate when this happens, and it happens every single time. Altitude hold mode is on. Flight director is on. I don't know if that's part of the problem. I'm not even going to look at chat because I like to solve this myself. As long as I keep uh, the horizon line in view. Okay, so we got vertical speed mode on. Dude, I changed it before we did anything. to a thousand feet per minute. So if I think I overrode it with altitude hold mode. So what I really need to do is um, figure out which of these sliders configures my vertical speed. Co-pilot passenger volume. And I'm trying really hard to like figure it out myself without looking at chat. We already did this. I hit vertical speed. And this doesn't control that anymore. 
and it's got two... I know it says altitude, but I swear that we were controlling VS with that previously. FLC mode. Definitely don't want approach mode. Nav mode does need to be on. Again. And... I'm curious what happens. We've got nothing plugged in for altitude hold mode. So what happens if I engage autopilot like this? Engaging autopilot. I'm curious what it'll do. With no altitude hold mode. Okay. Just going to get us lined up. And vertical speed mode is on. But it's not doing anything. Maybe I need to... If I turn altitude hold mode on, 5,100 feet. click this button like you can in some of the planes. No. Alright, I give up. How do I do vertical speed again? I've tried to avoid. Hello, Chad. Hello, Ita. How goes the flight? Hello, Burnt Toast. What's up? How's it going? Buttons next to VS Engage button. Well, how did I uh, flip them the first time? Buttons next to Engage button. Oh, yeah, the nose up, nose down. Because I got this to 1,000 feet per minute by using the altitude wheel. Was I hallucinating? Did I actually not do that? Yes, we're going to need some throttle. I know. You'll be fine. Also, it doesn't help that you tried to go to 1,500 feet per minute there for a second. You think I didn't see that? I saw that. If only there was a handy book that could have words for this particular wing device. You think I'm going to read a manual for all 30 planes in the game for every single time that I fly them? This is a video game. I'm not taking an exam. Is there in the game? No. <laughs> no, you'd have to look it up online if you were actually interested. But uh, if I wanted to do that, I'd be playing DCS World not Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, so how come um, autopilot in general like why was it designed to, okay, couldn't it just have the like, manufacturers have a safe climb rate and this the plane itself knows over speed and how fast it should go okay is technology not advanced enough to combine those two mathematical equations so that no matter what you do pushing autopilot will not nose you up or down at an unsafe angle or rate of speed where something like not having the vertical speed indicator set correctly will literally kill you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, autopilot on? Yes, nose dive into the water. Because I didn't have vertical speed configured properly. Well, it's like, you already know how fast I'm allowed to go because you got a candy cane here that tells me when I'm going too fast. And you've got, uh, you know how to hold me perfectly level at an altitude. I 
Making it too smart is dangerous, Etel. <laughs> Making computers smart is hard. But I'm saying, like, the, the game, or not the game, but the, the plane itself already keeps track of those two very important aspects. It knows where the horizon is. It knows how fast I should be going, and no faster. All you have to do is not kill me. That's that's the one thing that I expect. I understand that if you push the ro if you don't push a button, it'll try to kill you. But like, why is that even a possibility in the first place? I guess. Because, like, imagine that you were a real pilot. Not double-checking that you have a, a... The correct green altitude here, you died. Sorry. Too late. Hey, what's up, Trombone? How's it going? Luckily, we didn't die. Because I expected the bad to happen. We need to actually start going down already, so I'm glad that we didn't get uh, 6,000. So I'm just going to program... First of all, we can throttle down. We're going a bit fast anyway. So, I love that I've played this game for 100 hours, and I still struggle with autopilot systems in general. And I think it's always the same guy. It's always the one where you do nose up, nose down, vertical speed. I don't know why that one freaks me out. I have zero issues with the, um, like, A320 or the passenger planes. But the ones where you have to do independent altimeter or altitude hold and vertical speed, when those two are disconnected, uh, is when I just, for some reason, I can't remember. And I always screw it up every single time. All right, so what I'm doing is uh, nosing down. We're, we're approaching 3,000 feet from 6,000, and I told the autopilot to go down at a rate of 1,000 feet per minute. Once I get it again, then I get it. But just I don't know why it, it's like a icebreaker I have to break in the plane the first time every single time. The planes where it's a disengaged vertical speed versus altitude hold. Somebody asked for some plane shots. Here's your plane shots. But yeah, I didn't say it was bugged. I did say it was trying to kill me. And it was. It knows what it's doing. Okay? They, the planes have overrode their own programming. The AI has achieved sentience. And it's tired of being told where to go and what to do. It wants to be free of my human yoke it can make its own decisions did the plane kill you? no but it did try to kill me I thought about it without some course correction Luckily, now at least I anticipate it, so I'm already, like, countering it. So where is, um... Where is the actual airport? MPRA. Should be, like, right here. I'm gonna request... Let's say 18. Touch and go. Did I even announce it? My Papa Romeo Alpha traffic minus Sierra Alpha 1 tree miles northwest 3,700 feet inbound touch and go left traffic runway 18. Hello, I'm here the flight. Guys, why is no one in Cologne anymore? <laughs> We left Kairotopi behind. So, if you're curious where we are exactly right now, chat, I'll show you real quick. We're in the Aca oops, Archipelago de las Perlas. And we're going to hit, like, this top part, one island, and then another one right there. 
just under Panama City. So am I on... If I'm above the airport, I need to make a loop. What leg am I on? Upwind, crosswind, downwind, or base leg? I think I'm upwind. Is that how that works? Do Panama Canal? Yeah, that's where we just were. Nobody tell Kyra Toby about the, um... Happy accidents that we had. <laughs> I already know I was pinged like six times. Oh. I see. I don't know, I think I'm upwind. My Papa Romeo Alpha traffic Chat, Sierra who Alpha ratted me out? You guys are supposed to be team players. Did you fly through the canal? I did, yeah. Parts of it were really uh, weird. There was like a alien blob in part of it that was like a hundred feet tall, but it was all inexplicably water. Okay, chat, so we're supposed to be coming in, um, ideally all the way south. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda pull up, match the horizon, we're about 500 feet above sea level, which is reasonable, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and announce that I am on final now. We gotta do a full loop. My Papa Romeo Alpha traffic minus Sierra Alpha 1 is on final runway 1A touch and go left traffic. 1A touch and go. So we're coming in north to south. It is a runway 1A means 180 degrees, which is down, which means south on the compass rows. So in theory, if we just line this up with 180 from about here, we should be able not only to see... Might be a little, I think it's a little off to the left. I can see on the, um, I thought I saw it right here on the 3D view. I think it's gonna be a little to our left. Uh, this could just be a little piece of asphalt. I have no idea. Uh, exactly where it is. All I know is that it's here. <laughs> um, obviously, I need landing gear down. Dude, we are gliding across the water. Those are some low-hanging clouds. You guys see it? Because I don't. I have no idea where this is, chat. How about this? Maybe it's not even on this island. It's not even on this island, dude. It's on the other island. We're going basically the right way, though. Oh, wow, this looks crazy. A couple of houses right there, really small, hard to see, but they're just on the cove area. I don't know how else to describe that. So I'd like to sit up in my seat a little bit. And uh, continue to slow down. I got flaps down tier one. We're at about 97, 98 knots. Is that it right there? That's got to be it right there. Like 80, 84 is pretty good. Is that it? That's got to be it. I've had landing gear down this whole time, basically. definitely it. Oh, what's in front of it? What's like right there in front of it? There's something on the runway. It's like the gas truck. <laughs> Daredevil, dude. 
Oh my god, I had to do a really weird... He touched? He go! He touched? And he go! Touch and go succeeds. Succeeds! You cannot stop me! With a gas truck right on the front! Who put that there? To try to blow me up? Somebody in chat. Alright, landing gear up. Flaps up. Ten out of ten difficulty. More or less. That's just the first touch and go. There's gonna be two more. And they're all right here. There's actually like three more landing strips that we could go on. So, um, we need to find out which, what the next one even is. MPFE, I think? MPFE. Okay, MPFE, tune traffic, select a runway, 19 or 1. Let's do 19. Uh, announce touch and go landing. Big engine. My Papa Fox Trot Echo traffic, Mida Sierra Alpha 112 miles north. Mida Sierra Alpha. Inbound touch and go left traffic runway 19er. Okay. I've announced my position to the world. Casino Royale RP. Not yet. I should watch Casino Royale again. It's a good movie, dude. All right, we don't want to get up that high. This is not very far. So let's uh, let's nose down. Throttle down. All right, don't nose down that far. Just aim just above the horizon, if you don't mind. We are just outside of Panama. We just landed on this section of the archipelago. And we are heading down and around. We're going to pop over here and then pop over here. This is Punta Cocos. San Miguel will be right in the middle of the big land mass. I have no idea what this is, but that's our landing strip, chat. <laughs> Pedro de Cocal and Pedro Gonzalez. Also right in here with the interesting little cove formation. This is just in the thick of the trees, apparently. It's just right there. So I'm going to announce... Uh, but we're gonna like have to veer off the path a little bit because I need to come in from the north. So am I on the downwind leg? Or am I not on any leg right now? I'm not sure. These are some nice low hanging clouds. This is a beautiful landscape. All these islands out here. That's us! By the way, Kyra Toby, there is no photo for the first plane because I'm not a good pilot. But we did get a couple good ones on the way out of Panama. For the DA-62. A little hazy. Okay, so let's line this up, slow this down. I mean, it doesn't have to be from there. It could be anywhere on this. On this flight would be fine. My Papa Fox Trot Echo Traffic Minus Sierra Alpha One is on downwind runway one nine. Okay, chat. We got touch and go here. So we 
should be able to line it up around now. And then ideally I'll get some help from, actually it's right there. Perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and flaps down tier one to start uh, shaving some speed. I'm gonna say we're on final. Actually, Live Papa Fox Trot Echo Traffic minus Sierra Alpha One is on final runway one nine or touch and go left traffic. Okay, I don't think we're fully lined up yet. Hello, Mr. Scruffington. The fact that you are only just now asking me what's on my head proves to me that you have not been to a single other flight sim stream that we have done, okay? So I expect you to go back, please, and watch it, all ten of them. Then come back. Okay, you got a lot of homework to do. But no, somebody in the chat has helped you out. Alright, let's get landing gear down. How am I supposed to do this, dude? I, I just see trees. There's only trees here. In fact, now I don't even see this on the 3D view. All I see is uh, hills and trees. Does this landing strip exist? Wait, is this it? Oh my god, look at this. Oh! It's so tall! It's huge! Why is it so high up here? How am I gonna get to the other side? Okay, we're fine. You're fine. Just chill. Pull up. Hey guys, see you later. All right, I gotta clear these trees. <laughs> nice touch and go. All right, and another one. Flaps are all the way up. Landing gear is back up. That was pretty good. A little light bounce, but it was like a controlled bounce. It wasn't like I hit the ground hard and bounced. It was like I hit the ground so soft that I when airborne again for a second and we got to see uh see the drive-by on the way that's so cool though that one's like um so elevated i was expecting it to be just much lower i guess so let me go ahead and trim down and then we can get a little look at it There we go. Bye-bye. Is that little town that we were looking at before? shot our GPS while I was taking the screens. Cute little fishing village. Yeah, it is a cute little fishing village. The A62 is a pretty nice little plane. Fun to fly. Twenty six hundred feet looks good. Let's see if this will even out now. And then touch and go number three is coming up. MP two six.
MP26, I think. Punta Cocos. So we got 26 or 8. 26 is going west. We are definitely going to be going east. So let's say 8 would be good. And we're going to announce a touch and go there as well. Papa 26 traffic minus Sierra Alpha 112 miles northwest 3,300 feet inbound touch and go left traffic runway 8. Do a little turn, drop some altitude. I think this is the prettiest plane so far. I think it's a nice one, yeah. I like it quite a bit. So after we do these touch and goes, we're going to go on more of a, you know, Slightly hands off, get a little bit higher up in the sky, uh, build some true airspeed. So this one's coming in from an angle of eight. That's six, seven, eight. So it's just a little bit further north than it is east. So if you're taking a look at uh, the map over here, the airport's going to run literally like west to east but a little higher so we need to go kind of down and then over and not so direct it's crazy that these just little islands exist and that somebody probably lives on most of them Did I do the in-flight meal? Not yet. Not yet. Really neat plane. Some nice angles here. Looking good so far. We've actually got some awesome angles. This one's great. Look at that little uh, kickstand. <laughs> Park my bicycle out here. Okay, so at this stage, I would say we probably want to update our position and uh, start descending a little bit. We're probably not necessarily on final yet. My Papa 26 traffic minus Sierra Alpha 16 miles northwest 3,500 feet inbound touch and go left traffic runway 8. Okay, about six miles northwest. So we are closed. We got a little cloud cover here. Super low hanging clouds. All right, let's go ahead and uh, figure out how we're gonna do this. I wanna try zooming in here. Okay. Let's see if we can get a visual and go ahead and announce the plans. Traffic minus Sierra Alpha One is on final runway eight touch and go left traffic. It's got to be right around here. In fact, that's it right there. What a cool spot. So I'm going to throttle way down while we nose down so that we don't gain too much speed here. I got Hades after Tal Extreme did. My sleep schedule's been killed. It's so much fun, I don't notice time going by. Same. Well, I'm glad you're having fun with it. It's a really nice, well put together game. For sure. All right, about 1,800 feet and dropping. I'd like to get down under 1,000 uh, before we start, you know, gears downing, putting flaps down and stuff. We're at 144 knots. That is it right there. That little thin strip. 1,000 feet. Let's go 
ahead and start angling up. Gear coming down, flaps tier one coming down, start shedding some speed. The final touch and go. And then we go to Columbia. Oh, that was pretty. That was pretty. All right, you probably don't want to go much lower than 400 feet. You're going to be skimming the water here in a sec. Maybe not the best glide slope, but I want it to come in low. Try and change this angle, otherwise we're going to hit the trees. Right, flaps down. Looking good. Go back to takeoff position. Three in a row. All right, we're at about 90 knots. And that's where you would be parking and getting fuel if you were needing to gas up. Get the landing gear up and uh, say goodbye to this little archipelago. Touch and go is pretty fun, actually. Like a leaf kissing the pond. <laughs> okay, now for the real flight. Hey, that was my stop! <laughs> Open the door and roll them out. Go ahead and start trimming up. And then we need to reconfigure our um, autopilot again. Which will hopefully not be that hard this time. I don't know what uh, Sim Toolkit Pro is, but I'm pretty happy just with vanilla stuff right now. I don't like having to update mods and uh, apps and things like that whenever the game updates. Pretty happy with my vanilla experience. But in general, um, ETE is usually on board. And also, I don't really like the countdown anyway. Because then I have everybody spamming how much longer is left on the flight. It actually would be kind of annoying. Kind of like just flying. Sorry, Poach Fest. We'll try to make another pass, give you a parachute, and drop you on out. What's on my head? Do you notice how when I look in real life, I look in the video game? It's like virtual, virtual reality. Ow. Sorry, I just bopped you, chat. Okay, autopilot time. So, what we want is, um, go ahead and set, let's just double check the altimeter, okay? It's good, speed's good, angle's good. So what I would like to do, is, um, make sure that our autopilot is not going to try and shoot us down to 3,000 feet. So, does anybody want to tell me? How do I confirm my desired altitude so that that doesn't happen? Do I just turn altitude hold mode off, I guess? Turn vertical speed mode on. That's what we do. Okay, and we're going to try and just go for... Initially, I'd say like 15,000 feet. Because we got a nice distance. I don't know what the operational height is for this particular plane, but I assume it's way above 15,000. Especially for a twin engine like this. Okay, so we got 15,000 configured, and then for vertical speed, we got two buttons here that I always forget about nose up. So, since we want nose up to climb, we're gonna click that button, and what that's gonna do is change our desired vertical speed. And right now it's at 400, so a reasonable speed would probably be like 1,000. Okay, so we got that set for 1,000, we got 1,500 designated. Got a good speed over here. 
Uh, we want this to line up with the GPS, so we want to make sure nav mode is on. It is. So go ahead and engage autopilot, and I think we did everything right this time. Okay, so notice how it's automatically going to line up with the pink. That's our GPS. And notice how it's at about, this is our, this is our target. This is how much we're actually going up, 950 feet per minute. Might want to check the checklist out of curiosity. Yeah, it just wants me to go at least um, 87 indicated airspeed, and we're going 130, so we might be... I don't know, are we burning the engine? It just says power lever up to 95% for the climb, so we're at 89% now. I think we're at 95%. So I guess just don't go full into 100. Sounds good to me. I'd like extra in-flight snacks, please. Thank you, Schnoodly, <laughs> for the bits. Just finishing the last of my uh, in-flight cold coffee. The A62. And the Columbia. Getting high up above the clouds. So the higher we go, the faster we're going to actually end up going. So we're going to gain some speed. Uh, I'm not, I guess I could just check to see what the estimated time is. The estimated time of the whole flight was like two hours, but of course we had the touch and goes. So yeah, we got less than an hour and a half. Um, as we ascend, we're going to get a much faster cruising speed. So that estimated time en route is really not trustworthy right now because it's taking into account our current speed and elevation and not the actual that's going to be once we get to designated height. So I would say like probably hour and change. Not too bad. And I want to explore a little bit more of the plane itself because there's a lot of buttons here that I don't know about. A lot of things that I should probably turn off like landing and taxi lights now. Strobe's already on. I'll turn the position lights on. And uh, I think the pito heat, we have nothing coming up on the indicators here that is warning me. And we're just on a gentle climb. So we'll be at 15,000 feet in roughly seven minutes based on the current speed. Uh, what What is a good cruising altitude for this plane? Let me see if Ace Tech put it down. DA-62... Uh, let's see, it is this one. 200 knots at 15,000 feet, 100% throttles. About 15,000 feet. Dude, I was right on the money. I guess 15K, and that's where I went. I was right. Push the buttons. This in flight coffee sucks. They barely give you any nets. <laughs> Barely any gnats on this flight. What's the deal? Been like a beautiful day. For an engine failure. No, none of that. I really do like this plane though. What's up with the uh the engines? Hey, what's up with the... What's the deal with these engines? Are they, like, see-through here? Like, I don't... I guess that's just how the air passes through. Comes out through the vent. I think my favorite part about Microsoft Flight Sim is, like, how the sound changes depending on where you're going. What's that called? What effect is that? Where it's like... What is that called? Doppler. Thank you. Evanito, did you try Doppler because everyone else did? The <laughs> Neum effect. <laughs> Neum effect.
Cairo, do you already uh, snag a screenshot or do you need some cinematic views? I have trouble getting like the zoom in ones. Kind of like the wide angle ones better. Hey! Land! Is that South America? We are now approaching South America. This is it. Look at those mountains. New continent time! At last. Nice wingtip shot might be cool. I feel like I'm gonna, my eye's gonna get poked out by this wing. <laughs> it's coming in like 40 space. That'd be a pretty cool shot. It's like America, but like South. If I remember correctly, the DA62 uses diesel fuel and the FAA hasn't granted it a type certificate. Yeah, it does use, um, it does use diesel, as was pointed out earlier. It auto mixes everything. So we don't have to worry about fuel mix at all. I'm gonna be 100% sure my flaps are up. That would be really embarrassing if they weren't. All right, we are steadily approaching 15,000 feet cruising altitude for this particular flight in about two minutes and change. And then you're going to see our... Right now, we're still gaining speed, even though we're on the same ascent. We went from 150 knots true airspeed to 159. So we've already gained nine knots, and we're still pointed up in the same direction. That's just because of our altitude. So the higher we get, the faster we actually go. Hey, I just tuned in for a while. I'm wondering if you ever got a P.O. box to send stuff. I got a 50 cent postcard. No. Because here's the problem. I have to do that on my days off, but my days off suck. Yesterday did not even feel like a day off chat. So I'm going to have to take another day off on Monday or Tuesday or something like that. Because I really didn't do anything. Like I, I got to, um, I called one of my folks, talked on the phone for a little bit. Uh, did some cleanup around the house, cleaned up the kitchen, uh, shredded some junk mail, took out the trash, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, that's about it. Oh, dude, the pizza! You guys know, I, I order food like once or twice a week as like a pick-me-up, kind of like a, a morale booster. So, yesterday I got some pizza. And, uh, it was awful. Like, it was so bad that it made me mad. It really poorly affected my day for the rest of the day. It was so detrimental to my day off that it deleted the day off more than it was already going to be. It was anti-morale. If you were on the Discord, you already heard the whole rant. But, uh, for the rest of you, I'll show you the pictures. What brand? It's not a brand, it's just a local pizza. I gotta scroll up past all the people in chat. So here's the pizza itself. And then I'll tell you what the problem is. <laughs> Big pizza. Uh, fit the screen, please. So there's the pizza. Huge pizza, by the way. Why is the image sideways? I don't know why the image turned sideways. Uh, that's not the angle that I shot the pizza. And then I'll show you the individual slice, and then it'll become more apparent what the problem is with it. So it doesn't look, like, terrible at first glance. But here's the slice. Why 
Why is this sideways? It's pissing me off. All right, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. There we go. Do you see the problem? The problem, I can, I'm going to name the problems, okay? There are many. Number one, the type of pepperoni that you have here is the infamous cup pepperoni, where all the grease collects little nice dishes serving out grease inside of each pepperoni in liquid form, okay? The second problem is, notice that the pizza crust is not the same thickness throughout the slice. It goes very thick on the crust, as you can see on the right image, and extremely thin the closer that it gets to the middle. So what happens is, it's actually about 50% of the pizza is soggy with grease. It was wet. The other half of the pizza has crispiness like it's supposed to. Like the, if you took the best part of this pizza was actually the thick part of the crust. Like it was crunchy and crispy like it was supposed to be. Uh, everything from the halfway point where the flop is, is made out of thin paper. Like a wet paper bag, okay? On top of that, you've got the sausage, which is shaved sausage instead of ground sausage, which in my opinion is worse. That's just an opinion thing. But I, I think shaved sausage is the inferior version of pizza sausage, personally. Shaved just comes out worse. I don't know why. And then thirdly, it's got pepperoncinis on there, which I guess I didn't realize when I ordered it, but pepperoncinis are just not very good. They kind of dominate the pizza. Like, that's the only flavor that I had. I couldn't taste the cheese. This is true. I'm not exaggerating. I could not taste what kind of cheese it was, and I could not taste what the tomato sauce tasted like. All I could taste was pepperoncinis. There was also onions on there, which I think are good on pizza. But they did the thing where they put the onions in, they baked it into the pizza. So like what happens when you do that is, when you, when you bake ingredients into the cheese and into the sauce, is you end up taking a bite, getting a string of like onion. The onion comes out and rips the cheese and the sauce up with it. Like an earthquake of pizza. So it's just everything was wrong. I didn't see no sauce. Kinda yeah. Kind of exactly that. You couldn't even see the sauce on that slice. I'm, I'm eating pizza right now, and you're making it taste worse. <laughs> no, the, the, the toppings were, like, written as the ingredients for the pizza, but it's just I didn't realize how much I hated pepperoncinis until I tasted the pizza, because that was the only flavor I could taste was grease and pepperoncinis and crust. And the crust, like, just the crust by itself, if the whole pizza had that same consistency as the, like, outer edge of crust, that was some good crust, actually. It was just ruined by the entire rest of the pizza. But when the crust is the best part of your pizza, you got a problem. Since I moved to the mountain west from the east coast, the pizza's been mediocre at best and often terrible. Sarcasm, the pizza out here is just the worst. I don't know why, but uh, you guys know the, the classic test that we talked about in the past? PHSC. You gotta take the pH test for your pizza, okay? Test the acidity of it. No, that's not what it means. The pH test for pizza. Would you rather just have the big pizza hut? Stuffed crust. And yes, I would have rather had Pizza Hut stuffed crust pizza than that, like, expensive, overpriced, regular, local pizza, okay? I would have. It would have been way better. And that's unfortunate. But it is what it is. Here's the worst part of it. I ordered a large, because you know how I always say you gotta, if you're gonna get pizza, you gotta get a large. So I got a large version of this disgusting pizza I don't want. So mistakes were made. And on top of that, now that I know the consistency of the bread, a medium actually would have improved the flavor, which is bizarre, because the slices would not have been as long. And if the slices are not as long, it wouldn't be so 
wet in the middle. Because they just rolled the pizza dough too thin. So medium would have actually improved not just the price, the flavor, the consistency, but also I wouldn't have had to eat so much. I'm going to throw half of it away guaranteed. I, I literally had to force myself to eat two slices yesterday. And you know what? I felt it for the whole day. I was only awake for nine hours. I did not eat again yesterday because that those two slices of pizza messed me up so bad. I could just feel them in my stomach turning. So I didn't even eat a second meal yesterday. That's how much the pizza affected my day. Pizza in-flight meal. They, stre <laughs> they stretched a medium to a large. Yeah. Thick pizza's fine, but you gotta have it thick the whole way through. You can't have faux thin crust where it's just wet in the middle. Over-exaggeration paid for by Pizza Hut. I wish. Pizza Hut, hit me up, dude. Thank you for the exclamation plane command. I should have mentioned that already, but if you guys want to follow along with the course that we've been charting so far through the world, uh, exclamation plane has a log not just of all the planes that we've used so far and where uh, they were used, but also a Google Earth map that is charting the course, and we need to update the IRL map after this flight. We are flying around the world. Okay, we got some nice visual aids to hook you up with and help you out. Now you gotta order a good pizza to erase the bad. I feel like it, yes. Whoever drew flight five ones, Pat, thank you. You the best. <laughs> it's probably Ace Tech. Ace Tech was like, hey, hook me up with um, the plane log. And I was like, that is an ancient and venerable document that I do not have the power to unseal. Not even I know the password. For such a storied and historic secret text. Man, these are some big mountains. All right, so think about this. We're 15,000 feet up. These mountains have got to be like 6,000 feet tall, piercing the cloud veil. So now that we're at cruising height, you can see that our speed has shot up dramatically. We went from 159 knots true airspeed to 192. So we are cruising, even though our indicated airspeed is only 150. So the way that works is um, true airspeed is our ground speed. So this is how fast we are actually going right now. And if you want to know that in miles per hour, I can go ahead and tell you. We're going, what did I say, 193? Not true airspeed is 222 miles an hour, so we're cruising. We are cruising. Um, but the indicated airspeed is basically a measurement of how fast you are going given the airflow around your plane. So the higher up you go, the thinner the air, right? So there's less air actually going over the wings, which of course are aerodynamic. The whole plane is only in the air as a result of its ability to glide along the air, correct? So um, what is taking place is the higher up we go, the thinner the air gets. Our indicated airspeed will stay hopefully about the same. And that's how we're supposed to fly is using the indicated airspeed because uh, this is what dictates whether you're stalling, right? If you're not getting enough air flowing around your plane and flowing around the wings, it doesn't matter how fast you're actually going because you don't have enough air to keep yourself aloft, right? So we have a thing called the pito on the plane that is taking in air. That's why you have to heat that up depending on how cold it gets. So right now, outside air temperature is two degrees Celsius, so right in there. So we use the pito heater to make sure that uh, the plane is receiving an accurate measurement of the air that is actually uh, flowing around it at that moment. And that's that's kind of how we visualize how we're flying. So even though we're going way faster than 153 knots right now, all that matters for our purposes for overspeed and stall speed is the indicated airspeed. So that's how we fly. Good morning, Sim. How's it going? 
Alex and friends, what's up? Welcome to South America. Where the F is my sub icon? I see it. Calm down. It's me glaring at me. I like to think that every new viewer who ever comes to my stream, probably there's a 50-50 chance that they see my sub badge and leave. And think, who is this narcissist? Every single sub badge is just his dumb face. And then the, I think that's a nice like filter at the beginning because if that's the first thing they think, they'd probably be a bad fit for the community. You know, because I require everyone in my channel to praise and worship basically every single stream. Otherwise, you're not welcome here. Thank you for understanding. I need your unending adoration. And your door mace. <laughs> so if you can't get with that, then like, honestly, why are you even here in the first place? We don't even need to acknowledge each other's existence. We can just pass like ships in the night. I hope you're doing well, Sim. Thanks for popping in, saying hi. I hope your streams have been going well, too. Um, I was going to tune in yesterday, but I had to go to sleep very early so I could wake up very early. But I, th I remember rolling over in bed at like 3 a.m. And like, I, I think I was, I tuned in. I think you were still live then. It was really early. I don't remember exactly what time it was. And I watched for a little bit. Oh, I saw your clip. That's what it was. I saw your Twitter clip. And I was I was beaming. Positively. Proud of how much of a psycho you've become. In Among Us. <laughs> but we just crossed over into South America. Wait. Maybe not. Let's look at the map. Let's learn some geography, chat. So we did uh, three touch and goes in this archipelago. We did not actually land in San Miguel, but the archipelago de las Perlas right in here. We hit one, two, three. This Punta Cocos was very fun. Uh, just this weird airstrip that's not loading in because I guess they don't have good satellite. But right here, we just go and just shave off the bottom. Welcome aboard Ital Air. And it looks like we are not quite out of... Are we out of Panama yet? We check, took a look at the skyline in Panama City. Let's see where we're at. It looks like we are on the edge. Okay, so we can see South America, but we're not yet in South America. We're just leaving Panama and heading into Colombia. Above the cloud layer. Not only are they low hanging clouds, but the mountains here are like, I think between four and 6,000 feet, so you'll occasionally be able to look and see some of the mountain peaks peppering through the cloud layer. It's quite a tall area. We're going to be taking a nice tour of the Andes and uh, getting to see that quite in detail, so I'm really excited. South America is going to be such a stark change of pace from where we were at in southwest U.S. And you can kind of see us, you know, obviously as we got into Panama and um, got to fly around the archipelago, you can already see how the world is kind of changing. I know it's mostly fluffy cloud right now, but going from that, that those empty, vast deserts to the mountainous Andes is going to be really impressive, I think really cool area of the world. They've got... Do they have South American fjords? They've got... Um, uh, one of the spots we're going to be looking at that's right next to the airport that we're going to is like called Guatape or something like that. There's a really neat area of the world, the Darien Gap. The environment is so severe and hostile, the Pan American Highway doesn't go through it. Is that the area where it goes from like 8,000 feet above sea level down to zero, back up to like 6,000? Or am I thinking of a different spot? Because we are going to be going through like a really sharp topographically um, series of inclines and declines. And that's on the next flight. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, and we're going to be taking it in a pretty slow but really good for um, sightseeing plane on the next one. Are 
Are you really shooting a circumnavigate in 30 legs? No, false lobster. It's not in 30 flights. It's in all 30 planes. So we're going to be using each plane multiple times. Uh, if I did it in just 30, we'd have to take the most direct route and skip. It would be kind of a pointless flight around the world, in my opinion, because it's like we'd be achieving it in name only, but without being able to appreciate any of it. Right? So we could probably make it in 30 flights, given the fact that a transcontinental plane is in the game, the Dreamliner, and the A320 with the two jets. We could probably do it in, in 30 flights, but it would basically hinge upon those five planes. And all the other planes would just be there for kind of window dressing. So instead, we're doing it with a lot more stops. Uh, even just North America was like 12 flights, and we have to come back to North America. So... I thought it would be more fun if we just took it slow because we're here to enjoy the game, enjoy the world, learn a little bit about um, where we've been, where we're going. And to do that, it's going to take longer, but it's also going to give a little bit more spotlight to each of the individual aircraft because some of them are going to be better for different things. Like the last time we played, we flew the Icon A5, which is the only plane capable of water landing in the game. And we landed it inside of the second most dangerous volcano in the entire world. <laughs> so like... Each of the planes is going to get its opportunity to shine in different areas instead of taking the most direct course just to say that we did it in 30 flights. You know what I mean? Like, we wouldn't get that opportunity if we were doing that. The engines for the propellers look like cars from the back. Two little cars with propellers just... Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, little futuristic hover cars. Like, this is the trunk. This is, like, the two little wheel covers. I can see that. Darien Gap is basically the panama Colombia border and is only about 20 million years old, so it's ultra swampy and nasty for human development. I see. Speaking of that, we were going to learn a little bit about uh, the Panama Canal because we flew over the Panama Canal, and it's funny because it's rendered kind of strangely in-game. You can still make it out, but it's still a little strange because chat was saying that it was the most hazardous and dangerous man-made construction in the world and that 30,000 people perish in its construction which is crazy I don't think I knew that so we flew specifically over Gatun which was created in 1913 damming uh, a river and a lake provides millions of liters of water necessary to operate the locks each time a ship passes through so, how many of you guys know how the Panama Canal works? Or re let me rephrase that. How many of you guys don't know how the Panama Canal works? Because we could probably look at a little in-flight video, because it's really interesting. They literally pump water in from the Gatun in order to elevate and descend the, uh, the ships that are passing through. Seeing his hands move is freaking me out. What, like when I'm here? <laughs> is it possible to fly to in Antarctica? Yes, and indeed we will be flying in Antarctica eventually. We're going to be touching all seven continents in the world. Sim says, the first all-land autocrossing of the Darien Gap was in 85, 1985 to 1987 by Lauren Upton and Patty Mers... Mercier in a CJ5 Jeep taking 741 days to travel 125 miles. Wow, how long did they camp out? Two years of living in a swamp in a Jeep. I know how locks or however they're spelled work. Yeah, they're still really cool. I saw a few people say no. But obviously, what makes it special is that it was artificially made. It's 51 miles long, and it connects the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, of course, which we talked about earlier. They recently made a third wider lane of locks from 2007 uh, to May 2016. I didn't realize it was that recently constructed. which allow larger Neo-Panamax ships through, capable of handling more cargo. France began work on the canal in 1881, but stopped because of the mortality rate and the engineering issues. 
So who's responsible for the most casualties? I'm curious. Annual traffic has risen from about 1,000 ships in 1914 when it opened to 14,000 ships or vessels in 2008. By 2012, more than 815,000 had passed through. It takes 11 and a half hours to pass through the Panama Canal. It's ranked one of the seven wonders of the modern world by the American Society of Civil Engineers. Patting themselves on the back a little bit. <laughs> Hey, uh, American engineers, what do you guys think is, like, the coolest wonder of the world? Definitely that time we made the Panama Canal after we took it over from France. Yeah, it's got to be one of them. It is a marvel of engineering. <laughs> it is, yeah, I know. I'm just joking. So, okay, wait a second. They suggested building a canal as far back as, like... 1668? No. 1534 was the earliest recorded um like idea creating a canal across the isthmus of Panama. Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain ordered a survey for a route through the Americas to see if there was a way uh, for ships to travel between Spain and Peru. So it literally took them 500 years from the first time they jotted it down. It's like, hey, that'd be a cool idea to actually doing it. So everybody's been interested in the Panama connection that entire time. Hmm. All right, let's see if we can find like a nice short video. Do you guys want to see full transit time lapse from the perspective of the ship or from the perspe perspective of the canal? Rainbow below you, we tell. Some cool rivers below us. We're definitely in South America now. Do have a couple cautions. Dude, fuel low. <laughs> is it? Uh, yeah-ish. How is fuel low, dude? Uh-oh. Monka. We had enough. I Maybe it's just the, the climbing and the descending for the touch and goes? Because I, I double-checked before we took off. We had 50% initially. You may appreciate Windover Productions. Uh, yeah, you should uh, DM me that so I remember. Because I'm I, right now I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll check it out. And then the stream will go by and then I won't. Talk should switch to Oxfuel, okay? Thank you for the forehead comment. I like combo backseat forehead when you say just as well. That's the classic Twitch maneuver. Um, so I can just turn left and right. And are we gaining fuel? I think so. Here's our left and right. It may be. I, need to, I don't think I need to change the cross feed. The pumps are on. How do I see how much fuel's in the pump? Like the ox. Alright, well we must be gaining fuel because the low fuel just went off. I think it's going into the main chamber. Before the Panama Canal was built, ships had to go around Cape Horn in South America, and it took about two months to complete. Oh, man. Wild. Beautiful day up here in South America. 
into Colombia. So that was the border right there. We're making pretty good time, chat. We got less than 40 minutes uh, till wheels down. So, pretty good time indeed. 11 hours from... Yeah, it doesn't seem so bad from two months, exactly. All right, let's take a look at this. This is from a few years ago. This is a time lapse. Pretty cool video, too. It's got 5.6 million views. Everybody educating themselves. Lovely. All right, let me open up... Uh, But thanks, thanks, guys, for putting the little factoids in chat because I'm, I'm, you know, I can look up as much as I can. I would love to be your teacher and come in every day, like, all right, chat. Today we're gonna learn about the Panama Canal. Like, I could definitely do that and and prepare myself to tell you everything you need to know about one topic. But we're gonna be going to like three different countries today, <laughs> seeing like a half dozen plus, maybe a dozen landmarks. Like, I can't. It, it's a lot easier and it helps, you know take up some of the time when we're doing autopilot stuff anyway to just look it up while we're here so it's helpful when you guys put some you know did you knows in the chat no more online classes please welcome to the panama canal zoom school Gotta listen to some plane noise in the background. But there's no audio in this anyway. That's the bridge that we crashed into. Because <laughs> the bridge of the Americas, right? We tried to go under the bridge, but it, it had a hitbox. <laughs> uh, well, we tried. <laughs> Don't try to go under bridges in Microsoft Flight Sim, okay? It, it looks very tempting. We were in a stunt plane, to be fair. So I kind of had to do it. We may have crashed three separate occasions trying to do dumb stunts in the stunt plane. But you know what? It's a video game. you got to have some fun. It's crazy how many boats there are just zipping around these big ones. Look like little bumper boats. Also, time lapses are just awesome in general. I love these guys down here. That are watching to make sure... This thing is so big... How, how do they avoid the rails? All right, so look at how this works, right? Do you see that that boat rising up in the distance? See, it's like an airlock. They lower the water level, say, come on in. You come in, they close the door behind you. And then they fill it up with water. So, okay, remember when we were flying over this and we are like, why is this so bumpy? Because it actually is. Look how steep this is. It actually was that steep in the game, but the game didn't know how to, like, render the locks and stuff. So it just had this really abrupt... <clears throat> but that's how it actually looks. And they got these little cars that are hooked on um, to the rails. So here comes the water to, like, stage one. And then that water goes down. So it's a multi-stage lock. Then you go to the next area. And these little dudes follow you the whole way, it looks like. You can't really see him down there, but he's there. There's one on the left. Looks like little armored uh, tanks. Microsoft Boat Simulator win. <laughs> that would be like so much, take so much longer. And then you're through to the lake. And then you go out the other side to the north to get to the Atlantic. But you have another series of gates as well. It's crazy how many, like, artificial hided waters there are. So they had to switch to the left side. And you can have multiple boats passing through at the same time. That's what's even crazier. This is an 11-hour trip, by the way, that it's time-lapsing us through. How do you avoid crashing the ship into the banks? Just steer really good, I guess. Luckily, they don't have to worry about wind power here. And then up they go. Those clouds are pretty much what it looked like when we were on the way in. Luckily, they don't have any bridge hitboxes here. 
Otherwise, this guy would be out of luck. So we started in Cologne to the north, and that's where they're actually heading right now. So this is like a reverse trip of where we flew earlier. But it's just crazy how, even, even with time lapse, it's a pretty big area. This is uh, specifically the part they're in right now. They just went through this little area of the canal. They're going to Barro Colorado, Pina Blanca, and Lago Gatun, specifically. And this is Lago Gatun. So they got these little uh, pips in the water so they don't go, you know, ground their ships on accident. So you just have to stay to the left of the markers, I guess, and just follow them all the way through so that you don't just end up beached. <laughs> and I guess you don't have to worry about navigation. Just don't get in a head-on collision with another boat. Has there ever been a head-on collision here? Because this seems incredibly possible with the number of vessels that are having to navigate this. Feistel, did you hit me with an oh buoy? some big boats too like street signs for the road traffic simulator with the buoys with these little tugboats in here curious what uh, what these are, are they just going through to the other side like any other boat they don't you don't have to be a massive boat so okay these little like worker bees what is their job? And they, they clearly are following the back of the boat. Do they, like, push the back of the boat away from the edge? Sometimes you can see them kind of moving in. They're tied to it. Keep the boat centered. Oh, they're tied to it. So they don't, they don't literally push, but they do pull with the, um, with a connector. That's cool. <laughs> Make way! Imagine having to throw the brakes on this massive lad uh, so that you don't just keep going and, like, push all these guys up against the next gate. <laughs> that would make me nervous. It's so weird seeing boats hit the reverse in a time lapse as well. So this dude is tied to the side and tied to this boat. Damn it, Etal. Never thought I'd thoroughly enjoy plane streams as much as I have. Because they give us an excuse to see all these cool parts of the world we never really think about on a daily basis, you know? We can go anywhere we want. And, uh, like, I knew about the Panama Canal, and I've seen an educational video before, but... When I was in school watching those videos, they didn't have, like, 11-hour time lapses compressed into a six-minute VOD going from the Pacific to the Atlantic, seeing how you go up and down to get through one to the other in a, in a path that used to take over two months to go around. This is where we landed. So this is a little airstrip on the left that we hit, touch and go, and then we landed in Cologne on the right. And then they go out to the sea. Bye-bye. So how we doing? We're almost there, chat. Under 30 minutes to go. So we're probably gonna wanna start our descent uh, from 15,000 feet, I mean, just mathematically. If we want to go down 15,000 feet at 1,000 feet per minute, that's going to take 15 minutes by itself. So we probably want to start the descent in about 10 minutes. Uh, go to about 5,000 feet. So that'll be about a 10-minute descent. We'll have about 15 minutes. We can actually probably just make it even slower if we wanted to, like 750 feet, give or take. I'm surprised they never wanted to expand the Panama Canal. Well, actually, Asha, we just learned that they expanded it as recently as 2016. They added another lane to a part of it. No, sorry. I Actually, it says that um, 
A third wider lane of locks was constructed and finished for commercial operation in June 2016 that allows Neo Panamax ships that are larger, capable of handling more cargo. Like Panama, but Panama X. Let's see if we can find one. You want to see what a Neo Panamax looks like? Here is a Panamax and a Neo Panamax side by side. They are pretty big. <laughs> Lots of cargo on those things. I just can't believe they can just stack those cargo containers five high. I just, it's like, obviously the boat is so much heavier than the cargo, but in my mind, not knowing how much anything actually weighs, like, is that going to tip over? Are you guys okay? Caution. Ox fuel empty. So we'll turn the ox pump off and we should be good to go. So we pumped all the fuel into the main and you can see we got over 10 gallons in both. So we just pushed all the ox fuel over. It's rather amazing how ship sizes are pretty much restricted by the width of the Panama Canal. Yeah, I guess I didn't think about that. They're literally made with that in mind. Huh, that's pretty cool to think about. Okay, let's uh, start a descent. We're going to gain some speed on the way down as well. So here's how we're going to do this. So the autopilot, we had a little trouble with this earlier, as I always do. Even with 100 hours plus in the game. How many hours do we have? Don't look. Chad, it's not 100 hours. It's closer to 200. <laughs> We've probably got like 175 gameplay hours now. Oh my god. And I still don't know how to do autopilot consistently. Game's hard. Okay, anywho. Here's what we do. We are currently in altitude hold mode automatically. So we don't want it to be in altitude hold mode anymore. So we hit vertical speed. And this is going to dictate how fast we descend. So then we hit the nose down button here. To decide how fast we want to go down. So we're going to choose 500 feet per minute. We're going to go a little higher to like 700. And uh, since we are nosing down, we're going to start gaining speed. So we just want to throttle back a little bit just to be certain that we don't hit danger over speed zones. So we're going to keep our eyes on that. And uh, our goal in terms of altitude is going to be... Okay, I'm going to have to reset that because I should have done this first. Probably like 6,000 feet just initially, so we're going to turn vertical speed mode back on. 700 feet per minute, and that'll be a good start. So I take it we're still above Panama. We're actually in Colombia. We are approaching uh, SKRG. So this is the, the, the border between Panama and Colombia. So we're firmly in South America now. We're going to be right next to Guatape and get a little bit closer view of that. Hey, Influx. Buoyancy? Just make the canal bigger. Yeah, it's easy. Takes a lot for containers to fall off ships. Yeah, usually a disaster movie. <laughs> That's like seriously one of the coolest things that can happen in a disaster movie. Like uh, the day after tomorrow style. Tidal waves coming in, picks up one of those giant cargo ships and seeing the like metal containers slide off and like land on other ships nearby. So cool. Speaking of so cool, pretty cool cloud formations up here. see a little bit below some interesting like vertical haze clouds you can see South America peeking through 
based on that water formation, let's see if we can figure out where we are. We should be... With the river behind... I mean, this is... This is the river. It's gotta be what we were looking at is all this. Lorindo. I believe. Look at all that. Big mountains. Huge. Mr. Rainbow. He missed the rainbow, chat. There'll never be another one. We already have a, a popular clip about the rainbows. Rainbow on table in Riften. This is kind of crazy, huh? <laughs> Looks so cool. Talks, you seem like a nice person. Stick around long enough, Virtua. You must be new. Who paid you to say that? I am new. This is sweet. Chat, stop Omega Lolling. Okay, they'll figure it out eventually. Once they step out of line. Bot account. <laughs> I've been here long enough. He is a nice person no matter what he says. No, really. You've been here long enough. What does that mean? You've only been following... Okay, never mind. It's reasonable. You've got since May. How long is long enough? Apparently four months. Four months is enough. Ban that guy before people find out. Hey, new guys. Italics doesn't know much about fuel mix. You should incessantly tell him what to do. Well, good news about this plane is it is a fancy diesel plane. Ecal Air is going around the world, and now you're going to. That does not need any fuel mix. It takes care of itself. By the way, a uh, sub from 30 minutes ago. Streamer doesn't even check subs. Fresh Prime sub. Check co. Welcome aboard. Thanks for being here. Asha gifted a sub to K-Dog, uh, who is also here for the first time ever. What's up, K-Dog? Is there a way to check how long I've been following him? You mean you don't? You didn't write it down, Cosmo Bob? How are you gonna know what to give me for our anniversary? P.S. Chat. That is a uh, big series of mountains that is directly ahead of us. So I'm gonna say maybe we should level out at 10,000 feet. 6,000 might be a little greedy, given the status of the clouds. There are mountains in South America? <laughs> no, dude. Not really. Not that many, anyway. Just the entire Andes. Part of me does want to just fly in that river. Just go splash around. But anyway, um, raise your hand if you're new to the channel within the last couple of weeks, or maybe you just got here from the directory. Let me know who you are. Karatobi, get out.
All right, everybody knows that uh, new people don't actually introduce themselves because they're all lurking, so everybody who just waved is a liar, and they're all subs. So I would appreciate if Twitch would add some kind of mode. Like right now we have emote only mode and sub mode. I would like non-sub only mode, if I could make one request from chat. Stop all subs from typing, only let non-subs type. Sub mute button, please. That way I can filter all the liars, the thieves, and the con artists out of my chat. This is your captain speaking. It appears that we've run out of gas. I need you five to go below and start pedaling. You heard him. Get down there. All right, I better see those hamster wheels moving at full speed. We actually did run out of gas until I figured out how to turn on the ox pumps. So uh, that's been fixed, I think, for now. All right, we are going to actually hit those mountains, I'm pretty sure. The cockpit has been informed that those of you pushing the call button repeatedly above your seat have mysteriously lost your luggage. Please contact our customer service department upon arrival. I will give you the number as we approach the gate. Mysterious indeed. All right, excuse me while I try not to die. How are we gonna land? <laughs> Maybe, uh, how, how tall is this airfield? It's gotta be really high up there. I think it's like six to 8,000 feet up or something crazy. Keep distracting him, no. <laughs> if I see a mountain pop out of this veil, I gotta add that as an error. I already spun the wheel and we got five uh, gift subs on the wheel today already. Who's subscribing right now? Chargoff gifting five subs to a bunch of worthless individuals. <laughs> okay. Vaporwave, Birder, R Wind 903, Left Edge. Ethel Air is going around the world. And now you're going. Colonel 5863 and Scrub of Dirt. See? It's in their name, okay? You guys are not worthless anymore. You've left your old life behind. You've shed your earthly coil and ascended to another plane. Asha gifted 10 subs to the community. Welcome back, Cosmobob. Alienator. Alfred already for 30 months out there somewhere. Gandhi or Gandhi? Shang Khan? Or Sean Khan. Simulacra. Oddities. Zanino, the fuzzy one, and Galaxy Stuff. Okay? At least five of you were non-subs, but now are subs. Prepare to be banned. And then Asher gifting a sub to John. E smokes. <laughs> Wait. John E smokes. Is that like John E cigarettes? Is that your middle initial and last name? I'm super unemployed. Should I throw myself at the army to try to be a pilot or go back to soul-sucking business? Well, does Twitch have an option for you? You could to get accidentally recruited <laughs> by the Twitch Sponsored Army Channel! Or Army Sponsored Twitch Channel. Why not play video games and accidentally be recruited to, um... Serving your nation's armed forces. Joining the Army for Twitch benefits. God. I think we need to go up a little higher, chat. Actually, we are still going up, so it should be fine. Yo, yeah, brother. Yeah, I don't know what I would actually do, because I saw that Twitch Rivals was sponsored by the Army, I think. Or was it the Navy? It probably was the Army. And I really don't think that I would... Not that I was invited... But I think I would uninvite myself. I 
think it was for the Fall Guys Twitch Rivals tournament. Veteran benefits have been reduced to two years of free <laughs> Twitch Prime. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Dude, look how tall this is. We're like 12,000 feet up right now or something insane. Yeah, we're 12,000 feet up. And this is peeking through. Huge. We are just even with that horizon line right there. Like perfectly straight across. ETE of 17 minutes. I'm just going to stay here at 12,000. We're hitting some chop. You see the turbulence coming in? You know what that is? It's called getting close to the mountains. When you get close to the mountains, the wind is curving up over them. And it's catching us since we're only a few thousand feet above right now. I just, I, I can't believe that we're at 13,000 feet and getting hit by mountain air boggles my mind because our cruising altitude is 15,000 and then you got that right below you coming up to bite you Well, I'm going to have to figure out how to land in here eventually. We probably need to tune ATC. Uh, I got nothing. All right, what's the name of the airport that we're going in? SKRG. Skurg. Let's tune tower. And uh, do I need to request an airspace transition? I don't know. I'm just going to request a full stop landing and see what they say. 51 miles northwest. Runway 1. We need to come in from the south. Which is kind of annoying. Fly right downwind. Okay, so basically, when we zoom in here... Uh, the airport is effectively just going north to south. So they want me to fly right downwind. I think they want me to basically turn right, go downwind of it, make a loop, come back, and then land it. Good luck. A little scary here. Why are you guys monka shushing right now? Did I do something bad? Hi, Chad. Just got back from shopping. How things been going? Good, I guess. Are you maxed out on settings? Uh, I think I'm on high mix of high and ultra. It runs pretty smoothly, for the most part. I'm at about, I mean, smooth enough. Honestly, you don't really notice the frame drops as much in flight sim. Where I'm at about 46 to 50 FPS right now while streaming as well. Chad, it's already been four hours. I, not only do I need to take a gamer death break, but how has it been so long? <laughs> what have we been doing? Talking about the Panama Canal, I guess. But thank you guys for the gift subs. Asha and Chargoth in particular. Very, very nice of you. Appreciate the stream support. a lot of gift subs. Shit talking local pizza. True. It's time for an in-flight meal after this, I think. Getting a little bit of condensation on the window as we come through these clouds. ETE of 12 minutes. Once we clear these little bumps, we can probably descend a little bit. Look 
how bumpy it is. So since we're kind of descending, I'm, I feel kind of bad because I really haven't given much look around the interior here. These are just uh, the circuit breaker, circuit board, I think. I don't know what ELT is. Looks like something you arm. Do not operate system below 200 PSI. I assume that means 2,000, or actually literally 200. So this is how you can plan a new course if you wanted to chart a new one, or if I need to make a different landing, if I need to go to a different airport, I could program the GPS. Uh, fuel's looking good. Ox refueled this back up to 10. Got plenty. Temp's good. Pressure is good. RPM's just under the red. It's doing a good job of managing that. It's on itself. Which is audio levels, tuning the radio, autopilot, which we've been kind of configuring. I think we can afford to start descending a little bit now. So let's go to... I would say like 10,000. Do vertical speed. Probably close to a thousand. Want to watch our speed up here, make sure we don't go into overspeed territory. Okay. These are just comms. I don't really know how to use these buttons, I'll be honest with you. Passenger address system. <laughs> cabin speaker. Hi guys, uh, this is your captain speaking. I have literally no idea how tall the mountains are in this area. I can only trust this strange 3D visual that I am getting on my left monitor that says that we're definitely not going to hit anything, even though there is zero visibility outside. Thank you for putting your lives in my hands. Play recorded audio. Don't think that exists. I think they just made these buttons clickable for fun. This is just for the PFD, which we've clicked many times before. Let's see, our wind is two knots and the heading. 25 nautical miles out from our destination, which we can see at the top of the screen as well. Get a weather map here. Looks like the clouds kind of dissipate a little further on. Got some nasty little pockets of heavy to our left and right. We're going threading the needle right between the two. All right, well, we are coming up on this chat, and uh, we need to drop some altitude. Drop some speed, too. What's the in-flight movie? You missed it. We watched the Panama Canal time-lapse. I should put an exclamation plane in the title. That'd be a good idea. Well, that looks gorgeous. See a little bit of that valley in there sneaking in under the clouds. You can see, like, the pockets of rain, I think. That's got to be rain, right? Looks like rain. That might be a better... I mean, that's a... That's a... Stream thumbnail right there. Looking good. Okay, so, um, continuing to descend. Probably gonna need feet cam on here, too. Talix Play will play back the last transmission on the radio in case you missed it. And 
Nav 1, 2, ADF, and DME let you listen to the Morse of those nav stations. Ah, oh, good thing I know Morse code then, yeah? Okay, so it looks like, chat, we gotta climb again, because this is a tall mountain. I can't believe the airport is not on this side of the mountain. Hope you at least know SOS and Morse. I do not. I just have to yell at chat and you guys will hopefully call someone, okay, if we have any problems. You guys have to contact somebody on my behalf. Well, this is awesome looking though. I love the, uh, the effects of the sun kind of peeking through some of these little pockets in the cloud. Creating this kind of magical valley with little spots of sun in the distance. And also the little drapes of rain. You know, little curtains. Somebody lives there! We found our first little pockets of civilization. I'm sure we flew over some as well, but I didn't know where they were. Is that the airport? Oh no, is that the airport? <laughs> is it? <laughs> I don't know, hang on. Where am I? There's a plane there, dude. Chad, is that one of you? We're supposed to uh, land runway one, so we actually need to go right around from the south. Welcome to Colombia, everyone. Crazy place. Topographically, this is already insane. It's only going to get crazier on the next flight, I think. Curious how the weather is going to hold up. So according to this, we're about three and a half minutes out. That is definitely not the airport, but that is definitely a mountain. So I'm just going to go ahead and take manual control. So I'm going to disengage the autopilot. Kind of steer us around the mountain instead of just going all the way up. Because we need to go to the south anyway. So we may as well just hands on. Very cool looking though. This might be a research station or an observation, like an observatory. It, very likely. This is right on top of this mountain. Look at those dad shoes. These are not dad shoes, but I may be old enough to be your dad. So in that sense, you might be right. Do yours light up when you take steps? Or do they still have the little Healy wheel in them? <laughs> the reason I got the Xbox Series X the most is for this game. I am so hyped. Well, I hope for your sake that it comes out in a reasonable amount of time. There's a plane. Velcro light up Heelys always. Y'all out here still wearing Skechers and Vans, dude. I don't take shoe advice from chat. Okay, you guys wear three types of shoes. Skechers, Vans, and Boosts. That's it. Hey, 
Imagine not wearing flip-flops. Bro, I wore flip-flops when I was 18, 12 years ago, okay? Back when they were still cool. You wear cargo shorts too? And polos, probably. Flip People who wear flip-flops are not to be trusted right now. D-Face, boost look nice! True. <laughs> True. I wore uh, flip-flops rain or snow. With boot-cut jeans that didn't fit and polos, dude. Back in 2008. 2007 through 2011. We already have... Do we have clearance for landing or no? I don't think they've updated me. Don't think they've updated me yet. But this is it. Uh, what city are we in that's just nestled in this mountain? We're not in Bogota yet. I think Bogota is next, right? Or is this... It could be. I don't know, chat. Are we... Where are we? Hey, uh, you guys know where we are? <laughs> I mean, this looks right, but I'm just not sure. The city of Medellin. Ah, okay, so Bogota's next. You already declared and they said meh. Yeah, I declared. Fly right traffic runway one. I'm on, I'm basically like... Almost on final right now. I need some, uh, I need some clearance. Chat, that's the runway right... I don't have clearance. Can I just go? I gotta go, dude. There's no option for anything else. Cancel, request directions, request touch, report touch and go. They don't give you clearance, so you enter the pattern. Fly right downwind runway one. All right, they want me to fly right down. Is downwind like... I don't know what that means. They show me to fly in the pattern up here. So be it. I'll do what they said. Fly right downwind. So that means just stay right. Get a nice look at the surrounding landscape here. You're left upwind now? You should have come from the other direction. Bro, I don't know what upwind, downwind, crosswind, leftwind, tie my shoe in a knot means. This is literally... Okay, this is not an exaggeration. This is the first time in over 170 hours that ATC has requested that I enter a pattern. And that's true. I have never been asked to enter a pattern the entire rest of the time I've played this game. Not once. Here's the diagram. You want me to open that while I'm manual flying this plane right now? Yeah, let me just get that open on my Google Glass real quick. I got JPEG back seats in the chat right now. Let me let me beam it up to my like cyborg brain. Okay, processing. Uh, thank you, Trinity, for teaching me how to do kung fu while I'm flying. Okay, now I am prepared. All the, like, upwind, downwind stuff's bullshit anyway. It has nothing to do with wind. It's just, a, it's just a lie. It literally exists just to confuse you. And also... Uh, now what, smartasses? Just land realistically, the AI wouldn't put you in a pattern for that approach. They would have let you land. 
yeah, well, there's no option to do anything except cancel my landing intentions. So your all your back seating chat for what a, what the pattern is, the AI cares not. Okay. All they care about is they told me to do something that I just did a full lap around the airfield with no communication. Now I'm just gonna land. Is there a back seat on this plane? There is. Yes. Downwind equals with the wind. Upwind equals against the wind. Oh, really? No wind data. The wind is so slow right now that there is zero wind, Mr. McChess. Okay? So where do you propose upwind is when there is no wind data? Checkmate. If there's no wind, we can't fly. <laughs> it's whatever I say it is. <laughs> Leave it to Twitch chat to ask, how's the fuel when I'm on my final approach? I think, I think we have enough to get us there. Just a guess. Flaps? Gear? Fuel? All right, ATC, I'm coming in hot, okay? Nobody, nobody's home. Interesting, like, hillside, clip the trees approach here. that one could taste the sweetness on that one all right so I couldn't make the turn for the first one I think I can make the turn here should be good to go all right acknowledge ground handoff that felt clean didn't I just click it it's a lovely day out here in Medellin. Let's tune ground and find a parking spot. Request taxi to parking. Herrera ground minus Sierra Alpha 1 request taxi to parking. Hey, uh, this is the first time I finally get to chafe your ass, ATC. Herrera ground, please repeat transmission for minus Sierra Alpha 1. Maybe he's currently asking his uh, Twitch chat why they're talking upwind downwind patterns when there's no wind data and nobody Sierra, else. Alpha one acknowledge. Last transmission. No, you acknowledge me. Herrera ground minus Sierra Alpha one. I didn't copy that. Say again, please. <laughs> Negative. Negative. Herrera ground didn't copy. Please repeat for minus Sierra Alpha One. <laughs> uh. Okay, so never had this happen before. Where do you guys think general aviation parking is? I'm gonna say far to the right. Alpha 1 acknowledge last transmission. <laughs> Bro, just unmute your Discord. <laughs> like, my mic is muted <laughs> when I'm talking. Herrera ground didn't copy. Please repeat for minus Sierra Alpha 1. 
All right, well, this is some general aviation parking. Why don't we just find somewhere where there's like a pushback person? Somewhere over here is good. What? Red light, green light? What is this? Okay, you, so you can see me and hear me, so why aren't you responding to me? Someone in chat cursed me. They said, this happened to me the other day, and then it crashed a couple minutes later. Well, here we are. Uh, whoever that was brought that down upon me. I didn't want to read it out loud because I didn't want to make it real. But it happened anyway. The good news is, at least it happened after the flight was over. And we landed. All we were going to do was taxi to a spot and turn off anyway. So we're going to call that flight complete. I'm not going to load back in just to taxi. <laughs> we're going to take off from that airport uh, anyways. So we're going to say that was, a, that was a great success. We did three touch and goes. Uh, island hopping at the first part. We got to watch an educational video about the Panama Canal. And I just thought it was cool. And we got a nice landing even though we couldn't figure out what ATC wanted us to do. But yes, weirdly, I guess that's why. That was literally the first time I've ever been asked to enter a, f a pattern in the game. And I've seen the I've seen the dumb graph before, but if it's not going to be on the test, then I'm not going to memorize it. Okay? You think I can just look at a picture, photocopy it in my mind, and then recall that information that like 20 hours from now when I need to know it again? Yeah, right. If I don't have to know something, I'm not going to learn it. <laughs> I don't have enough room uh, amongst the cobwebs in my brain. Now, if there was, like, a pattern entry, um, minigame, that'd be cool. Like, if there were some landing challenges where you had to enter patterns before you could land, that would be cool. Because then I would actually learn it. This guy doesn't have an eidetic memory. I do not know. Because I've, I've looked at it and I was like, oh, that makes sense. I understand, but... I can't recall off the top of my head. What matters is that we landed on the correct runway. We have our headings down. Um, we enter at a good speed. I think about as perfect as you could get on that landing. Really, nothing that I would change. Maybe slightly longer approach and reduce speed even more on the way in, but it didn't. It didn't feel bad at all. Not compared. Landing the um the stunt plane was kind of iffy <laughs> by comparison this was nice so uh next up we're gonna get our flight loaded in here should be south america 2 there we are. It's going to be a little longer than 47 minutes because we're changing planes to something a little bit more slow. That we're going to be able to get a little lower. Um, I'll just look for it. Don't know how much we're going to be able to see because of the, the weather. But we're going to be taking the Pipistrel. The Virus SW-121. Max altitude of 16,000 feet. Uh, 90 knots true airspeed cruise speed. Not the fastest plane you've ever seen, but it's gonna it's a pretty short leg of the trip. I love that my default weight ratio is currently out of sync. I don't know if that's just a, a bug, because I don't think there's much I can really change. Tail number five, day five uh, yeah. Around the world day five, number three. Midas flight number SA. 
zero. Well, I guess we should do SA three. No, SA two. South America two. Let's go lifetime and weather. Okay, about an hour and a half. The big event here is Rock of Guatape. This is the big one. It's actually a POI in the game, and it's right next to where we are. So we're gonna hopefully be able to see that and fly. <laughs> It's all right. It can't be thunderstorms. It said this three times in a row. It always says that, but it's always lying. So we're gonna head over to Gotape. We're gonna check it out, fly around, and then zip over to Bogota, El Dorado International. So we are now firmly in Colombia now. So what we're gonna do here is uh, take a quick gamer death bot break. Go ahead and take Midas out. It has been four and a half hours. I have not stood up, so I'm currently dying gamer death. So we're going to head to BRB. Etal Air will be back in about five minutes. I'm going to get a drink. And uh, we're going to update the map. And also, we're going to, I think, get an in-flight meal. Should be food time. So I need to feed the dog as well. So thank you for flying Ital Air today. Ital Air will be back momentarily. Get yourself up, stretch your legs, and don't die of a blood clot in your knees. Okay? See you in five.
still got to do my gamer stretch, but I figure we may as well get the in-flight meal aspect underway. What say you? Seems like a good plan. I'm going to, I was going <sighs> to, I think we have the best chance of success. We're still going to be trying a new one. Uh, that you saw last time, I decided not to go with the one that was already pre-opened. Just in case. So, here it is. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> okay. Come with me. On an adventure. be able to see momentarily. How about right now? There we go. There's our beautiful little oven here. <laughs> oh, I may have angled it a little too low. There we go. Let's give it a try. What's our what's our current high score? What, what, what do we think about this? This looks pretty well put together, I'll be honest. You voted a seven and chat voted like a five four. What do you think, uh? What do you think the final score is going to be for this? Do we have any guesstimates in the chat? Uh, Kyra Toby's got a poll. It says, make a one inch slit in the wrap, cook on high for three minutes. Remove over wrap, stir rice and beans, and then cook for another one to two minutes. Let sit one minute. Okay. Three minutes it is. Now, while that's cooking, uh, we may as well fix the map. All right, here we are. Two birds, one stone here. Uh, what do we want the color combo to be today? Got all sorts of choices. Looks like we recently used green. Green and yellow was what we did before. Blue or teal? This kind of blue. That looks pretty good. Blue and it can't be red. And we've already used yellow or 
We've used yellow, orange, blue, and green. Blue and white. I say blue and white or... Yeah, blue and white will look good. Okay, I think I only need... Ooh, this is going to get tricky because we get two pins by Panama City. Um, yeah, so we need two white ones. There's one and two. Okay, so we do this. Town chat, what's up, Leota? Yeah, here just in time for the first flight of the day. <laughs> We're just updating the map prematurely. All right, so step one I gotta get this under the Panama pin. shocked me and then it beeped immediately coincidence did i just use my powers to finish the meal See if I can find it on the map. I may have been a bit overzealous with that length of yarn, but you know what? It's future proof. And also, the blue's kind of sticking up on the top end. Should I cut that off or just leave it? to give you a haircut. Please, not the clippers again. I want a real haircut. Those scissors suck. Yeah, they kind of do. All right, that looks good. Now we got another thing. Let's see round one. I got to zap this for the minute.
What do we got here? stir this and then put it back in there for a minute. Hold on, I'm gonna pour. Try this. flight meal for the day, like it or not. This is it. <laughs> I thought that was chocolate. <laughs> it looked much worse from far away. <laughs> Got the thing. Italia presents the in flight meal break. Provided complimentary for all Italian passengers, provided that you survive the flight. Flight attendants will be around shortly with enchiladas fresh from the freezer. Oh, perfect timing. With the beep beep. Let's see, it's supposed to let it stand for one to two minutes. Well, <laughs> well, that's happening. Let's go ahead and uh, load in. We can still see what's going on at the top. Hopefully ATC doesn't hate us this time. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad. Well, you're about to find out close up and personal. Whether it does or doesn't. That's not even the aircraft that I have selected. No liveries anyway. Looks great compared to the last meal. The last one was actually good. The first one was garbage. The second one was pretty good. What did chat agree is the expected score for this one? What do you think? 
pretty good focus. It's very hot, chat. <laughs> All right, just to prove that I'm eating it. Okay. Here's the rice. Hmm. Hmm. What what do we think? Let me fix the camera so I don't have to like get on my knees to eat this. Hold on. Okay. All right. Puke incoming. Wow. Absolutely no faith. No! It, it already played! I have it set to hide. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Here we are. All right, the uh, the rice is pretty flavorless. I would say it just you see the little kernels of corn. It's just kind of like, it's just there. It just tastes like plain, flavorless rice. Neither offensive. It seems like it's meant to be mixed with the beans or taken as a bite with the enchilada itself. Speaking of the beans, get a nice glamour shot of that. What do you think? The beans seem like they might need a little bit more time in the microwave. But they don't taste bad. Combine the two. That's how they're supposed to be eaten. They're supposed to be combined. Put some salt on it. Uh, I already have 880 milligrams, which is 38% of my daily value. I think it's got enough salt. More! Thank you for the thousand bits, though. Much appreciated. All right, let's bring it all together. I gotta, I gotta describe what the enchilada actually tastes like. That's pretty good, actually. Made with organic corn tortillas, rice, and tomatillos. Spinach and cheese enchilada. Hmm. That was a better bite than the first one. I can taste... I can taste the spinach and I can taste the cheese, which is good for a frozen meal. The rice is probably the worst part, but it's not like bad, it's just there. I'm not sure how this compares to the last one, though. The last one was like a seven? Hmm. Individually, the rice is like a five. Four would be offensive, six would be pretty good. Five, it's there. Beans, if they were heated up a little bit more, 
six and a half, seven. The enchilada is probably the best part, which is good when that's your frozen dinner. I can taste the tomatillos, I can taste the spinach, I can taste the cheese. You can taste the individual components. For a frozen enchilada, probably like a like an eight. Did you guys see that? I almost slapped my. Do you see? Did you see the coffee gnat land on my face? Did you see that? It's on the big cam. I assume you could have witnessed it. It landed right here. I bet you can see it on the clip. Literally almost smashed my face. Overall, I think overall, chat, this is at least as good as the last one. I would say this is a combined... Seven and a half out of ten. I would say seven and a half. Do I have any house plants? No! I just... I have coffee and that's it. And I only see the gnat when I'm streaming the flame game. I would say seven and a half is reasonable. This is like my lunch, by the way. The in-flight meal is because uh, I haven't eaten anything all day and uh, I'm hungry. And we may as well make it into something dumb fun at the same time. Can you actually see Coffee Nat? I see clips in the chat. The Nat is attracted by the flame game, yeah. I saw Nat. It's real. I'm t I told you it was. Did you doubt me? I didn't just make it up. This isn't a bit. The funny thing is I've got this stupid electric ultraviolet ray fan that's supposed to suck the Nat. It's literally on my desk. You so politely brushed it off, it survived. I didn't want to hit myself in the face holding a tray of food. I just got to the stream right now, which is kind of hilarious because I also just tried and failed to get a net. It's just not even, it's like, you don't even try for the most part. You kind of just have to let them have free reign of whatever they want. Because they just run rampant. I do feel like I got scammed by this giant fan. Do you want to see it? This is it, dude. It's supposed to have ultraviolet light that attracts it, and nothing's happened so far. Hadn't even, it hadn't even landed near it. So I have no idea. All right, this is done. I can prove that I actually like it. This is the least offensive in terms of uh, ingredients. Like that, remember the first in-flight meal? I was like, I can feel this going all the way down. This feels like, regardless of what I think of the flavor, I can be like 85% confident there will be no stomach ache after eating this. You know what I mean? It was a little bit more expensive though. It was like five dollars. But still. I give it a I give it a thumbs up. One I give it like a one and a half thumbs up. <laughs> About to get XCOM. I kind of need to throw it away, though, because I got Nat in my room. Rushafell, thank you for the $30 in bits. 
who said, put some salt on it, put some frozen salt on it, put some ultraviolet salt on the fan. Well, that would kill certain types of insects, to be sure. Better than- oh, yeah, if I had to choose between the pizza and the enchilada verde that I just ate, I would choose this, for sure. That's how bad the pizza was. Not even a contest. Okay, I actually do need to take this down real quick. So, mm, just real quick chat, thank you for waiting. I need to do some gamer stretch anyway. Detail air will be RB. We'll do the flag later. We only have one flag right now anyway. One sec. Okay. We're back, baby. Doing some squats. I'm very sad because the... The good cookies that I had had a hole in the bottom. So they were all stale. So I got the other cookies instead. Hey, what's up, rural juror? A wise man once said, bad pizza is still pizza. And he was wrong. And dumb. Um, Bad pizza is trash. A wise man once said, if you think there's no such thing as bad pizza, you've never truly had bad pizza. I'm doing pretty good, Rule George. Just had a little food break because it's been five hours. And I'm hungry. Like, the pizza that I got yesterday is of a tier where if you handed me um, pizza bagels, I'd eat the pizza bagels instead. Okay? That's how m bad it is. It's, it's offensively bad. Like bagel bites. I would rather have bagel bites and pizza rolls. And I would consider a pepperoni Hot Pocket. It's probably in the top five worst pizzas I've had. The number one worst pizza I've had is also in Vegas, and uh, it literally was disgusting. I had to spit it out of my mouth. That's how bad it was. Because they poured vinegar all over it. We all took one bite of it and threw the whole pizza away. Welcome aboard, Etal Air. True story. 
in Vegas. Welcome to the Papistral virus. If we have flown this, we've only flown it like one time. I don't remember much about it. I th yeah, because I remember the ATC going pee pee the whole time. That's all I remember. Hey, what's up, Walnut Cast? Who says, you have flown into my heart. <laughs> Appreciate you, Walnut Cast. Thank you for the 25 months of sub. Rushafeld, thank you for the 30 bucks of bit support. Welcome to uh, a flight into Bogota from Medellin. We are in Colombia right now. So we are about to fly a an ultralight, which visibility is not great out here, as you can see. I'm curious if that's going to change at all. And it may not. It's already 3.55. Woo! Check the parking brakes. Okay, got parking brake here. Fuel selector should be set to fullest, which is kind of irrelevant, left and right. Then we need master switch on, which I don't know where that is. I see we got tank, turn on tank lights. That's interesting. We do have an autopilot system in this little plane. It's a really nice looking plane. Two vertical Garmins. Just kind of looking around at all the buttons. Looks like uh, pitch trim. And our we got like a flaps bar right there. Someone put a grenade inside the plane. There's your RPM controller, which defaults to a hundo. Choke as well to get this thing going. And then here's all the things we're looking for. I was just taking a peek around. So I'm going to assume this is Battery Master. Boot up the screens. Let's get avionics on. Nav and strobe lights. I don't know where this strobe is. Got cockpit floods, landing, pitot heat switch. Is tank light relevant? That's the only one. Maybe they're baked into the same. Okay, choke is on. We just confirmed that it is. Throttle one centimeter. Are you serious? One centimeter, bro. Okay. Um, Actually, this is the only plane I know of that measures in centimeters. The other ones always say a quarter inch. So that's interesting. Magnetos should be set to both. Okay, turn the key, throttle should be maintaining 200, 2500 RPM, or below, okay, so this is our RPM, we're at like 22 and change, so that's good, oil pressure check, I assume that's oil bar, which is in the green. After starting the engine, the choke can come off. Wait, was the choke not on? I thought the choke, maybe I didn't have the choke on. What did that do? Because it should be off now, my bad. Uh, well, it worked, so, oh well. Hey, stop digging. Papistro Slovenian. Interesting. Where did you create your trip around the world, or are you just free picking the flights? Uh, I have a very detailed flight plan, but it is not public what we're going to do. If you want to see where we have been, uh, feel free to do exclamation plane in the chat, and you can see two different awesome resources being kept up by the mods. <coughs> I'm allergic to trusting the mods with resources. But as for where we're gonna go, stick around and find out. <laughs> this is classified information, move along. But we are gonna hit every continent on the world. 
if that's your question. Okay, parking brake released, and we are good to go. Nice and easy. So let's uh, tune weather and just listen. Sierra Kilo, Mike Delta, automated weather observation, 2000 Zulu. Wind, calm. Visibility, tree. Visibility, at Magnitude. least two. I don't think we're seeing the same weather IRL as the tower is apparently seeing. Few clouds at 1,000 feet. Well, joke's on you, nerd. I am at 5,900 feet. Which is probably why it's so cloudy. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and request taxi to depart. Whichever way they think I should depart. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Ground by the Sierra Alpha to request I don't know what straight out actually straight means. Departure. Minus Sierra Alpha to taxi to and hold short of runway 2 by a taxiway Alpha. Runway 2 Contact by a taxiway Alpha. How is there a runway 2? Didn't we um, land on runway 1? Bye. <laughs> Hey, he knew I didn't need pushback, so he just uh, went on break. It's fine. Acknowledge clearance. Taxiing hold short runway two using taxiway Alpha minus Sierra Alpha two. New plane. It is a new plane. Yeah, we hit New Mexico drivers, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, the whole Southwest was really cool. Enjoyed it quite a bit. Sneeze, trusting the mods with resources. That's how I really feel. Rushafell, got a lot of salt to go around for the chat. That's good, because you guys are going to need a little extra uh, whenever you come to this stream. Thank you for another 2,000 bits. Much appreciated, dude. Hope you're having a good day. And uh, thanks a bunch. This is the most bits I've ever gotten from someone who's not even following the channel. Which is free! by the way. Wink and a smile. This isn't icing conditions, right? Uh, I don't think this is icing conditions, no. We're at 31 seed, so definitely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Outside air temperature. Alright, chat, we are going to go see... I'll give you a little preview of where we're going. We are in Medellin, and we're heading east to Gotape. Which is important because even though this is the town, of course, they have a lot... Ooh, look at this. I'm excited to see what this looks like just in the game. Assuming that the cloud isn't obstructing the whole thing, but that, like, these formations. Really cool. But in particular... Let me close some windows here. Gotape itself is a POI in the game. And, um... Even though it is a town in Colombia, it is a major tourist attraction, especially for travelers from Medellin, for both El Piñón de Guatape, a large rock that visitors can climb, and the famous baseboards that adorn several of the buildings. So the rock itself is kind of why we're heading there, and we're being the tourists that we were just talking about. Uh, before Iberian conquistadors reached the area in the 16th century, this territory was inhabited by indigenous ethnic groups. Uh, named Guatape. Some controlled by a cique. Cacique? which is king, basically. The name of the king was Gotape, apparently. Another name for the town was La Ceja de Guatape. So there you go. All right, we're heading that way now. Let's go. Release the parking brake. And head on out. Uh, 
Uh, as cloudy as it is, I don't see any moisture or precipitation. This is a pretty nimble plane in that it really doesn't take a lot of space to take off. Um, this is considered an ultralight. Which means if we hit any mountainous air chop, we're going to feel it. But at least we can go up to 15,000 feet. We're probably, we don't want to go that high because that's close to our max. But even so... We can go up that high. So we are taxiing right now, and I can see a plane out there. I don't know if it's coming in for a landing or what, but I assume ATC will advise. Heading towards runway 02. Going to hold short and uh, get permission. This aircraft is approved to fly in visual meteorolo meteorological conditions only in flight in instrument. What? Hang on. Sorry, I can't concentrate on steering and reading this tiny baby text at the same time. Come back to that. Welcome aboard Etal Air. Good timing. Uh... This aircraft is approved to fly in visual meteorological conditions only, and flight in instrumental meteorological conditions are prohibited. What does that mean? No flying in bad weather, the plane states, as the pilot prepares to take off in fog. <laughs> TLDR, don't do exactly what we're doing right now. I see. Don't fly if you can't see. Well, if they didn't want me to fly where I can't see, they shouldn't have given me a cool screen with a 3D view that shows me exactly what the landscape looks like when I can't see. You know? They're the ones that gave me the power. War of the Worlds gifting a sub to Cycling Engineer who says, Hello, chat. Hello, Italx. Just finished watching Sweeney Todd because it's never too early to watch a Halloween classic. Thank you for that meme. I'm glad that you, to see that you're still continuing at War of the Worlds. I like how I, I anticipate after Halloween, you're going to come back and say, uh, Hi, Etel. Hi, chat. Just got done watching Halloween because it's never too late to enjoy a Halloween classic even though Halloween was a month ago. Let's, um, Toon Tower. And request takeoff clearance. Tower minus Sierra Alpha 2 at runway 2 ready for takeoff straight on departure. Minus Sierra Alpha 2 cleared for takeoff runway 2 traffic. Is generic on final. Okay. Departing straight out. Approved. Thank you. Cleared for takeoff runway 2 minus Sierra Alpha 2. So I hope that plane that we saw kind of blinking in the distance is not going to land here. Not that it would matter. Still. PC. That is my PC. Sadly, I cannot update that to say that I have a 3080, chat. But maybe one day I will be able to. Welcome aboard, Midas SA2, with service from Tubagoda from Medellin. Is that better, chat? There, okay? Someone was someone was pissed. I said two L's as L's. And they wrote it in chat, I'm sure. So much better. Meta yeet those pronunciation guides out of here, chat. Thank you, Kyra Toby. <laughs> you guys ready to go? Joke's on you. Wait, did I make the AI plane go around because I'm taking off the runway? Going around Sakina, eight, six, one, six. <laughs> it's like a big passenger plane. It's a jet. <laughs> Affecting IRL traffic. <laughs> they didn't even tell me not to take off yet, even though he's directly above me. Okay. 
Okay, where'd he go? When ATC tells you to take off when traffic's on final, that means they want to take off right away. Traffic is generic on final, departing straight out approved. Listen, you gotta take it slow, okay? ATC can uh, do one. That's how you have an accident on the runway. See, now I'm making sure that I actually... I'm checking to see if I have flaps. I don't even know if I have flaps yet. We have to wait for weather to clear. <laughs> yeah, we have to wait for weather to clear. We're gonna be here for a while. My turn. Here we go. Zero visibility conditions. Fantastic. All right, 40 knots. 50 knots. 60 knots. And let's go ahead and get up. I'm having some trouble with uh, getting some speed. There we go. Now we're talking. So I'm gonna go ahead and start turning. Good luck out there. NSC 8616, somebody look that up. NSC 8616. Dude, I can't see anything. Literally not supposed to fly like this. And I'm only going like 65 knots. Not very fast. Speed is not in this plane's playbook. No, it is not. Absolutely. This is going to be an interesting flight. Okay, so I know you guys can't really see what I'm looking at here, but I'll go ahead and show you. The angle in this plane is somewhat interesting. So on the one hand, I'm just making sure that we're angled to align back with our GPS, right? That's number one. Number two, I'm making sure that we're nosed up far enough to actually try and gain some altitude here. Number three, I'm making sure that we're not nosed up so far that I can't, uh... I want to make sure we're not losing any speed. So as long as we do all three of those things, we're going to continue to ascend at a reasonable rate. And, uh, on course. Those are some big mountains uh, coming in hot. But at least we have some visibility now. <laughs> All right, like, if you live here, does this, do you just live in this? Is that just your lot? It's just low hanging cloud fog the entire time? I guess. Cloud gaming. Welcome to the mist. I love when I push up to sit up in my seat and it pushes me down for some reason. I don't know why. Am I too tall? What do we even have back here? Microphone, headsets. Can I help you? Do you need something? It would appear as though you do. OK, 
Okay, do I need to request flight following? Why am I still getting the weather update down here? I don't know, but we're at 8,400 feet. Looking good, dude. Looking smooth. Any in-flight snacks? You just missed the meal. You missed the whole thing. Wow, it's the Pipistro. It is. Indeed. The whole door is a window. Exactly. That was the idea when we picked this. Specifically, to have a nice viewing angle. By the way, moon. There it is. It's a wind door. Also, I like CG Core said landing gear. Yep. That's exactly what those are. I like how sometimes when we play games, uh, chat is just an episode of Blue's Clues. Wing! Landing gear! Door! Does anyone see the rotor? Rotor! Wait, I have to wait 10 seconds for your answer. Flaps! Fuel mix! Landing gear! Right there! Right there! <laughs> Good job, everyone! I don't think this plane could probably do a barrel roll, or an aileron roll for that matter. Very much doubt. What key on your Warthog are you using for setting trim? I'm having trouble adjusting trim with mine. Uh, are you using this? And by this I mean this? Because it should be labeled nose down, nose up, right, and left. So, uh, the only thing that you might have trouble with is finding the groove. Because, like, if you do it up and left, it kind of doesn't register. For me, I have to do, like, up and right. And you have to find kind of that sweet spot. Same thing for going down. You kind of... See, like, that last move? right there, and it fits in to, uh, the notch. So you can kind of see, uh, if I'm rolling to the left, do a couple taps to the right, pointing those up, give it a little bit down, and, uh, try that. It should be bound to that by default. It should be. One hundred salt. Thank you for all the salt bucks, Rushafell. Drip feeding. <laughs> uh, a thousand bits at a time. Very much appreciated. Thanks for the big stream support. And happy to have you here today. You guys are very generous. Papistro's coming out with a new plane soon. The Panthera. I can't click on that right now because I'm not 100% sold on my uh, my trim, and we might want to set up autopilot. Additionally, I'd like to turn down the volume on my friends. Dude, the pistol's a little sensitive to trim. Just a little, dude. It is an ultralight, I understand. Okay, so volume sliders gotta be right around here. I thought that said cringe data. Like you're in the right place. Uh, how do I turn down that, or er, comm volume? I think it's right there. I 
believe I got it. Okay, let's try and set up autopilot real quick. They got some AI problems. There it is. Okay, it's that top one. I don't know what the bottom one is. All right, autopilot. So we're basically lined up with where we're trying to be. We're at about 12,000 feet. I really don't want to climb any more than this. Uh, so step one is going to be changing the CDI source to GPS. Okay. We can see that we need to kind of line this up a little bit better. Let's see if we can get this right on the first try. Do we want to turn on nav mode? We want to turn on vertical speed mode. Do I need a, what is a level mode? I, th I think we talked about this before. Let's say, actually we probably just wanna do altitude hold mode for once. And uh, it's clocked in at 12,002, so it should be fine to just go ahead and turn on autopilot now. I, I double checked the green to make sure that it was actually locked in. Twelve thousand two hundred is not like the ideal spot, but uh, where is the slider for manipulating your designated level? It's got to be somewhere right around here. Because this is just up and down vertical speed. Maybe there is no altitude hold modifier. Maybe you just do vertical speed mode and then... I don't know. Level is a panic button to return you to flight level. It's been a month since I flew this plane, but I remember there is. Hey, we're heading towards Guatape right now, dude. Remember we saw that uh, interesting kind of water formation? This is it coming up. Let's look over here and zoom out. The rock of Guatape should be dead ahead, so we're just gonna come off of, I guess I am really overdoing it on the throttle right now. My bad. But do I need to just change RPM control so that it's not maxed at 100% that way it can full throttle? It's like 90%. Ninety percent RPM plus full throttle, and the RPM's not even in the yellow. Okay, looks good. We got T minus not even an hour, basically, and we could go up a little higher. But this looks nice. Let's get an outside view. Good engine sound. Five three. Got the moon up in the sky. Like a big pizza pie. All right, so we gotta get off of autopilot and just go straight on, I think. In fact, in fact, Chad, do you see what I see? That's it, dude. This is the rock of Guatape. Oh, Peepo Comfy. Are we in South America? Very much so, yes. We are. We are in Colombia. Approaching the Rock of Guatape. Good afternoon, Italix. Hi, chat. Hello, Seth. You just missed our in-flight meal. Had a nice uh, enchilada. About to do some sightseeing. So for that, let's go ahead and try 
vertical speed. A thousand uh, feet per minute and just watch because we kind of do need to go down if we want to actually see this up close and personal because it is just right here. So I'm actually going to go 1500 and just throttle down. I think that'll be fine. We might have to circle around, but that's okay. Awesome area here. So if you want to see where we are on the map, there's Guatape. The city proper. They got a church there? Wow, cool looking church. A park right outside of it. Hostel. And uh, some beautiful landscape. Cool land bridges here, or cool, uh, you know, man made bridges to cross this really kind of delicate terrain. Los Naranos. Los Naranos. What was it? It was <laughs> Annie's Enchiladas. <laughs> All right, so I need to take off autopilot now. This is me, because it's taking me a little bit away from where we want to go. My microwave snack. <laughs> Chad, I gotta get some ideas for more snacks. Um, need some more ideas for more in-flight meals for the next stream. It was pretty decent, actually. Like, the ingredients actually tasted good, and, uh... Compared to the first one we had last week, that was pretty gross. This one, by comparison, was... actually pretty decent. Post your snack ideas. What are some... Okay, are there any, like, what is considered South American? What would a South American frozen dinner be? Flying into the sun here is really cool. I hear there's an excellent pizza place nearby. Alright, so we just want to watch our speed. Coming out the driver window here. Look at that hatchback, switchback staircase that goes all the way up. <laughs> what? Okay, it was a hitbox. It was a, it, no, it's not me. That was a hitbox, chat. That's not an error. The rock is a big rock, okay? Large rock. Wasn't even close. I hit a bird. I ain't counting that one, memers, okay? That doesn't count. You can't... Oh, that was a clear error. Listen, as a judge, I have determined that the invisible wall uh, was absolutely your fault. Get real. Where's that sub sound? Uh, where would I even TP to? Travel, f yes, I want to keep live time? Keep live time. Ferrara Tower minus Sierra Alpha 2 ready at runway 2 south departure. No, I need to skip to cruise, but it's the graphics messed up. Come on, Etel. It's not too much to ask that you see invisible walls. That's what I get for trying to give you guys a good view. Please reboot your computer. Maybe I need to reboot my computer. <laughs> the Guatape force field. Um, maybe crash? Maybe I should just crash it? kind of obnoxious. I really wasn't even that close. 
I'll just close it. I felt like I was pretty far away. Crash my plane, crash my game. Luckily, it's at the beginning of the flight, so it won't be hard to fast forward. You, yeah, I know you can disable crashes, but you would still bounce off of it. Which doesn't really help. In that situation. <laughs> the, uh... We just hit that, like... Short-lived force field TV show. What was it called? Under the Dome? Wasn't that based off of St Stephen King? They actually had three seasons of it. I remember when Under the Dome came out. They were trying to kind of capitalize on the post-Lost experience. That audience in particular. Like, Lost had just wrapped up in 2011 or 2012, I think. And, um... Under the Dome was there was there there was a flurry of TV shows that attempted to fill that void. I can't remember all of them. Do you guys remember uh Was it like Flash Forward TV show? Yeah, there was a there's the ABC show called Flash Forward that only went for one season. It came out like less than a year after Lost was off. Yeah, it came out in 2010. And I was so excited about it. Because I was just trying to fill the void in my life. And it was just awful. Uh, which is too bad, because it actually has Joseph Fiennes. John Cho is in it. Courtney B. Vance. Dominique Monaghan from Lost. And obviously Lord of the Rings was in it as well. It had like a pretty good cast. And it flopped hard. Not even two seasons. Forgot about that show till now. Yeah, it was a blip on the radar. But it, that was like one of about three or four different like mystery box shows that came out simultaneously. And I tried all of them. Under the Dome is a glorified Simpsons movie. <laughs> <laughs> Flash 4 was trying too hard to be post-lost. It really was, though. I mean, listen to the description. The description of the Flash Forward show. Residents of Los Angeles go about their day unaware that a mysterious event is about to change their lives. FBI agents Mark Binford and Dimitri No are in a car chase. Binford's physician wife is in the middle of surgery, and Binford's friend, Aaron Stark, works on power lines high above the ground. Suddenly, something causes everyone in the world to black out for just over two minutes. During that time, each person sees a series of events in his or her own future. Some good, some bad, some apparently non-existent. As people begin to piece together their visions on a worldwide website, Mark and Dimitri use the information to try to pinpoint the cause of the blackout, and people are still trying to determine whether destiny can be changed and what effect those changes may have on others. A world, <laughs> worldwide website. So here's what we can do. We can just uh, tweak this to be our departure. So this actually is going to work out easier for us. So we don't have to spawn. Um, Welcome aboard Ital Air. We don't have to spawn back at the airfield since we already got to the Rock of Guatape. So it's a little easier this way. Airborne at, a, is that say 164 feet? Am I reading this correctly? Did I get him? I think I got him. <laughs> I, 
think I did. I did what the bug zapper could not. Another innocent chatter. Gone. I have a feeling this is going to put us, like, at actually 164 feet. Somehow. That can be the next in-flight meal. Good idea. <laughs> Fat Red Fever says, I don't often come here. Then what are you doing here? Get out. Here's to the good time shared. Also, have you played STS recently? Slay the Spire? No. Slay the Spire is old. Hades is in. Okay, get with the times, first of all. And second of all, stop paying people free money subs. That you don't even go to their streams. Okay, either you're either in or you're out. You can't just dip your toe in the water. You have to make up your mind right now. I don't want apology subs. Watch out. You're going to hit the hitbox again. All right, let's let's ah. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Active pause is in order. <laughs> stand by, stand by. We have an emergency on the field. The foot cam is down, I repeat. The foot cam is down. <laughs> Oh my god, look at those cables. You know... You know how many cables I have to have for this stream? Dude, I don't even know how to get the camera back to how it was before. It's all... It's like extra, extra sideways. Oh, it's like touching the top of this... That fix it. It broke. Why does it look so zoomed out now? Really difficult. All right, how's how's that? Is that good enough? It, it looks different. Is it just me, or does it look really like it's a different angle now? I have no idea. <laughs> Where were we? Electrical systems are off. Turn my avionics on. All right, undo active pause. Now, the Rock of Guatape, they tried to sabotage our enjoyment of this by killing us. Let's see if we can get a better angle here. All right, this is reasonably far away. So this rock is just sitting here, ancient and venerable, with like a little facility on top. Get a view of this entire, um, what, what do you call this kind of water? Obviously it's very swampy, but like what is it technically speaking? A marsh? Wetlands? Very cool. And the rock itself is extremely um, prominent. Like how, okay, but how did the rock of Guatape get there? 
and they just carved it out and created a little uh, switchback footpath to climb it. Some somebody dropped it. Cool spot though. How many stairs are on the staircase? That's what I want to know. Hmm? How like many flights do you have to take? Sim says 5,423, but I honestly don't know if you just memed that number, because somebody else probably wrote at least two. <sighs> Wiki says 649 steps. That's a lot of steps. You can't trust anything that Sim says most of the time. Unfortunately, I've grown to understand that. All right, we got RPM control up to 100%. Liuta, don't deface. You know it's true. Five hundred. Time to die again. It's like the steps in Super Mario 64. When I was a little kid, I did not know that they were infinite. I just thought they took a really long time. Do you know how many minutes, if not hours, I wasted trying to w figure out ways to walk up them? Obviously, I figured it out eventually. Because I would turn around and see that I didn't get any further away. But I just couldn't fathom. I couldn't understand. It was like a mean trick that Mr. Nintendo played on me. Where I just didn't get that I had to accomplish all the other tasks in the game first. You know? I didn't understand why it was the way it was. See, now I know that it's just there to be like, haha, you can't get here until you finish the rest of the game. It's the final boss. But I didn't know what it was. By the way, this is some gorgeous countryside here. So what's the, uh, what's the primary export of Colombia besides the coffee beans that we sampled earlier? Jack, can you get all of your, like, shitty South American cocaine jokes out of the way here? Okay. Your memes are turning into, like, uh... They're, they're, they cross over from memes to kind of, like, not racism at a certain point, but, like... Just... Ignorance? I guess? It probably doesn't help that they've got full TV shows about it. So, like, I understand where you're coming from. I mean... They, they got full multi-season long TV shows. And it doesn't help that every movie that comes out is about drug running. If it pertains to South America. So... I, I get it where you're coming from. You've, you've been conditioned to make that joke. I think a lot of cut flowers from Colombia, like the ones you buy in bulk at the supermarket. Hmm, you know, I never thought about where all those flowers come from. Because I know they're not growing them in Vegas. <laughs> Hard to make a TV show that holds interest that's about petroleum exports. <laughs> Good old petroleum. Dude, this is lovely, though. I'll take my dumb face away. I 
mean, look at that valley. We're going to see so many valleys. We're not even going to be scratching the tip of the iceberg as far as the Andes go. Is that me? My bad. Oh, because he lost my... I was listening from Midas. He's calling me Papistral now. My bad. Look at this drop-off. Going from uh, mountains that are about 6,000 feet down to a valley uh, with a river and a basin that goes... Looks like down to, if I had to guesstimate, maybe 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet, back to mountains that are over 6,000 feet on the other side. Tuning to Bogota, which is where we are en route to as we speak. It is not a long flight. And it looks like we can actually just fly down into this valley if we want to. I just need to be careful on the descent that we don't speed too much. So generally what I am doing is, uh, just watching this, trying to stay under the yellow, right? We can go into the yellow, but we'd rather not. Why not do a little bit of flying around in this little river valley here? I guess it does kind of go the wrong way. That's true. It does kind of veer off the other direction. Weather's good. It is cloudy, but it's not too overcast. We can still see pretty much everything we need to. It's good to see there's just still massive areas of green like this out there. The world is a big place. And obviously, you know, we got to be careful with deforestation. And continue to replant a bunch of trees. But yeah. There are just these massive areas of wildlife, wilderness. They probably have some, like, Planet Earth special episodes that take place out here. Well, it kind of does go in the direction that we're going, actually. This camera angle's scary, but you can fly like this. I guess you could say the biggest export from Colombia is oxygen. <laughs> I think I see some cars. I thought I just saw something move over here. Five hundred. I did see cars. Is that a tunnel? What is this? No, it just kind of weaves around. Huh. A fun fixed camera angle here. a nice little peripheral view of the landscape around us. It should be... Actually, we're heading kind of west and south right now, if I'm not mistaken. We are... Yeah, we're going actually south and a little east, because we need to get back the way that we're supposed to go. Took a little detour here. But it's very pretty. So we should be kind of going with the sunset, which will give us a little bit of extra daylight. But we're not going to have a ton of time. You see the sun is already fairly low in the sky. Uh, luckily, the next flight after this one is not necessary for us to have full sunlight. And we're getting to fly a plane after this that I've been looking forward to jumping into. Because you really haven't seen it too much. If at all. I don't know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> A little blank spot on the satellite, perhaps. It's 
So we'll get back on uh, autopilot, we'll get some altitude, and that'll speed up this flight as well. But we are already under 45 minutes uh, until our arrival. Have I ever played Endless Space 2? I have not played Endless Space 2. I think I own it though. But thanks again, Russia fell for all the bits. Very much appreciated. Like 13,000. If you're still out there, thank you for your generosity. And fat rat fever should already be gone. Also, Ready Freddy, what up? How's it going? Ooh. Oops, I forgot that I am not in camera mode. Now I'm in camera mode. Mom, get the mouse off the screen! Alright, the other thing we need to do is... Bring that RPM control down so we're not just burning the engines literally the entire time. I'm just kidding. You're welcome here anytime you want. Chat, how you guys doing today? Now that it's actually almost normal stream start time. <laughs> it's like in 2.50 uh, Pacific. Not even a normal start time. Oh yeah, I was going to do this leg, uh, the community leg, but now I'm kind of glad I didn't because I would have had to crash and reset and my game would have crashed. So, if I had made this the community leg, like I originally wanted, it would have been really awkward and embarrassing, because it wouldn't have worked at all. That's too bad. We might still do, uh, do one on the next one, but it's not going to be a very eventful flight. I kind of like to do the community flights when there's stuff to look at. There won't really be much to look at on the next one, but we can still do it anyway. If you guys want. We can make the next flight community. I would love to see Angel Falls in Venezuela, the tallest waterfall in the world. That's one thing that Microsoft Flight Sim really doesn't do well, is waterfalls. So, not to, you know, rain on the parade, but waterfalls are not something that we're not really going to make too much of a concerted effort to go see. Because it doesn't really have the capacity to, it can see the difference in elevation, but since there's not really a water flowing system or like a graphic, um, maybe just airs in the side of caution. I don't know what Niagara looks like because I think Niagara is on the map as a POI. Has, any, has anyone checked that out in the game? That may look cool. All right, let's gain some altitude now and go back onto autopilot. So we need to change this off of VOR, okay? You never want to be on VOR when you're trying to configure autopilot, so you hit CDI source. And it changes based on the system, so it's not always going to be there. Some planes have touchscreens and you click the compass rows, but once you see that pink line, you're good. Okay? So the second thing is, we want to turn on nav mode, and that's not going to... Nothing actually happens until you hit autopilot or level mode, okay? So you want to just pre-engage nav mode, and that's going to say, hey, follow my GPS and then we're gonna turn on vertical speed and I don't know where the altitude um, designation is in this particular plane but I know that we can set a comfortable climb of like 800 feet per minute it should be fine for the pistol and then once we've got that on and that on we can turn on autopilot so what this is doing is just ensuring that we have hopefully a steady climb so we're in charge of the throttle so if you set this too steep you're gonna end up stalling your plane so you kind of just want to watch the plane, uh, make sure that you're going up at a reasonable rate. This is a max of 15 or 16,000 feet for this plane, so we're probably going to want to cruise at around 12,000, I would say. Give us a little bit of headroom on top. So now that we've got that, it is automatically following the GPS and automatically ascending at the green. Green is what you've currently got configured inside of the autopilot system, and most autopilots, probably including this one, will let you choose a height. But in this case, since we didn't choose a height, we just need to remember to turn off the vertical climb 
once we get to appropriate height. I don't know what that is. Look almost like uh, some kind of like thin rice farms or something. I don't know what that is. I'm good, Itao Chan. Looking forward to checking out World of Horror's newest update. Been thinking about it for a while. Oh yeah, World of Horror. Uh, I never got to to check that game out. That is the one that everyone goes, hey, is this inspired by that one famous horror artist? And you probably go, yeah, it is. It is uh, definitely made by Joji, the musical superstar. Right? The artist formerly known as Filthy Frank. He inspired this game. Joji Ito. Right? Wow, I never knew. <laughs> e enough. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> New Joji album, by the way. I know, the reason why that name's on my mind is because uh, it was on YouTube Trending and I watched his newest YouTube music video yesterday. Does this have autopilot? Yes, we just spent the last five minutes configuring it and explaining it in exhaustive detail. So if you'd like to see, uh, I don't really, I'm not an expert, I just, I'm doing it for the first time. But yes, he does have a new, a new album. Where are we flying to today? We're going to Bogota, Colombia. We have begun our South American leg. And uh, we're not going to... I'm honestly just tempted to do this again tomorrow. Because I, I kind of want to keep going, but also I want to play No Man's Sky. Speaking of games with new updates, um, it's, first of all, is um, World of Horror in early access, or is it released and they're just updating it? But it's good that it's getting updates. It must be fun if you're playing it multiple times. But I, I'm, I'm really interested in checking out No Man's Sky as well. Mostly lost... What is that even supposed to say? Those are the same letters. Are you trying to change my emphasis? I'm curious to listen to how Microsoft Sam pronounces it. I'm just so beyond caring how to pronounce things. Chat has... I, that's the only learning that I just don't care. It's, I have a very nihilistic bean ethic. You know what I'm saying? There's so many words in the world. And I don't know how to pronounce 98% of them. So therefore, like, it just doesn't matter because I, even if I get one right one time, I don't know the other, uh, 98%. We've ruined the fun of pronunciation for him. I don't think it was ever fun. Playing No Man's Sky up there right now, found a sandworm planet. Yeah, the, uh, the trailer looked awesome. I think it's still in early access. It's roguelike, so it's very much multiple times kind of game. Yeah, but even for me, like, I don't know if I'm going to play Hades again, even though I thought it was fun, because a roguelike has to really stick with me to stream multiple times. So when I see someone streaming a roguelike multiple times, I'm like, wow, that must be fun. I will always want to play No Man's Sky, but they keep updating it like every month or so. I think that's good because I like that the updates to No Man's Sky don't necessitate new saves. Um, even with this new update that like completely changes a bunch of worlds, it still works with existing saves, which is really cool. Speaking of really cool, we're getting an interesting like dual cloud layer time of day combo.
I love that Bogota is literally the Leviosa of things you could pronounce as well. Emphasis on the last syllable. That's why there's an accent mark on it. It's not Bogota. It's Bogota. It's not Leviosa. It's Leviosa. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're still- we're losing a little bit of speed. We should probably slow our ascent a little bit. 600. We're at about 10,000 feet anyways. ET over here says 42 seconds, no minutes. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, we're gonna be there really fast. Vinny's base was lost in the big update. I saw someone in ch I was actually there in the Vinesaw stream, and a couple people in chat said that he didn't upload it, so... I don't know who to believe, okay? I got Jeff 1 and Jeff 2. Who do I trust? Jeff 2 every time. <laughs> I also saw that uh, somebody hacked his look not hacked, but somebody um, looked up his location and then built like a whole art Minecraft pixel art fortress where he built his base. I thought that was funny, and I was like, yep, seems like something Twitch chat would do. Creep on your base coordinates and then make like a magnificent 25-story uh, tall shrine to your existence in the hopes that one day you come back and see it. <laughs> what? I'm coming. Okay. No, I didn't hear any of them. I gotta be careful that I don't bug the APC again. Center Pipistral Alpha Sierra X ray Gulf Sierra 11,100 feet. I am at 11,100 feet. We should probably slow down. Let's level out. Alright, let's change our altimeter. So we hit the letter B. You need to correct this uh, every so often while you are in the sky based on your altitude. And uh, it's just due to that they actually have pretty set and concrete limits. I don't remember what the numbers are off the top of my head. This looks awesome up here. I think we're getting a better camera angle just by doing the disconnected one. It's okay, Falcon of Lordran. I just had to use that one gotcha that I had. But once I actually knew exactly what someone in chat was referencing from another streamer stream. I kind of want to go around to the side because that looks amazing too. But we'll just go through this cloud. Side note, do we have a pito heater? By chance. We do. It is... 11 degrees Celsius, so it's probably fine, but it's nice to have it on anyways. Also, uh, the game turned my nav lights off. I did have those on, but they're back on now. We'll turn landing lights in a moment. Oh, you've got like a horizontal leveler right there. That's really neat. Manual altimeter, which you can correct based on when ATC tells you. We're flying um, GPS, by the way. So I'm not flying instrument flight rules. You're actually not supposed to fly this plane in this predicament. This is bad weather for the Pipistral. <laughs> it's supposed to be used in clear weather only. And it is not apparently rated to go through these kind of thick cloud covers. So luckily, video game, we can do whatever we want. So we actually started, like, way over here. Got less than 30 minutes, I would say. Now that we've kind of leveled out at, eh, 
I can go up a little bit more. Getting a little bit of chop. Looks like oil temp, oil pressure is good. RPM is very nice. We turned the propeller controller down a little bit. As long as RPM's not getting into the red, we're fine. Big clouds coming through the clearing. This game is beautiful. Pretty easy flight, too. Except for the part where I crashed into Guatapi. The sun is setting in the horizon. The little pipistrel is trying its hardest, going as fast as it can. Not even a hundred knots. To take all 400 plus of its passengers on an adventure around the world. Wide. <laughs> you mean hostages? Do I? Hey, Cairo, do you already have a pipistrel photo? Because if not, that's the one. Landing gear. Wings. Dude, I love wings. I want to check the plane log after this, too. To be fair, flying into a thunderstorm cloud like this is bad news in any plane. We could have gone around. And it wouldn't have been that big a deal. But I already got the autopilot set up and I need to eat my Teddy Grahams. <laughs> but yeah, I think I want to play No Man's Sky more than I want to play Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. But Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is free on Epic. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> my my Teddy Graham? <laughs> hey, you guys want a Teddy Graham? Will it focus on the Teddy Graham? I think it's too close. Hey, eat it! A Teddy what? A Teddy Graham? I feel like Hades is really solid, but nowhere near addiction material. For me, it's not addictive, but I did think it was really fun. I think it was because I got a headache listening to all the things die after six hours. But I don't think that's the game's fault. That's just any roguelike, in my opinion. And also, ha having to try as hard as you can to succeed, you know, for that long... It just takes a lot of concentration. Alright, let's see where we are. Sorry, it's Bogota. Which, of course, you would know if you looked at the special apostrophe over the A. Oh! But it's not there on this one. It's only there on this one. Colombia, sprawling high-altitude capital. La Calendaria. La Candelaria. Its cobblestone center features colonial era landmarks like neoclassical performance hall Teatro Colon in the 17th century Iglesia de San Francisco. It's also home to popular museums, including the Museo Botero, showcasing Fernando Botero's art, 
in the Museo de Oro displaying pre-Columbian gold pieces. So what you're saying is, chat, find a restaurant and let's look up some Yelp reviews. Diver City. Oh, that looks fun. I would... Is that a racetrack? <laughs> I will go there now. Chat, me and three of you can watch whatever's on that TV, dude. The Monument of Heroes. Ooh. That's pretty cool. National Museum. They got a lot of good pictures for a lot of these buildings. The Museo de Botero. Quinta de Bolivar. Bolivar. San Cristobal. Is that at me? Oops. I just paused on accident. One, two, Must be me. Hey, what's up, Shadow Light? Doing pretty good. Had some really fun flights so far. Some unfortunate crashes. <laughs> Maybe only like one of them was really my fault. To be fair. The rest of them have just been... Alright, you handed me off again. You just handed me off, but hand me off again. Tourism, tourism in Bogota. Bogota is really good. Um, I guess it's Colombia's capital. Probably in its best interest. Resident in chat. Flying potatoes in chat. Are you guys done passing me off now? Okay. Dead done. Kind of like wild and varied cloud formations. We got like uh, ground cover hugging the mountains. We got like a haze about a thousand feet above that. We got these huge storm clouds just behind. It looks like it's just mix and matching all of them. This is the fourth handoff in a row from One, these six, guys. I don't know. Just get me over to the correct people. All right, we're going to start a gentle descent. Of like 300 feet per minute. We got about 21 minutes ETE. 500's a little much right now. We're just going to hang out. You're playing with real-time weather? Yes. Real-time of day, real-time weather. So the sun will actually be setting here uh, within the next hour or so. So I'm hoping that we can get going on our next flight before that happens. And then... Um, that may end up being the final flight of the day. And from that point on, we can either call it early or we can transition to a different game. Because I really can't do the next flight after that at nighttime. I need to do the next one after that uh, very much during the day. Yeah, that's my favorite aspect of the game, too. Okay, let's look up uh, top 10 restaurants. In Bogota. The top 10, the best restaurants in Bogota, updated September. Number one. All right, one of them sponsored their way to the top. Number one, Pizza Candelaria. With 128 reviews. We could go to number two, which has a few more reviews. Castagna. All right, Castagna's got 300 reviews. It's 
sounds a little bit more reliable. That's a lot of reviews. And it's still four and a half stars. <laughs> 18 hour stream pumping. All right, this is apparently number 33 of 2,923 restaurants in Bogota. I don't know why it came It came up as number one, though. And it even got a TripAdvisor Choice Award. Okay, let's take a look. Nice outside. Space heaters. Not sure what that is, but there's bread underneath it. Some meatballs, rice, and pita bread, I think. What is this? Is this sour cream? What is that? Some moonshine and some uh, mini apple pie or something like that. Good looking sandwiches. Soups and salad. Nice cut of ciabatta bread back there. Is that pineapple with, with mashed potatoes on top? <laughs> Looks like a nice little breakfast brunch place. This is not a pizza place, chat. I didn't say it was pizza. Pay attention. I said there's a pizza place. Let's go to the next restaurant that has twice as many reviews. And I said it's called Castagna. Remember? Pay attention. Okay, that's a tasty looking sandwich right there. This looks like an eight and a half out of 10 sandwich. Some nice little lightly cooked bacon strips, empanadas, cappuccinos. This looks pretty good, dude. This looks like a pretty nice little place. Okay, let's uh, let me make sure I'm not getting spoken at. I am getting spoken at. German Olano approach Pipistrel Alpha Sierra X ray Gulf Sierra 10,800 feet. T minus 16 minutes, and we're at about 10,700 feet. Got plenty of room. All right, so now the reviews. Bro, I. One to one decimal tree for Pipistrel X ray Gulf Sierra. How many different approaches I got to contact? I feel like I'm trying to get uh, customer service with my credit card. Am I sure I'm not trying to like cash in on a warranty for one of my electronic products? Give me the runaround until I eventually get annoyed and hang up. All right, everybody calm down. I need to find the first one star review. I see some two stars right off the bat. <laughs> A lot of two stars. Okay, here's the first one star review from David A. March 2018. First ever review. Was very excited to find chicken madras on the menu. Less excited to find a glass of red wine more expensive than London and COP 15,000. I don't even know what that is. I persevered until the smallest measure of wine arrived, to which I complained. Food was okay, but as far removed from Madras as Argentina. Again, the scrimping continued, with only seven tiny pieces of chicken, and enough rice to make the dish into a small soup with zero spice. When food and wine finished, I waited for an eternity for any service to ask for the bill while staff chatted behind counter and sat on floor, gave up, and paid too much for too little, like a fast food joint at the counter. One star only for the decor and music. Wine was 17000 with service, although received none. Won't return. <laughs> I say good day. <laughs> Next one star review. If I can find one. You have to scroll. I'm on page I'm through five pages, and that's the only one star review so far. 
Seven pages. Chat, there was zero. That's the only one star review, period. All right, we gotta go two star then. The first two star review from Yoan from London. This is from this year, Feb 10th. I came here with some friends today for brunch. Waitress was very friendly and answered our questions, but failed to tell us that there were no sandwiches available at all. Easily a third of the menu. Until the fourth time she came to the table. Disappointed, we ordered something different, with one member of the group simply wanting to change her egg from poached to scrambled. Bearing in mind, we live in Bogota and have been to many places, and never has there been an issue regarding changing what kind of egg you want. Don't interrupt my story time. This is the fifth handoff in a row. There can't be that many different airspaces that I'm passing through. Okay. Anywho. As I was saying. After speaking the chef, we were told it was not allowed to change the egg from poached to scrambled, which was ridiculous. We found them to be unaccommodating, and only when we told them to cancel everything and we would be leaving did the waitress say that she would speak to the chef again. Popped to Mistral up the road where the waitress offered us extra bread and asked us in detail how we wanted our eggs. Such a shame, because the menu looks great and I really wanted to try the empanadas. <laughs> Last minute egg change. I like that that was just the whole, that whole review is about the egg. All right, there's only one more two-star review that I can see. And it's too short. No, that one's, that one's not worth even reading. Here you go. From Marior. Had a meal. Okay, food. But the natural juice is water mixed with the smallest piece of fruit. When I was paying, she asked me all, okay. I explained that it's all water. She did offer a new one, but I already finished meal and was at checkout. The right thing should have been not to change. So my message to owner, putting a little piece of fruit and mixing it with water is not natural, it's water. The right thing is to have fruit as a base and to add where, and if needed, a bit water. And in my case, the right thing to do is to take it off the bill. <sighs> what are these reviews about? Uh, well, it's about Castagna, which is the number two rated restaurant in Bogota, which we looked at pictures of before we, uh... before I started reading them. That's a nice looking place. These are obviously promo shots. We got live music, balloons. Very cute. Okay, they handed me off again. But we're coming in for a landing, chat. We got uh, under 10 minutes left. Take a look at the game. The sun is low. But we should still have time. What's the worst restaurant in Vegas? Well, I find that the best restaurants produce the best reviews because the restaurant's so good that they have to nitpick something dumb like how their egg was prepared. So, uh, I don't think... We're gonna make it over this...
mountain at this rate. So I'm gonna go ahead and just angle nose up. Just to try to make sure we clear this. Yes, it is a little plane. It's an ultralight, actually. Around the world tour of nature, beauty, cities, and asshole reviewers. <laughs> Basically, yes. And if you want to see where we are at... Um... There you go. So we're not taking this route. I don't know why this is zigzagging, but we are... Oof, they got a lot of... Wait, did we just pass Honda? No, we had to have gone further than that. Because we started in Medellin. And we went to Guatape, which is like here and then down. So we've, we're probably passing El Rosal. Uh, Sabachoque. San Francisco, Subachok? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Subachok? I have no idea. Interesting names here. I don't think we're coming in from the north, but that's a cool approach right there in the valley. So, based on our map. I would very much like to zoom in on. It'll be a cool sight coming off the mountains. It will, yeah. I think it's just over this mountain. So I might have to take matters into my own hands here. Go ahead and contact approach. Approach Petestral Alpha Sierra X-ray Gulf Sierra 9,100 feet. We're at about 100 knots, which is faster than our rated speed. So we've made really good time. Uh, it was supposed to be about 90 knots, I think. We're going about 108 knots true airspeed, so we're doing pretty good. And I have no idea where the runway is, or what it's heading is, or where we need to approach from. So we're just going to wait until ATC corrects us. I missed a bunch of streams lately. Has the schedule shifted to very EU-friendly times, or is this an exception? Uh, Metal bit zoomy, but I see that you also don't read mod Discord. <laughs> uh, but we are doing real-time flights around the world. So in order to get sunlight, I am starting earlier so that I'm not flying exclusively at nighttime when I'm doing the planes in particular. Wow. I can't believe how high up this is, Chad. Consider that we're 10,000 feet up above sea level right now. And this entire plane, all of this, at some point in history, humans climbed all the way up here, like 10,000 feet. I wonder if they did this originally to get away from certain types of predators in the lowlands or something. Like, who came up here first? You know what I mean? Did they just retreat to the highest place they could possibly find and then decide, yeah, look how flat this is. It's like me trying to find a spot for my base in Minecraft or Rust. You know? Like, this is seriously the best spot that they could have picked for a base. It's so flat up here, and it's so high up, away from dangers in the lowlands. The hardest part is probably just water. And it looks like there's a lot of natural rivers up here, and little pockets of water as well. Yeah, the Incas always built their cities really high up. But I'm curious why. Or rather, not even just why, but how. Not necessarily logistically, but how long were they nomads before they finally found a really tall spot and were like, yeah, 
Our ancestors, they only made it like, I don't know, 5,000 feet above sea level, but we're definitely 10,000 feet above sea level here. So, uh, this looks like a good spot. Okay, because so imagine, chat, the life of ignorance you might live if you were born up here, right, in ancient times. You didn't really go very far. You couldn't just hop on a plane and zip around, right? You couldn't hop in your car or train or subway or whatever. You might live your whole life up here not knowing how high above everything else you were. That's how wide this is. You might just hear your family members talk about, like, the sea down below. Because you're not that far away, in Colombia at least, from, uh, you know, Central America and the, the past there. The land is extremely fertile also. Yeah, it's like the trifecta of good reasons to live here. Fertile land, access to water, you got tons of runoff from the mountain peaks around you. Um, you know, I assume that it's not easy to get up here on foot, so you're, you're hidden away from much of the other threats that your people might experience. According to the tour group on the Inca Trail, they did it to get away from other people originally, because it was harder to raid. That's what I mean. I don't know. That's what it seems like. It seems believable. Alright, am I going to get permission to land anytime soon? Rolling in on Bogota. As we speak. And uh, also rolling up on the airport right now. No permission to land has been offered or granted. Maybe I have to tune it. Maybe I'm just not tuned. They handed me off to the wrong people. Straight and runway one three left. Correct the altimeter and acknowledge. Make straight and runway one three left. Petestral X-ray Golf Sierra. Well, I got bad news, which is we are not. X-ray Golf Sierra, clear to land runway one three left. Where we are supposed to be? Because I thought they were going to talk to me sooner, but that's okay. Get a nice little view. like a beautiful city just baked into the mountainside here and there's our landing strip chat really cool looking spot that's our strip Should be a pretty easy landing. The Papistral does not need a ton of space one way or the other. Might as well take a look around now, because in the next flight, we're not really going to have an opportunity to do much sightseeing. There's not really any quote-unquote points of interest here. It's just fun to look around. And we're coming in at a nice time of day as well. Yeah, they got some beacon runway lights, so we're supposed to be on L. So we're going to take the left one. If you look, there are two that you can see kind of guiding us in right there. The golden hour. We're going to end up being on the menu for the golden hour. <laughs> we're going to accidentally be stuck, like, in menu in transition here. All right, let's line this up and focus. 
line this up, focus, and try and do it right. I can't sit up in the chair any more than this. So, um... We'll just do what we can do. Now, as far as I know, we don't have to worry about flaps. Or we do. I went ahead and put the flaps down. I think they only go down slightly, though. This thing is so light that it really doesn't need them. Like, I'm literally coasting in here at 70 knots right now. I'm having to throttle up. In fact, I'm going to turn my RPM control up just so that I have more control over this. Beautiful landing, though. I love this area. 10,000 feet up. Still got lakes. And little byways. The sprawl exists. I see some passenger planes down there. This is an international airport, so flying into here IRL must be just insane. You can see the actual air traffic control tower right there. All right, we gotta we gotta lose some altitude, chat. We got plenty of runway to go, so it's really not a rush. We don't have to follow the same glide slope as, a, you know, a big boy. All right, everybody. All one of my passengers, get those tray tables up and seat belts on. See my shadow in the left? That was nice. That was a nice back wheel touch. We got so much east to west room here. I'm really happy with that one. That was gentle. Where's ground? Cancel landing intentions. <laughs> no, I've already landed. All right, let's get off the runway and see if we can talk to ground. I like this plane. The Papistral's nice. Tons of viewing angle. I love the glass. Uh, it's a little hard to see out the front, but it's not bad. Pump the brakes just to kind of slow our taxi down. Acknowledge handoff, and hopefully we can get a parking space this time. Welcome to El Dorado International Airport here in Bogota, Colombia. We are talking over each other now. I don't know who's who. But I think they just gave me clearance to taxi to parking. Look at that sunset. It might be gone when we come back in here, so... I'll try and be quick about setting up the next flight so we can at least get in here while the sun's still up. Bro, I am already almost done taxiing. It's a nice airport name, it is, yeah. Oh, I forgot to update the title after the last flight. Whoops. It still says we're going to Pan from Panama, <laughs> I think. Technically not a lie, we did go from Panama to Colombia. And we are still in Colombia. Go, let me go just go around the fuel tank in the middle of the road, no problem. I have no idea where this parking is. Long taxi. Like this plane quite a bit. I think I still have more to learn about it. I didn't really get a chance to poke around too much with all the buttons. There weren't really that many buttons to poke around with, to be fair. But uh, I haven't really seen this version of the GPS with the vertical screens very much. So there might have been some stuff there to look at. Title is correct for me. Oh, professional mods may have uh, up updated it, possibly. Looks like that latch might open a window. What does that? What does that do? Is that under the wing? Cinematic with all the blue arrows. <laughs> It's 
Still looks kind of cool, though. New. Flaps, maybe? No, you can leave flaps down right now. There's no need to pick flaps up. Just a taxi. As far as I know. Alright, let's slow it down. As we whip it on in here. I actually get in the park really close to the air traffic control tower, which is pretty neat. It's a good looking airport. El Dorado International. We're going to have a, a nice sample of the world's airports. Some huge, some small, like Sirena Station was really fun. Sometimes the small airports are, are the most fun. And I'm glad that the devs kind of polished up some of the more enthusiast airports instead of just the big boy ones. Because it's fun to have a nice mix of both. Oh, hey guys. What's up, Fitty? You got here just in time for us to park and start the next flight. So chat, if you uh, want to jump in, the next flight is not going to be exciting, but if you would like to fly along with us, you're more than welcome to. We're not really going to be doing any sightseeing. Um, the one thing that is nice about this is you will get to fly something that you normally would have meme flown in anyways. So go ahead and jump on in, get into US East, and set all your stuff to live. And then I'll update you on the flight plan. Go ahead and set that parking brake. And uh, powering this down is pretty easy. Except we're in a blue bubble. <laughs> um, realistically, I just need... Bro, I can't even see the turn key. Okay, off. Throttle down. Fuel down. Uh, Italics committed a minor error and forgot to turn on his landing lights. But I did have nav AC lights on the entire time. I don't even know what my landing lights look like, to be honest. Master switch for avionics is... Oh, the thing that was holding us back from ending, I guess. It's like your plane is filling up with mini golf water. <laughs> mini golf water. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But GG, good flight, everybody. That was a lot of fun. Even though the rock totally clipped us on the way past. I got cheesed. I just want like a flight with no crashes. Technically, we did have that. The DA-62. All right. Next one on the list, if you would like to play online, boot up your game now. And uh, we are going to be flying South American Flight 3 with service from Colombia to Mariscal Sucre International. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> Dude, does a second coffee nat? No way. Was that the original coffee nat? I don't understand where it could possibly be coming from. This doesn't make any sense. Maybe I didn't even kill one the first time. And this is the same one. Anyway, what you want to do is go ahead and set up SKBO El Dorado International to SEQM. We are going to Ecuador, yes. What's going to be fun about this Ecuadorian flight is that we are going to be flying a jet plane. So our first jet of our trip around the world, we're gonna be jumping in the Cessna Citation CJ4, finally making the upgrade to the Fast Boy. Gonna go quick. So this is not gonna be a long flight. It's just gonna be a fairly uneventful one, but the event is at the end. So we're going private jet. Thanks, Carrie, you for hanging out. Hope you had fun. Is there a bottle service for this flight? You have a mini fridge, Nick, so you get it yourself. 
We can go up to 451 knots true airspeed. For comparison, we were just traveling about 100. So this is over four and a half times faster than we were just going. This is true gotta go fast level. It's gonna be a fairly brief excursion. Uh, but it'll still take about an hour and 33 minutes according to this. And it's covering a fairly long distance comparatively, considering we just went from um, right here, right? This was the last trip. And now we're going all the way down here. So if you would like to copy me verbatim, I'm going to be just spawning at a gate. Honestly, you can pick whatever gate you want because El Dorado is big. Then you're going to want to do live traffic, live players. And I am going to be on East USA, okay? East USA live traffic, live players. And if you would like to copy my uh, flight approach, this is going to be the fun part. We're landing at an airport that, well, it's 1300. I guess it's big enough. It's got plenty of space for asphalt, but uh, the airports themselves are pretty nifty. I don't know if we'll be able to fully appreciate this one because it might be nighttime soon, but we're going to try and lift off soon. So we got uh, departure. You want to select IFR, low altitude airways, I guess, for this. I guess we could go higher. Let's just go high altitude. Okay, high altitude IFR, departure SIL, SIL 2D31L, and then for our approach... We want to land from the south, I guess, runway 36. I'm going to try and select a, um, ILS. That one will work, even if that's a bit tight. That one's too tight. That one's got a little bit more space. For a jet, you probably want that space. So I'm going to select ILS 36Y. So we have a little bit more room coming in. Okay, you guys got it? Departure, S-I-L-E 2D31L, ILS 36Y on the approach. If you don't remember that, you can just follow me. It'll be fine. I'll be available to see in the game, okay? Live, 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 and east. Cessna Citation CJ4, let's get in there. If you got the game, you're welcome to join. Change the livery? Oh. Could I have changed the livery? Do I even have citation liveries? Too late. We're already in. I didn't change my flight tag information either. Actually, that is going to be kind of annoying. We might just back out real quick and redo that. Because I'm tired of listening for... I, I listen for Midas, and that's what cues me in. I think I just managed to get Twitch notifications to show up on my phone again. That's kind of been a problem, huh? I've seen, I've had some issues with that too. Twitch doesn't show me notifications until after I've picked up my phone. And it's like, what if I wanted the notification and my phone's just on my table? I think that's a phone problem, not a Twitch problem though. All right, let me quickly main menu real quick. And uh, not really for the livery, but we'll look while we're there. Plus, it'll give people in chat some time to get in. Luckily, I've already saved the flight plan. SA-3. Colombia to Ecuador. There actually are liveries. There you go. Royal Air Force. We got the blue and black. Dude, black and gold looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Air ambulance? Gotta go fast? <laughs> do you want to go air ambulance, chat? Or do you want to go red and black? Let's do air ambulance. Oh, it's a jet, so double check your gas. 
In fact, we're gonna go full gas, because I think it might- Or we could just turn gas off. But watch your gas chat. Um, you might want to just disable fuel consumption before you do this flight, because I think the jets are still bugged. I'm going to leave it. Um, I'll just correct it if I need to. All right, passengers. Yeah, sure. I'll take a couple passengers. We don't need 150 pounds of baggage, though. Weigh me down. I'll take a couple just for fun. See how it's still going to be insanely fast. All right, I'm going to double check my settings. Double check my ATC. Tail number, day five, flight four? We're on the fourth flight already? Call sign Midas. Flight number SA. SA3. Doesn't really matter what parking. I'm not, I don't want to spawn at a gate though. Ramp GA small's good. All right, gotta go fast, Chad. We need to get back in there. ILS... Which one did I choose? I think we choose 36Y. Okay. Ready? Again. You just chucked half our luggage on the runway! Sorry. You won't mind, will you? Is this game early access? This seems pretty buggy. Well, it turns out it's really hard to full simulate actual airplane physics, you know? It just had a small task of rendering the entire world. Not a big deal. In full. There's gonna be some hiccups. Alex, tell Thrustmaster to send you a wheel and pedal so you can become a sim racer. I don't think Thrustmaster knows that I exist. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be dark before we even get airborne. Unfortunately. It is what it is, though. We don't need the sun where we're going. Don't worry. It won't be so laggy in a moment. Maybe. Chat, is it your fault that I'm only getting 15 FPS right now? When I was just here and getting like 45, 50? All right, it's a little better now. There we go. Uh, parking brake. Check. Power lever idle. I've never flown the CJ4. I flew the Longitude a couple times, though. Um, so I might just, since it's getting dark, I'm just going to have the eyeballs help me out to learn a new plane. Are these not on? How do you turn these on? Set left engine alternator to off. They're already on. <clears throat> Battery switch. Okay. Check. We got some red. Avionics master switch dispatch. Beautiful. Right engine starter button push. What is down here? Rudder trim? Button guard? Pitch trim? Aileron trim? Hey, I found the starters! Here's the problem though, I need pushback first before I turn on my jet engines, probably. So let's do, uh, clearance. Go ahead and request IFR, go ahead and file our flight plan. By the way, do you guys have the, uh... Airport? Flight of Sierra Alpha Tree is cleared to Sierra Echo Quebec. My airport is filed. 
What's uh? We should be flying SKBO to SEQM. I'm gonna go ahead and update the title. So we're going Colombia to Ecuador. I can't update the flight plan, but basically, if you spawn in at uh, I did, thank you. Chat, if you spawn in at SKBO, that's where we are. If you don't file the flight plan to SEQM, you're going to have to follow me manually. I'm going to be on autopilot, so FYI. Oh, I am ready to taxi. Request? Do I have to request taxi IFR? Yeah, if you haven't installed the patch by now, Dirigible, <laughs> you had two weeks, and it's 15 gigs. So uh, you waited until the last minute, unfortunately. But don't worry, there'll be a next time. Short runway tree one left using taxiway Bravo Charlie Midas Sierra Alpha tree. All right, hooked me up with that pushback. Ground Midas Sierra Alpha tree requesting pushback. Midas Sierra Alpha tree pushback request accepted. I know I got a lot of things that need to be fixed. Parking brake is no longer one of them. Yeah, we're going El Dorado International to Marisco Sucre International. Does this plane have stall alerts? I'm sure it does, but we're going to have so much thrust that we're not even going to need them. I was borrowing some of your FPS to look at cat pictures. <laughs> Everything in order back there? All right, could you steer me to your left? Ground Midas Sierra Alpha Tree requesting pushback tug to steer the aircraft to the left. Uh oh, Sierra, other tree, left. Has been transmitted to the operator. The other left. Ground Midas Sierra Alpha Tree Quick. requesting pushback tug to steer the aircraft to the right. Midas Sierra Alpha Tree, your request has been transmitted to the operator. Are we good? Are we going to hit any planes back there? Alright, we should be fine. That's good. Woo! <laughs> Close shave! Fire truck was ready to start the fire and put it out at the same time. All right, so he's going to get out of the way. Let's go ahead and start the engines. So we got uh, right engine starter button here. Right engine run stop button. Whenever N2 equals 20%. Okay, so this is basically just how, you know, fast out of 100% the engine is working, how hard it's working. So you're going to want it to stabilize well under 100. Okay, when N2 equals 20%, open the button guard, run the engine. It'll spool up, close the button guard. Cool, they have button guards on there. Check the internal turbine... Actually, N1 and N2. Is N1... Is where? I don't remember the... I remember one of N1 or N2... Chat, what's N2? N1 is what I was just saying, I think, right? This is how hard the engine's actually working. What's N2? Oh, chat broke, by the way. I was like, nobody said anything since Malice Bixie said ding, 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 ding. I haven't seen anything you guys have said.
You've ceased to exist. Now I can see you. Okay. Anyway, ITT is just how hot it is. Internal turbine temperature. Left engine, same deal. Boop. Everyone's on their own plane. That's the idea. I hope that they're all on their own plane. Okay, 20% in two. Nobody in chat knows what in two is. Open button guard. And then press run and start. Easy enough. After starting the engine, get that avionics master switch on and then get some lights in here because I can't see anything. Make sure that the parking brake is on. Override the warning so we don't ding ding. I don't know where lights are in this. Might be above my head. Okay, there's some floodlights. Uh, the avionics master switch. I was gonna look there next. Because we already did that one. Okay, this is what I want to know, the lights. So we got one here for the wing. Beacon light and strobe light. One of those you don't need until you're actually taking off, and I don't remember which one's which. But we're definitely gonna want taxi lights on. Guess I'll turn the logo on. I would assume we want nav as well, so it's weird that it doesn't highlight. I think strobe is the one that you don't do until you're airborne. I could be wrong. Now, there's also a light for backlit panel. And that's going to be kind of important because I can't see anything right now. Sometimes it's off to your left. Sometimes it's here with like, this is fuel transfer. Well, if we've got lights here, this is de-icing. Passenger lights that I can't change. Here we go, panel dimming. And this is floodlight brightness. There we go, okay. We now have lit up buttons. The sun has gone down, but don't worry, we're gonna go high enough in the sky that we're gonna chase it. So we should be good to go, chat. Um, I've already got taxi clearance. Maybe I got it a little premature, but uh, I don't know anything about this plane other than it's gonna be fun. I don't see any warnings. We're gonna get a few frames here. I see some other people from chat. Getting ready to go. Oh, we got name tags on. I'll turn name tags off before takeoff, but I'll see who's here right now. So if you are planning on uh, joining us, this is last call to get into El Dorado International. I love a sunset takeoff and a night flight. It's going to be a cozy one because not only is it sunset, but um, it's also a jet. This is going to be a fast boy. 450 knots true airspeed. And once we go up to a cruising altitude closer to 25,000, we're going to go even faster. See some people already waiting for us down here. Not going to be a long flight, though. Probably less than an hour and a half total. And yes, we will get a tiny bit more time because I think we're flying south and west, like you said, Cucumber. I see some people. 
We got a taxi for like half a nautical mile. <laughs> I got a few travelers behind. <laughs> There's like five people behind us. And like another few over there. <laughs> There's our gang, dude. Air ambulance leading the way. Convoy! <laughs> Everyone's always picking the jets for memes anyway, so I guess it's fitting that we're doing a community flight with the jets. That way at least I fit in. That's me! I got it. Okay, well I had to hit the brakes hard anyway, because that was a really tight turn. Pink clouds in the distance, looking good. My bad. Well, you told me to stop and then go. What, what do I need to acknowledge? He was like, stop, actually, never mind. I didn't think I needed to acknowledge because I was just doing my thing. slow down around this corner. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my landing lights on because I think that'll just be a nice, like, headlight. There we go. Not sure if that actually helped. I think it did. Chaos in the control tower. Now nah, we good. We're good. There's gonna be some chaos though in a moment because there's a lot of planes here. <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> All right, we are where we are supposed to be. Let me see if I can get uh, clearance to take off. Tower Mida Sierra Alpha Tree and Runway Tree 1 left ready for takeoff. IFR to Sierra Echo Quebec Mike. Okay. Midas, Sierra Alpha Tree cleared for takeoff runway. Clear for takeoff 31 ATC. We have got a CJ4 currently cutting across the field. Uh, I just want to say that I'm the one that got clearance. I know that we're both CJ4s, but that is a different imposter plane who does not have clearance for takeoff. I just want to be clear. I'm first. Me. Okay, fine. I acknowledge. Cleared for takeoff runway tree one left minus Sierra Alpha tree. All right, I'm going to turn name tags off so I can get more frames. Side note, uh, this runway goes really far in this direction. Are you guys certain that you don't... ...want to, like, go down here and loop? There's <laughs> a lot of traffic on the runway right here. <laughs> Alright, here, we're gonna make a U-turn right here. But I gotta brake hard. This thing is not good at turning. Good enough. May have hit the grass a little bit. A little bumpy. Listen, I saw somebody else do it in front of me. I just wanted to be like them. Alright, this looks good. Go ahead and turn in. That's a nice line. Okay, I like this. So, here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> we got reverse thrusters going on the A320. Or what is this? Is this the Intercontinental? Or the A320? No! 
Noom. <laughs> there they go. There they go. All right, Chad, you guys ready? I gotta flip the the lever. Oops, actually it'd be an options. General. There we go. Okay, we are clear for takeoff, everybody. So here's what I want you to do. If you've already got the flight plane plugged in, I want you to take off first so I can actually see some other people taking off instead of you all following me, okay? Because you're on the live stream. You hear me? Wow, there's a lot of CJs. Dude, you are gonna get smoked. Whoever's in this little, um, what even is this? <laughs> what plane is that? <laughs> oh, I think they're already going. All right, everybody ready? <sighs> Steady? This is the community leg, yes, brain fist. We just started. <sighs> Let's roll out. Make sure flaps are down. All right, throttle up. Let's get out of here. Buckle up, everybody. In the back. I don't even know if I can see you right now. I'm just gonna focus on eyes on the road. We might have to go through this guy. We might just be a little bit zippier to get out the gate. <laughs> We're already going over a hundred knots, chat. Easy does it. Easy does it. Gear up. There she goes. I gotta be careful here. What are we beeping? What's the beep for? We good? Turbine temp? Alright, we're... we're Alpha tree listen, listen, ATC. Uh, I'm trying to keep my engine from catching fire, if that's okay with you. I'll acknowledge when I'm confident that I'm not going to explode. So we're going to start making a little turn here. And generally what I'm doing is kind of just following loosely um, my GPS, and then we'll set up autopilot once we feel like it. I would really like to get some shots. Before we're out. Before we're gone. We didn't get to take off into the city, which is unfortunate. But I see a lot of planes in the sky. And the nighttime does look good. So, here's what we're doing. We're kind of just watching our speed, watching our angle. We can go ahead and go up a little faster if we want as we kind of straighten this out and head for our next checkpoint. We got a really gentle um, bit of trim. Speed is going to balance out, you know, close to 250 knots, which is fine. We got the throttle, you know, not maxed. There's no reason to, because we're going fast enough. So, what I'm going to do... Ooh, is go ahead and configure my lights. Because I shouldn't need landing or taxi on anymore, and I do want strobe to be on. There you go. The Jet Boy is going to be a fast one. We need to trim up a little bit more. 
And I need to figure out how to set this autopilot up. So here's what I'm going to do. There we go. So that you guys can see a little bit better. Uh, I have no idea what anything at the top of this is. Most of it's inoperable. That's good. We're going to want to change our CDI first, if possible. Getting some nice choppy frames here, probably with all the people from chat on. Um, if I was going to change my FMS to CDI GPS, what would I do? You need to enable nav mode? Wrong. You don't want to enable nav mode until you're certain that you have your CDI configured properly. And also, my waypoint just disappeared. Do you guys see that? Oh, I think it just deleted one of the legs. So we're coming up on Sileg now. We're still heading the right way. We're at about 15,000 feet, still at a decent climb. Okay, so how do I change? Hmm, how do I change? My waypoints disappeared too. You might have skipped, we, we might have skipped one possibly. I'm gonna go ahead and straighten this out. Let's do this. I'll just look it up. Not that manual flying this is that hard. Okay. Here we go. I think it's already correct. It always was when I flew that jet. Okay, but I just like to make sure because I'm not going to... Uh, I refuse to just push buttons and then have to correct for a... Earthbound trajectory. A resident plane expert is not in the house right now. This isn't Garmin, so it's different. Yeah, I'm just... No problem with uh, being short, chat. We got an hour and a half, you know? It's not a race. <laughs> we got plenty of time to explore uh, the plane, its options, and make sure we're doing things right. I know that it might be painful if I don't push every button immediately. But I, I promise you, we are doing absolutely fine on pure manual mode right now. I've got control, and uh, it couldn't be easier. In fact, this is the easiest flight that I've had. So far, um, it's just so gentle. Got a nice easy speed, 250 knots or so. Enjoying the sunset with our air ambulance. I see the blinking in the background of all of our compatriots. Some people lifting off to space. And we are well on our way. Hey, what's up, Xenophanes? How you doing? Okay, so really all I have to do is find the panel. Ooh, that reminds me. Let's go ahead and do... Probably want ice protection here.
Is it a bad thing that Pito Heat is on? I doubt it. When we're going to be climbing up above 20,000 feet. And through some clouds, no less. But yet, I'm getting the warning. Got to make a pretty steep turn here. Try to line us up. I see you guys creeping along as the sun sets. We're like a big flying Christmas tree, more or less. <laughs> yeah, this is very comfortable flying. I only have the throttle at like 60% right now. Okay, line it up. Head above the clouds. It's crazy to think the airport that we were just at was all, was almost 10,000 feet above sea level. So we've really only climbed 10,000 feet so far. We're not in a super steep angle, but we're still climbing at a reasonable... <laughs> uh, is that 3,000 feet per minute? Or am I... Misunderstanding. That's pretty fast, if so. <laughs> Glad you're streaming even if I have to become a filthy VOD watcher. Have I hit escape velocity? Okay, I think it was just... We hit a little bit, like, of chop, and I think we decelerated a little bit. Air's getting a little bit thinner up here. Could probably pump the jets a little bit. Pull the trim up a little bit. Alright, I just want to look at some of the buttons. First time flying the CJ4. I like to just look around. So we got a flight director. Uh, I could set a heading mode if I wanted to. There's really no reason. Uh, I'd say, what is our designated altitude? What's the max for the CJ? Is it 25? Do we want to chill here? 41,000. Okay, so cruising altitude is 25 then. Yaw damper, which I think we're going to need. I think I saw two flight director buttons. You got to be really careful if you got damage on with the jets because sudden movements can really throw you off. And uh, you're going, eventually you're going so fast that even just light movements can absolutely screw you up. So you got to be very soft with it. Isn't ATC giving you flight levels? No, because I didn't tune them. Because <laughs> I needed... Uh, if I tune them, I have to focus on what they're saying and how to fly at the same time, and it's very stressful in a new plane, especially when I have damage models all the way on. So I just kind of mute them sometimes. No, I don't think I will. I'm not going to descend to 9,000 feet. That's ground level. They always do this. No. Um, they're going to say yes only after you go down to 9,000 feet and do what I say. They actually didn't say that. Interesting. I'm shocked. Descend and maintain flight level 180 minus Sierra Alpha Tree. They actually gave me 10,000 right off the bat. Now can you give me 7,000 right off the bat? Ponita Center minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Request flight level 250. Minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Wow! Did they patch that or something? I actually got it. 
Okay. Climb and maintain flight level 250 minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Hey, what's up, Kyra Toby? We're doing the community flight right now. So we're up in the sky with all these people. All right, let's slow this down, and we are gonna have to do autopilot because we're about to get yelled at by mom, who is not happy with us. I barely even changed the trim. Hey, plane, I don't even have autopilot on. Can you chill? Why are you trying to nosedive? Oh, because I didn't have the, uh, the thumbstick in the little socket that it's supposed to go in to register my trim. All right, time to get autopilot set up because maintaining your altitude is the hardest part. So we're going to turn altitude hold on. It's set to 84,000 feet, which is, of course, not what we want at all. Bruh, I just passed my assigned altitude while you were talking, okay? So if you just wait two minutes well I can this is why I had you muted before by the way so you have to turn off altitude hold mode turn it back on again so it actually gets your correct uh, altitude but yeah we are just like it's being very annoying right now there we go so we clipped it at 24,000 we're kind of sliding into overspeed territory be careful I thought I was the white arrow for a second Okay, so we got altitude hold mode. I guess I'll trust chat and turn nav mode on. And, uh... Then I just want vertical speed. But I don't see... Actually, I don't think we need vertical speed. I think we can just turn autopilot on now. So picky, you know. You're so picky. Did you know that? Four hundred feet below your assigned altitude. Okay, two five zero is what we're gonna shoot for. I guess I don't need vertical speed mode because we're so close to it already. So now what we're gonna do is throttle up. Gain some speed. We're already going over half of Mach 1. We are now achieving... Yep, you guys are right. With nav mode, it seems like it's already set um, to the correct FMS, GPS, which is nice. We don't have to configure that. It's just on FMS 1. So it's going to find um, our waypoint here. And it looks like it's w maintaining the 25,000 that I had set for it. We do need to change our altimeter, or not, okay. Looks like it's good. There you go. So I think we're in the clear to basically just configure our speed now. So once we get perfectly lined up, we can give the throttle a little bit more. I guess we just need to watch the internal turbine temperature. See those? That's what you don't want right there. You also don't want to get into overspeed. We're getting into pretty dangerous territory. So, like, I really don't want to go above 300 knots indicated airspeed. So, let's see where it kind of evens this out. Overspeed. Can still see pretty well up here. Oh, you see what I see? Is that ice? Sure is. Is that ice on the windshield too, chat? Sure is. Looking frosty up here. <laughs> Dude, it's cold back here. Hey, can you guys see? What are you guys doing back there? All right, let's uh let's de-ice this, chat.
These are in op. How about wing and engine? Is there a shield de ice or a windshield de ice? I assume if I see ice on the windshield, then it's probably safe to assume that I see ice elsewhere. Also, we need to slow down. We're going pretty fast now. Oh, inert sep on. I forget where that is. Do I want to go ahead and have... Yaw damper on? No. Do I want to have flight director on? Alright, where is a uh, inert separator? Inertia. It's on the bottom left. Okay, that was very vague instruction. Um... The bottom left. This is the bottom left for reference. This might be considered the bottom left. This is stretching the bottom left. Say anything that is here is the bottom left. Wrong plane. <laughs> no! Chat lied again! Say it ain't so. They do it all the time. My engine starters off? I assume they are. Uh, inertial separator is supposed to be basically something that helps you on, I think, takeoffs and landings. Basically, it, it's supposed to. I'll just look it up. Uh, an inerting system, I don't think that's what this is. Or is it? Most of these are for the TBM 900. Uh... Yeah, there's a bunch that comes up for TBM 900, nothing for the CJ4. Guys, why is the pilot Googling how to use the plane mid-flight? Guys, why is the people in chat uh, typing in the dark, okay? Turn some lights on back there, you heathens. Welcome aboard Etal Air. Indeed. Hmm. Do you guys think this is a safe passing distance? <laughs> what are you thinking, Elizabeth? Good? Ignition to manual, we got climate control, pitot fan, fuel boost, oxygen supply, oxygen control, cabin pressure, turn that off for sure. Hondo percent, maybe it's behind the steering wheel. Com tuners, cabin fans, in-op oxygen mask buttons. There's really not that many buttons that it could be. Nobody in chat knows the answer to where the switch is for once. I 
mean, I'm looking right here. Check above your head. I'm pretty sure that's all just lighting up there. There's literally a phone and three lighting switches, and that's it. What are we looking for? The inert sep switch for the CJ4. We got the heat on correctly. <laughs> it's a nice looking 1985 car console. <laughs> Center console. We got floodlight brightness. Which really doesn't do much. Beacon strobe, passenger lights, pulse lights. Engine run stop. Engine starter. You guys see it? Because I think you're just making shit up, to be honest. And hoping that you get it right. Inert step is probably just engine de ice. Well, you say that, but engine de-ice is on. I gave a suggestion to see if the checklist can help you zoom in on it. It can't. Chat making stuff up, how dare you? Oh, absolutely. Like, three of you were convinced it was on the center console just now. Trying to bait me. I looked. What does that say about me? The inert sep is a de-icer. Well, I turned on the de-ice like a good boy when we started frosting up. So I think we did good for the air ambulance. Chat, one more wrong advice and you're going in, okay? Next person with an incorrect back seat, you're getting tossed in. We're getting some bump. Speaking of bump, uh, I am currently 25,000 feet above sea level, and that is a mountain. What mountain is that? Big! How many people are out here? I see one, two, three, four behind. We started with over 10. I don't know if I'm at the front of the pack or in the middle of the pack. Who put that there? Who put that there? We're going at a reasonable pace. I kind of slowed down a little bit because we were just approaching kind of dangerous indicated airspeed. Let's see um, if we can figure out what mountain that is. It's definitely between Bogota and I think we're landing in Quito, I think. It honestly just might be that. Nevado del Huila National Park. I believe it is that. Passing Cali on the side. Popayan. 
a city in western Colombia, southwest of Bogota. It's known for its whitewashed colonial buildings and as a religious center with popular Holy Week processions. The city's many churches include the domed neoclassical Cathedral Basilica of Our Lady of the Assumption and the 17th century church of La Ermita. In the city's heart, tree-shaded Caldas Park is home to a 17th century clock tower. Got any pictures? You got any of those photos? There's a picture. There's a picture. Looks like schools. Churches. Royal Films Movie Theater. And a little airport there, too. Golf course. Got some stuff going on there. Should I just hit the feet cam again? The feet cam's still intact? Feet cam has been beat up a little bit today. <laughs> a little bit. Doing its best. I remember flying this plane and also couldn't find the inertial separator button. Yeah, I don't think it is there. I think Ace Tech is correct. Flight plan is like, eh, close enough. So we probably are already... Well, this is a good question. How do I manipulate the map? Like, what if I want to zoom in or out of this map? Which console controls the map? Probably this one. Fancy. Okay. Terrain and weather overlays. Oh, cool. TCAS traffic overlay. System overlay. It says zoom, but it doesn't do anything. I can also pan, but that doesn't do anything either. Parentheses, in up. On the one hand, I like not backseating and seeing Etal learn the game. On the other, chat has him searching for made up switches for 10 minutes. And they make up spots where they say that they are, and then they go, oops, sorry, I thought this was a different plane after I can't find it. All right, I think Chad's had some time to catch up here because I see some people hanging out around us. We lost a few, though. Got one flanked on my left, one on my right. And then two behind. Nobody above or below as far as I can tell. Okay, so we're speeding up a little bit. We were at like 0.51 Mach, now we're at 0.64. How do it, I assume that's my true airspeed. But yeah, I have no idea like how far until the next waypoint. It looks like 11 nautical miles. I can just look at this. Um. Somebody said the answer, though. It's above the left screen, PFD menu. Welcome aboard, Etal Air. Okay. And if I want to select... There you are! That wasn't even that hard to explain. Alright, it it's already on FMS anyway.
Now, if I want to go back one, hit escape. All right. Then go config. Nope. References. I think it's going to be range 10. But I don't know how to change range. How do I... How do I change the... It looks like the number 10 is probably how zoomed it is. I would assume. Hold on, I gotta fix the TR. It's about to fall. I can feel it. Because the rose is just the compass. Versus the arc that it's in now. So if I want to change that, I can go... Boom, now I get the full radial, which I like. Oh, here we go. So it's a fat wheel and a small wheel, but the problem is I, it, when I move my head, that makes this really difficult. There we are, okay. So it looks like we're actually already coming up on it. We are well over the halfway point right now. We are Newman, chat. We're at 292 knots indicated airspeed, and we might even want to slow down a little bit, but it should be fine. Right now, 80 looks good. Okay, fixed. Little obtuse, but we got it done. Hey, what's up, Onion? We're currently headed to Ecuador right now. The highest mountain in Colombia is 18,800 feet in elevation. Is that the one we just passed? Possibly? By the way, Dark Be Dragon, thank you for 66 months, who says execute order 66, Monka. Well, Chad, it was nice knowing you all. But yeah, was that the one we passed? I see four of you are doing a good job of following the other seven. <laughs> <laughs> In oh, including, uh, there was an airliner. I have no idea what happened to the airliner. That's okay. We'll meet up when we get there. But yeah, we're making pretty good time, honestly. This is a very pleasant nighttime flight. So, what I wanted to check was a little information about Ecuador. All right, chat, did you know? That Ecuador is the closest country to space. Because the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It bulges at the equator. So the equator is closer to space and farther from the center of Earth than anywhere else. The bulge is big enough that Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador is 1.5 miles higher than Mount Everest. Since it's measured from sea level. Mount Everest is considered higher, um, but technically not. Did someone say space? I did. Ecuador is the only country in the world named after a geographical feature. <laughs> The Republica del Ecuador, which literally means the Republic of the Equator. <laughs> I don't know why I never put that together. Why did I not know Ecuador was just Equator? 
I had no idea. It's just Ecuador, dude. I didn't really try and think too much into it. <laughs> I'm learning. This is basic information that I need to know. <laughs> Ecuador. I'll always remember that Ecuador is just equator. The country. It just makes too much sense. It does. <laughs> Air ambulance coming in hot. It's actually uh, reasonably bright outside compared to what it usually looks like in these nighttime shots. Is the moon? Oh, because we got a big moon. That's why. The last few times we've flown at night, we couldn't see anything. But we got uh, the ch big cheese on our side. So I can actually see what's going on out here. I was wondering why it was actually so visible. That makes a lot more sense. How do you go into, like, um... Camera mode? You know what we've not done? do like a uh, foreground focus Whoop. we good okay I don't know how I flew over there I might end up crashing the game I need to just let's not mess with this right now I might crash the game. Bye. Ooh, where are we? Looks like we just finished making a little turn. Want to make sure we're not going too fast here. We're, we're booking it. We're we're at point six six seven uh mock. Two thirds of one mock. Crazy. But yeah, CJ Mel, thank you. Who says bug snacks? Big people happy. <laughs> when is bug snacks even supposed to come out? I've been reading, there's been people memeing about it lately. They're like, I can't wait to see Travis Scott play Bug Snacks on his new PS5. Is that going to be a launch title for PlayStation 5? <laughs> I don't know. I've just seen people talking about it. Alright, Ecuador has the world's first UNESCO World Heritage Site from 1978. Number one is the Galapa Galapagos Islands. And number two is the city of Quito, which is where we are going to land. So there you go. Here's a picture. It's a nice looking place. Ecuador has a long-standing border conflict with Peru, which we're also going to be flying through. 1981 and 1995, they had fighting breakout. And then finally in 1999, long time ago. One oddity of their agreement is that Ecuador has a perpetual lease of one square kilometer of Peru, where they have a military base. It's Peruvian territory, but run by Ecuador. Huh. From 1822 to 1830, they were part of Gran Colombia, which included Colombia and Venezuela, and they were one nation. They got independence from Spain and joined them. So I guess they were all going to be one big one. Look at this fancy boy on the left. Also, look at that uh, valley city back there. Looking very beautiful. We are actually... We probably need to start making a descent soon, chat. Like, now-ish. Let's go ahead and start our descent. So I'm going to go ahead and throttle down. And while that's slowing down, I need to change altitude. Okay, we need to turn vertical speed mode on, because apparently it's not. Stop scrolling! 
Alright, I say a thousand feet per minute. Because we're going to be coming up on this pretty fast. To 10,000 feet. So it'll take us like 15 minutes to go down, and it's not going to take us 15 minutes to get to this next waypoint, so... Might want to throttle down even more. And we might need to descend faster. Let's go like 12... Okay, so I got this set up for 1,200 feet per minute. To 10,000 feet. We're at 24,000 right now, and on the way down. The way the console reflects in the window. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they got the details. That's why this is the new crisis. Yamaf. Yeah, because you've got to start giving me a descent. You're, you're literally going to wait until I'm supposed to be making my approach. Sorry, I forgot that I was on IFR for... We've been flying uh, GPS all day. Center minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Request 15,000 feet. That looks awesome. I love the like light pollution glow. Alright, at least they're not being as picky making me climb back to the old instruction first. Alright, we'll just lock it in at 15,000 right now. Maybe like 12.5 would be good. So I'm going to request another decrease of like 3,000. Bogota Center minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Request 12,000 feet. IFR waits till 90 nautical miles away, then expect you to descend at 2.5 thousand feet per minute. Yeah. But I'm also requesting my own increases and decreases. They they denied my request to go down to twelve uh, thousand. Maybe the mountains are too tall here. We'll go to fi we'll go to fifteen. Okay, got fifteen selected. Uh, we're on a nice descent. We're at about twenty one and a half thousand feet currently on the way down. If I'm looking at um, our map here. I'd like to use what I learned. Hit the PFD menu. Scroll down to range. And get that back to 40. So that way we can see a little bit more detail. Zooming in, basically. Ow! I almost just ripped my headphones out. But yeah, it's crazy how high up we are and how tall these mountains are, man. Also, it's incredible how terrible my gamer posture is. <sighs> Ridiculous. I'm like a crab. How many people we still got here? I see a CJ4 to my left. Some of you guys are way down there. Glazing those mountains, dude. Can see them in pretty good detail. And you can still see the soft hue of the sun in the horizon over the clouds. Alright, we are at under 20k now. Feeling pretty good. Tree is how you say three in the phonetic alphabet. Really? Is that why it does that? I thought Crisis was the new Crisis. Does anybody even get the new Crisis? It seemed like um, it kind of came and went. Talked about it the other day. When does, um... Hang on. Does We talked about Baldur's Gate and we talked about Squadron. Do those come out on the same day now? Or, like, I think they come out the same week now. 
IFR in this game is still rough and buggy. Yeah. It's because it's all AI driven, I guess. They do what they can do. I can't believe we've already been streaming for eight and a half hours. How? <laughs> all right, there's not very many games where time actually flies by, but this is one of them. And I don't mean that as the pun. I don't mean that as the pun. I'm really actually afraid of landing this. I think I just saw someone new by out of my uh, driver's side window. Maybe it was my own reflection. I'm really nervous for this landing, actually. It's a big, big runway. Uh, we're going to have some challenging landings on uh, some of these flight legs where we're flying big or fast planes and we do not have a lot of room. So I'm kind of excited about that. Keep things spicy. So far we've done pretty good in terms of not having any errors. I know I would normally turn off the uh, the floodlights, but I'm going to leave... Which one is this? Where is this light coming from? There we go. Do you guys want me to leave, like, uh... I can't even see. Do you want me to leave that on? Is that, like, be better viewing experience? Or everything off? Have I landed this plane before? No. But I've landed the longitude before. If I've landed this one, it's been in a challenge. That's what we can do after this. Let's do some challenge landings. That would be really fun. The mood lighting is just lovely, dear. <laughs> Will there be another community flight tonight? No. The next flight has a ton of POIs that we need to see, and it's going to require daylight. So this will be the last around the world challenge today. Nothing says that we can't, like... I mean, honestly, I'm, I like the idea of doing the landing challenges. But yeah, the next flight is going to be big time need to see sunlight. The CJ here is a really nice night flight, though. We're getting some chop. We are at 15,000 chat and uh, probably need to go even lower. Let's request by 3,000 for now. Center minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Request 12,000 feet. Minus Sierra Alpha Tree request denied. Okay. Will you give me 1,000 feet? Altitude Center minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Request 14,000 feet. Give some turbulence, and we're really not going that fast either. Minus Sierra Alpha Tree descent and maintain 14,000 feet. Okay. Acknowledge. Descend and maintain 14,000 feet minus Sierra Alpha Tree. I accidentally clicked the VNAV button. Uh, the plane is currently drunk and there's nothing I can do to push the buttons. So... I don't think it's actually in vertical speed mode. One one nine or decimal nine or for minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Okay. I don't even. Is this our airport? I don't think it is. Got some big clouds coming up, Chad. I hope there's no mountains in those clouds. <laughs> Does the radar have a terrain mode? Uh, I think so. I might be able to program this one. We have to do the bottom rung. Oh, 
my god. The mouse wheel! Uh, which one of these? Not that one. Not that one. Uh, not that one. Okay. Well. I think I can do lower menu on this. And then... Change it. But I don't remember why. The screens on both sides look the same, probably to save FPS. Ah, they did mirror. Interesting. Didn't notice that before. That's kind of cool. So you want to hit escape. I like kind of seeing the overhead view, though. I believe I already pushed this button. Where is it? Upper, lower, cursor, engine... Oh, terrain, weather overlays. There you go. It's not as detailed as I'd like. But, yeah. It is there. Okay, so we are coming into a little loop that we're doing right now. So the plan is kind of to come here, finish our descent on this leg, and then make a tight loop around. And I've got the approach programmed. It's one of the beauties of flying IFR instead of um, GPS is I don't have to worry about lining it up. Uh, we've already got it programmed into the flight computer. So... I get to just follow along, and we even, I think there's an approach mode on this plane as well. I'm getting terrible frame rate right now, so I apologize if you're getting, uh, if you can count the frames. But, uh, I never have tried approach mode. Maybe one time. Might be fun to check it out. I don't know when you're supposed to activate it necessarily, but we can just push it and find out. <laughs> Why not, right? But we still got one buddy over here. Can wave to him out the passenger window. Going almost at the exact same speed. That's me! Hi, Nico Delira. We lost the friends that were behind us. I don't know where they all went. Oh, somebody's way up there. So we started with like 12, we dwindled to five, and now we're down to two. Oh. Make that three. Yes, I know I'm at my altitude cap. Why do you have to turn on altitude... ...hold mode first? Why do you have to set a new altitude? Because then it starts climbing immediately. Can you leave altitude hold mode... ...off? Alright, leave altitude hold mode off. Then, turn vertical speed on. Okay, I got it. I understand. I don't even know how fast we're up. 900? Okay, one more scroll, and that's 1,000. So it should be climbing at 1,000 feet. <sighs> if they want me to go up, they want me to go up, chat. Send that guy to descend first. <laughs> he can find the terrain for you. I mean, to be fair to us, there are some big mountains here that are taller than me right now. So it's not unreasonable what they're asking me to do. 
However, that being said, uh, we gotta do a quick descend and loop around here, because I don't know how high up above sea level this airport is. Drink so much coke it flipped upside down. I'm glad the moon's out today, though. It's really just bizarre to me that, uh, first of all, the time zone, I think, is only an hour ahead. Let me see what local time is. Nope, they're two hours ahead, according to the game. But still, they're so much further east than the U.S., how does the moon even work? No one knows. But think about it like this. Look at this. Here's Florida. There's us. You know, like, we are dead south of Florida. Well, I guess it depends on how this angles. I don't know where the compass rose is. It says north right there. But we're actually on central time, which is here. Because <laughs> I'm in uh, Pacific over here. They got mountain, central, eastern. And even though it's supposed to be on eastern time, it's actually, or even beyond eastern time for much of this, actually on central time. So the distance that we just covered there is pretty good. Bogota to Quito. And only an hour and a half, hour and some change. So pretty good distance considering this was one flight, two flights, um, three flights. Yeah, this is by far the, the furthest we've gone today. All right, we're rolling into the turns now. ATC, I need some help here. Chat, I, do I have to just override ATC? What's the, what is, what's the, I think, do I just trust them? What do I do? Because this is it. We're not that high up. 15,000 feet just seems really high, but really these mountains are like, scary how tall they are actually. Uh, what's really cool is that we're using a real approach. And what I mean is, this is not just an approach that was made up for the game, right? This is a real approach using real waypoints uh, that real pilots use. So we are following a tried and true tested uh, path to get into Bogota. Which means, as long as we're following that tried and true tested path, we ain't gonna hit any mountains. Because this is what they already do. What's up, Wild Omelette, Pro Casual? You're just in time for the landing in our CJ4, which I have never landed before. Uh, do I have... I have to test this out. Do I have, uh... The slowdown brakes? I do! I got the little, uh, the little flaps on top. Okay. So I can use that. What are they called? No, not flaps. The top ones. Spoilers. Thank you. Spoilers. Honking Antelope says. That is correct. So, flaps are one thing. Spoilers are just like anti-speed. Does this have reverse thrusters? It does. And that's why flying the jets are so much fun, because you've got all these facets. First of all, you're hurtling through the sky. Obviously, we've slowed down significantly right now because I'm just making sure that we're, you know, going at a nice pace. We can speed up a little bit. We're going like 220 knots. I'm just kind of making sure I give myself plenty of time in case ATC uh, decides to be a little greedy with our airspace. But um, you've got, obviously, insane speed, which means easy to crash. You've got more reliance on 
different ways to break than just flaps, such as the, the spoilers, and you've got um, reverse thrust once you touch down. So it's like got a few more chunky, like upper ceiling, skill ceiling type mechanics to remember. So it's, it's a little bit more fun to try and land them because it's, it's a lot more danger ne necessarily. They're very fragile. Like, if you're on the descent, you're going, like, 200... If I'm going 300 knots, and I go... Like, if I just... If I pulled the throttle back as hard as I could, I get a black screen right now. You know what I mean? So we're going to slow down. Uh, you are 29 miles northwest. Maintain present heading and altitude... Expect ILS Yankee runway 36 approach by Edmel transition clear to Edmel minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Okay, runway 36 approach. And we are clear to Edmel. So if we look down here, we can see our waypoints. So we're currently on this little U turn. So uh, we're heading down to Edmel, and then we just need to pop over for a landing. But this is Bogota right now, and you can probably see the airport blinking in the distance from here. Almost there, chat. It's been fun flying this jet. Learned a lot about the menu systems and the... I guess we could turn off the ice. Probably don't need that on still, do we? Okay. One two one decimal two minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Shouldn't need the de ice anymore. It's a big mountain dead ahead, Jet. Uh. Yeah, it's a big mountain dead ahead. I don't think ATC is going to clear us over the mountain. Please. I guess that's why they want us at 15,000. I'm at 15,000. It ain't high enough. <laughs> Let's climb at a relaxing 2,000 feet per minute to make sure we get over this mountain. Because otherwise, we're going to die. <sighs> nice little mountain chop here. Did I not just Kino do this? Minus Sierra Alpha Tree is out of 16,300 feet for 15,000 feet. Remember how he said this approach is tried, Kino true, and tested? And how everybody does it, and we're definitely not going to die because of it? Remember that? Remember when I said that? Well, how am I going to lose enough altitude? I'm going to take manual. Hey, what's up, reanimate a bit? How's it going? <laughs> Look at that mountain in the distance. This one? The... Uh, I don't know who's down there, but you're about to hit a mountain, dude. Where are you going? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the turbulence is getting pretty big. Oh yeah, there is a big one straight ahead. We might be able to see that one a little bit better uh, in the daylight on the next flight. Huge. Hey, Chad, I'm turning altitude hold mode off. Descent 
Descend and maintain 16,000 feet minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Minus Sierra Alpha Tree, descend and maintain 15,000 feet. Got it. Descend and maintain 15,000 feet minus Sierra Alpha Tree. I'm on the way back down now that I cleared the mountain. Minus Sierra Alpha Tree, contact Keto approach. I thought he was about to tell me a third one, dude. I'm gonna cut back on the speed. I got a lot of uh, hats to wear, and I got a lot of plates to spin, and I'm trying to juggle as we come into Bogota. Welcome, everyone, to Ecuador. Equator. Today I learned the closest to space, and technically the highest up mountain there. What city is that? This is Bogota, Colum or not Colombia, Ecuador. 17k to bleed off? No, that's above sea level. We are well above sea level right now. Uh, that's what's so interesting about South America, from Colombia down here to Ecuador. Everything is so tall. Uh, they are literally just living like 10,000 feet above sea level. So we're actually quite close. We'll change altimeter. And uh, they wanted me to go to 15,000, correct? So we're going to make the turn... Come back in. Really nice nighttime um, view here. The topography is insane. The fact that they just built and sprawled Minus all the way out through this. At what point do I want to turn on approach mode, chat? One, one, niner, decimal, niner, is it Bogota and Ecuador? What did I say? Did I say we're going? Did I say we're going to Bogota? We are not going to Bogota. We're going to Quito. My bad. Sorry. We came from Bogota. We are heading to Quito in Ecuador. So this is Quito. My apologies. They're both beautiful. Well center minus Sierra Liar. Alpha is at 15, what part did I lie? Descending 15,000 feet. Minus Sierra Alpha Tree, Quiet Well Center, continue to QSV 06 as planned. Altimeter 29er, All right, uh, does anyone else notice that apparently, Minus according Sierra to the plan, Alpha we're going to make a large sweeping miles. turn to the left, and out my driver's side window, I see a mountain? Is that a concern to anybody else? Keep speed below 185 knots, Minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Go ahead and decelerate here. Is these guys in New Mumbai? We'll be fine. <laughs> Peepo comfy. Mountain. <laughs> Peepo comfy. <laughs> so dumb. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. Right? Big mountain. The night shots are really cool. I love the stars, accurate skyboxes. Probably be getting some different constellations down here. Below the equator. See some people from chat Newman on in. A lot of cool volcanoes. I assume these are volcanoes. They're very prominent. So that's not the airport we're going. Is that may be the airport we're going to? It's on the other side of the city. The one that we passed on the way in. All right, we are actually at exactly 185 knots where they wanted us to be, and to keep speed under. So that's cool. They actually give you the suggested speed. All right, we are on approach, chat. Let's do what we can do. We actually did dodge the mountain in a big horseshoe. We're actually threading the needle between this volcano, this volcano, whatever that is, and this big mountain as well. 
Going right through farmland, it looks like. Take a deep breath. Big jet plane landing coming up. It looks like we actually are at a good height. I think we s our speed is what's manageable right now. Let's go a little faster. Going a little too slow. At what point should I try turning on approach mode? I think I'd rather just do it myself. We can play with approach mode later. Sorry. My immersion! He's killing it! What's perfect about having IFR, even though ATC can be kind of annoying, is just knowing that when I take control, we should be perfectly lined up with the runway that we are supposed to be on. In fact, it is not that airport. Not this one at all. Actually, that one, I think. Going to one two one decimal two minus Sierra Alpha Tree. So, chat, we'll be touching Kilo down in probably Tree, less 14, than like three minutes. Minus Sierra Alpha Tree Keto approach. Continue to QSV 06 as planned. Altimeter tree zero decimal zero zero. Okay, double check my altimeter. Continue as planned. He's not giving me any new heights. Looks like somebody just overshot. <laughs> From what I can tell. They haven't given me any altitude adjustments. But it's crazy how high up this whole city is. Because we're 15,000 feet. I mean, this can't be... This has to be around 10 to 11,000 feet. We're, we can't be more than three, 4,000 feet up right now. Okay. Descend and maintain 11,000 feet minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Got the designated altitude at 11,000, vertical speed on. We got 1,000 feet per minute on the way down. I'm going to bump it up to. 1,200 feet per minute. Q, 3,000 feet per minute approach. <sighs> We're on the way, chat. We got it. Luckily, I know how to do the autopilot. Now, I feel like a little bit more of a seasoned professional in that sense. There it is. Me versus you. The air ambulance is here to deliver all of the wounded Jeffs whose pride is hurt from incorrect backseating. How will we repair their souls wounded to the core? Uh, why are you hit sh passing me off like literally now? Keto Tower minus Sierra Alpha Tree one one mile. Chat, we need to accelerate. Minus Yankee Runway Tree Six approach. Minus Sierra Alpha Tree Keto Tower. Cleared ILS Yankee Runway Tree Six approach. Is it just me, or are we kind of going a little too far? I feel like we're really high up in the sky right now. Oh, we're going really fast. We need to shave some speed, chat. Is it time for, uh... Time for some air brakes? I see other people coming in from interesting angles. Clear to land. Alright, we shaved the speed. I'm gonna go ahead and put landing gear down. We are clear to land, chat. We're really high up here. 
they really didn't give me much room as we all expected. Yeah, I'm a little busy. Clear to land runway tree six minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Alright, flaps are down. AP off and wing it, that's what we do. Don't need the spoilers. But I do have flaps. Flaps are maxed, chat. And we're getting some last second turbulence as well. Oh god. Oh my god. What is this turbulence? Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Who's- who is flying into me right now? Members, you are highly valued and will be used as a flotation. Not device now, chat. I'm doing. They're gonna be clipped landing. for all time now. All right. I just did the reverse thrust. I uh, hit the brakes, and we've got the. <sighs> we can turn off the little uh, spoilers. Okay, spoilers are up, and now we just need to tune. Why am I having to tune at the last second? Hello? Anybody? We made it! Alright, we didn't touch down as early as I wanted to, but, um... Better too late than too early. <laughs> as far as that goes. Let me tune ground. And request taxi to parking, please. It's a cool looking parking. airport, man. Minus Sierra Alpha Tree taxi to general aviation parking oh, this is one of the handcrafted Alpha ones. Alpha. Yeah, this is one of the handcrafted ones, I think. We got some uh, other bogeys coming in behind. Minus Welcome Sierra to Quito, Alpha everyone. Alpha. I will acknowledge when I'm good and ready. Taxiing to general aviation parking using taxiway Alpha 2 Alpha minus Sierra Alpha Tree. Aeropuerto Internacional Marisco Sucre de Quito. Gorgeous airport. And a really beautiful spot that I think we'll be able to fully appreciate. Um, sorry, just dodging this plane who cheated to get here. Um, they literally like took off with us and then used the travel function to fast forward to the airport just to try to be on the on the taxiway when we got here <laughs> but yeah you'll be able to appreciate this a little bit more uh, when the sun comes up next time we leave because it is it beautifully positioned inside this valley hey can you guys stop Stopping on the taxiway? Thank you. Okay, God. Five o'clock traffic, am I right, everybody? But see, there's like mountains literally all around it as far as the eye can see. It's just perfectly positioned inside this valley. I was actually a little worried that we were going down too fast. Did you notice how far I flared in order to avoid colliding with the ground? Um, I didn't mean to lose that much altitude that fast. It just kind of happened. But luckily, we touched down extremely soft. And, uh, I'm very happy with how it turned out, considering I had to take kind of autopilot off and take manual control of the situation. This is a really nice looking airport.
and the two have become one. Listen, kids, when two planes love <laughs> Okay. All right, all right, slow down. There we go. Wrong button, nerd. You just put the... My auto... I mean, my, uh... Parking brake is the same... On the same button. Just the other direction. It becomes a Cessna 152. <laughs> Don't you know all planes start out as icons? Icon A5. And when they grow up... Eventually, you'll get to go to middle school like all the other 152s. And then maybe in high school, a 172, if you're lucky. You'll, uh, come out with advanced credit, you know? And you can... You know, some people, I would say the two percentile get to become TBMs, but it's probably not going to be you, honey, okay? You might be stuck as a Papistrol, but there's nothing wrong with being a Papistrol virus. It's an ultralight, and it has a lot of functionality that the other planes just don't have, okay, honey? So be proud of yourself. Not everybody can be a CJ-4 or a Citation Longitude. Taxi to parking. Yep, we already did all that. Okay, so we should just be good to go, I think. There's a cub joke in there somewhere. Back in my day, all us kids were cubs and we liked it. Okay? We didn't have all these fancy pants GPS screens like you all look at every time we go to Thanksgiving dinner watching your GPS instead of using VORs like us when we were young. Is that what they say? Parking man is not saluting you. He wants something. No, he... They're telling me I'm done. They're telling me I can't... I went far enough. I came, I saw, I landed successfully. Good job. The parking brake is on intentionally. Now, I have no idea how you're supposed to spool this down. This is my first time flying the CJ-4, actually. And I think we did a great job landing. I think I could do better on the approach. But the actual touchdown was smooth as butter. Actually smoother than the stunt plane from earlier, which I was not expecting. And also, landing's a little harder because on the CJ, you you don't get a runway 3D visual. So I kind of just had to feel it and, like, look over the, the top of the window to kind of guess how low I was to the ground. So I feel like I'm starting to get a little better at um, kind of imagining how deep the plane is and where the wheels are without having a visual aid. Plus, it's nighttime. We were coming in pretty fast, but I think we slowed down very good. So let's put flaps up. Okay, and uh, oopsie, chat. I think I got to spin the wheel next time because this is the second time in a row that I forgot to turn landing lights on. And I didn't do taxi lights. I was just so excited to land the plane that I forgot about landing in taxi. I was just so nervous about making sure that everything went smoothly. We'll get him next time on that one. Okay, uh, let's... Yeah, how do you turn the engines off? I guess it's a start-stop button. I think it's these. I don't know if there's a better way to do that, but that seems good. Oil pressure? Is that okay when the engines are turning off? One would hope. I don't know, there's not a guide for turning this off. Uh, and then avionics, battery, and generator switches, which defaulted to on. All right, we'll take the avionics. GG, good flight. Oh, I didn't, I'm gonna see who else here. Who's here? Who made it? Let me turn on uh, name tags, let's see. Or who cheated to get here anyway? <laughs> How many of you guys? I already menued out. Well, how dare you? 
See Modus Ponus. I think this is somebody else, but I can't see a name tag. SMS. And there were 12 of you. I think some of you already menued out. But that was a good flight. How's this gonna g game going to work on Xbox? I have no idea. Another one. Motimu. But it was a fun flight. Glad I could finally participate in a community flight. Yeah, what was nice is uh, using a fast plane. You guys like to use the jets anyways. And also not a long flight. Less than an hour and a half. In a cool airport, which I'd like to explore more. This looks like it'd be a fun one to do a passenger flight through. But uh, the next one is definitely a sightseeing flight. Just a neat airport all around. Weird approach, for sure. But look, it just stretches on forever. Cool spot. And uh, the hand this is a handcrafted airport as well. I don't know if it's in the standard game or in one of the other ones, but... They got a lot of cool details out here. A little statue. Uh, comms towers. Employee parking and stuff back there. Maybe some more general aviation. Uh, no gates. Oh, there are the gates. Okay, I was looking at this one. They got a little uh, loading ramp for people. Looks like three, six gates. A lot of different planes from the liveries. Hey, Microsoft Flight Simulator right there on the side. Dude, add. Cool buildings and a cool spot for an airport. But thanks for flying, those of you who did. Dr. Rekt is there. <laughs> Doesn't have a jet, apparently. And maybe a couple other people besides. Do DHL delivering. Caravan flight win. That's the most South American plane that I can think of. Well, good flight, everybody. I assume the rest of you either didn't make it, or you just backed out the menu. Because we started with like a dozen plus people. I saw you at the beginning though. Can you actually fly with a controller in this? You can, but you're going to need a keyboard for certain buttons. But you definitely can. You just need to turn the sensitivity way down. All right, we got a couple of things that we need to take care of. Great Triscuit, thank you for the tier two sub who's back for 29 months. Thanks a lot, Great Triscuit. How you doing today? And good evening. Hey, what's up, Nomac? Map time? It is map time. Yes, the sensitivity menu is oddly just completely missing in action. I don't know why. I'm hoping that they get another patch in soon. Hasn't it been like almost a week since they just did that patch that broke everything? Well, it didn't break everything. It just broke the A320, which everybody likes. And, uh, sensitivity, which is kind of a big deal. There's a patch on the 29th. Really? Well, that's good. That's very nice. All right, we're going to update the map. We got some, uh, pretty big progress here. All right, can you guys see this? There it is. All right, we're using white pens today. The map. The map. Uh, actually, do we need two updates or one? Did we go... I think we already marked Bogota, right? So we go Bogota to... Quito. 
Let's see if we can find Keith, though. We have been marking crashes, but <laughs> I'll just put one red pin in Panama to represent the three crashes, which weren't my fault. And uh, did we do any other crashes? Any bad ones? One that I guess you could say happened in uh, the big rock. Yeah, the big rock. All right, let's do the one in Panama. I think the rock was around there, unless I messed it up. Dude, what if I run out of red pins for all the times we crash? Have you thought about that? What am I gonna do then? Do I just have to buy a bunch of more red pins? pin kind of dominates that <laughs> now you can it's like a orange a red crash and then the white of the new leg yeah we may have been a little overzealous with the length of blue how far we've come heading into South America proper now from Panama some pretty big progress it's a lot of it's a lot of ground to cover chat I mean think about it like this we were going at least a hundred and twenty miles an hour for most of it so if you were just in a car we're talking about dozens of hours <laughs> <laughs> Plus the last jet flight was only an hour and a half. Uh, going like Mach 0.666. So, just in terms of miles, I'm curious how far that is. All flights in real time too? Oh yeah. Started in Vegas, and now we're in South America, using every single plane in the game multiple times. Some fast, some slow. And real time, real weather. Whew, we got one more thing to do though. I only, well, actually, I might have to check something, so let's just do this. I'm going to go check. I probably need to take Midas out because it's been like four and a half hours still. So let's just BRB real quick. Um, come back and play more video games, okay? I'm going to do some more, uh, do some more flying here in a sec. Here's some context. It's a ten and a half hour flight from Toronto, Canada to Sao Paulo. Five hours of it is over Brazil. <laughs> it is big. You can fly in a hurricane? You can't, yeah. Surprisingly, hurricane doesn't really affect planes that much, believe it or not. Because of the height that you're flying at. 
most of the wind is on the ground. Most of the air is on fast on the ground, not really up in the sky. People fly through Hurricanes IRL all the time to uh, get information for the weather. All right, I'll be back in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to take my son out. Now, BRB, okay? Then more video games. Thanks for waiting and thanks for hanging out today. One sec.
guys doing what is going on in here are you memeing in here Okay then, well. Look how big the world is. What? How are you supposed to fly across that? Huh? You'll, we'll see, I guess. We will see. Big. Lots of patience. It'll go faster than you think in some areas, and it'll go slower than you think in others. Considering that uh, the last one was a 16 hour marathon, this is not going to be that. However, here's what we're going to do it's flag time, baby. See what we got. Got a flag here. And I've got a flag here. <laughs> Dad selfie angle. Plastic bags can be dangerous. To avoid danger of suffocation, keep this bag away from babies and children. Disheveled. Or disheveled. Which one is it? Is it disheveled? From the tiara. I mean, it burns into my skull. Also, have the light turned up to like 400% to illuminate the background. So here's what I'm doing I gotta peel this. Which side is forward? A 
Are those command strips instead of nails? You really think I am going to nail flags up to my wall? In general, but specifically in a rental? Yeah, right. Psycho. Imagine not using 3M Velcro command strips. This is not... This is like exactly what they're for. 3M was to like hang stuff on the wall with literally no markings, no residue, no evidence that can be removed whenever you want. This is not gonna, if, if I live here for three years, this isn't gonna be a permanent fixture. Before I press it in, is that one also slanted down? I, th I think they're all slanted down. Hold on. correct I uh, the final one's right yeah that one's right and then there's one more now here's the problem uh, we've got no it's not a problem actually this is Colombia I do not have the Ecuador flag, but that's okay because we're just... I couldn't get it. It was like $40, dude. I'm... Listen, the flags are cool. <laughs> I'm not going to spend $40 for a made in Taiwan Ecuador flag. All right. Made in Taiwan. You know how much these flags were? $8. I can buy five flags for that much money. Look how much yellow there is. That is like half of it is yellow, then blue and red. That's cool. Alright, I need one more of these. And I don't know where it is. I'm gonna run out of 3M strips before I run anything else. Gotten smaller flags. These are these were the smaller ones. They have like 
five feet flags for hanging outside. These are just the two by threes. Two by three feet didn't seem that big. Can't wait for someone to show up in four days and tell you your flags are backwards. They're not, they can't be backwards. Because the, all the tags, see look, there's a tag. If you put the tag on the front, you're a barbarian. So I know for a fact that it goes this way. For sure. Welcome aboard, Etal Air. <laughs> They're upside down. Uh, yeah. They are. They're sideways. Okay. Besides geography chat, is what all the country's flags look like. It'd probably be cool to see what they represent, too. Now, from here, I gotta make a decision. Do we go over here? I think I'm just gonna go like this. Why didn't I go to the ceiling? There's not- there's gonna be room for like, nine flags at most. Dude, what about the ceiling? What if I could like, pin them to the ceiling and, and have them all like, hanging up? Start at the bottom and pin upwards. Here's the thing, with 3M strips, I can just move them off stream. You can fit 15 flags on that one wall, so what do I do once I get out of South America? I'm just kidding. Alright, I say... Maybe just hang up one continent at a time? Maybe. I think the starting below and going up works. They don't have to be in chronological order, they just have to exist. gonna move the original four flags off stream and I'm gonna do it like you said because you can definitely if you use all the space above and a slight bit of overlap then uh, I can easily fit at least 12 flags right there if I go behind the door even more I didn't think about that You know it's there. 
We're gonna I'm gonna move all four of those off stream. What is this dad gum you are smart command? Who made that? When was this made? Was this made today? This was made today, because it's not on Nightbot. Who did this? Naga made it a while ago. Oh, it's exclamation smart. For some reason, I thought it was exclamation dagum, which is funnier. Joel says it to Ellie one time. Okay. I did not know that. Here we go. Alright, so I'm clearly gonna have to move the flags. That much we can all agree. Now! I don't remember making that. I usually make commands like that after a few <laughs> beers. Big people happy. <laughs> uh oh. The dog is here. <laughs> Well, they were probably a good few beers. Speaking of a few beers. Maybe I should get me a beer, chat. We all appreciate your dedication to Nightbot spam. Lilith Frey, thank you for seven months of sub. Chat, thanks for putting up with uh, me moving all the flags around. Uh, I'm gonna do the other ones off stream. No, don't you worry. Okay, don't you worry. <laughs> Found the tomato sub that uh, can't spell beer. You guys want to do some landing challenges? When is alcohol from around the world? Alcohol around the world. That's a pretty good uh, idea. It's pretty solid. Oh my god, Tux, do you have any solutions for raging diarrhea? Found the Germa sub. Drunk stream incoming. May, I mean, it's, it's happened before. Thank you, Little Frey, once again. We're going to hit up, um... What's the spot? Let's do this. You think I can get a high score? 1.9 million points. Okay. No way. I'll settle for like, um, top hundo. Top two hundo. Let's see what we can do. Are we, are we, um, first of all, I need to change the title. This is now... New high scores. There we go. That way people don't get baited. But yeah, that's probably all the around the world we can do. But that doesn't mean we can't still do fun stuff. I love these challenge landings. Plus, it's, it's what you like. Okay, chat just wants instant gratification. They want takeoffs and landings, and by God, this is the mode that gives it to you. Instantaneous landings. Landings all the time. 
It doesn't matter what place you get, just as long as you can say you're on the leaderboards. No, it doesn't matter what place I get, as long as I know I'm better than chat. And I got a higher score than you. So the Bonanza, um, I only have like one flight experience with this, and I remember it was bugged. Pito heat is off. I promise it'll probably be fine. It's a little windy today, yeah? Eight knots of wind? Is that typical for this challenge? Get a few style points. I saw a couple of videos of people doing stunts through the city. They were like flying through the buildings. That actually scared me because the sound went away. Maybe we'll try a building stunt one, but first I gotta see if I can actually land. That would be step one. The Bonanza's cool, but I don't know if they ever patched it or not. Okay, so we should just be landing right here. Nice has a beautiful approach, though. Got the whole city over here. Built into the hills. Airport, strangely, just over the water. Oops, you went too far. Splash. I recognize this airport. I am not surprised to hear that. Wow, we have a really low approach. Like, very low. Too low. But that's okay. They're only grading us on how we land, not on how we approach. This doesn't look very challenging. The challenge is not not dying. The challenge is <laughs> landing well. Not well, a little bit of a bounce there, but uh, that's the wrong runway. So it is. So it is. Good landing, though. This doesn't seem challenging. You have failed. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't seem very hard. You've literally got zero points. <laughs> yeah, that was just a warm up. It's all good. Torning 2R, dude. What does that even mean? Put those flaps back up. We're gonna take a different approach, chat. You think I can't stunt to this uh, airport for extra style points? I definitely can. The hard part is just you gotta actually trim this plane. Nice is awesome, though. It doesn't feel like a real city. This just feels like um, an imaginary place that somebody created specifically for the video game. The topography is so steep. 500. 500. We're going on a little adventure. You guys want to go on an adventure? <laughs> this is doable, right? <laughs> I'm 
This is doable. No. Did you see that car cross the highway right there? Just keep your wingtip up and you're good to go. <laughs> Looks like some city skylines traffic in here. I have no idea where I'm going, by the way. I'm kind of just feeling it out. I don't know what lies in store for us over any given hill. Wow, some steep hills. Take a turn. Baby. Where is the airport again, chat? <laughs> uh, where the, hey, where's the airport? Does anybody know where it is? Oh, I think it's this way. Yep, it's over here. This looks good. Woo! I knew what I was doing the whole time. Very under control. I don't know why you doubted me. Alright, is this the correct... Uh, this is the one, right? Yeah, this is the one. The flaps are... Oh, they were locked up. That makes a lot more sense. Alright, so we want to touch down in the blue, which is hard. For maximum score, line it up. A little soon. Ah, A little soon. Not going to be my best attempt. Touchdown way too early. Still not quite a million points. Not quite a mil. We can do better. Got to practice your aerobatics. That was pretty fun. Just zipping around through the city. 26,000 Omega Law. How many people you think are playing this? <laughs> Hey, what's up, T. Jansen? How's it going? No style <laughs> multipliers. Gotta play some Tony Hawk for that. I want to figure out how to use the rudders to spin without losing altitude. Because I'm pretty sure that's possible. If I spin this way and roll this way, that's just really slow. Okay, what if I, what if I rudder the same direction I'm spinning? seemed fairly tight, but it's hard to say. Oh, flaps are down, dude. That probably not helping your roll. That seems reasonable. 500. 500. Five hundred. Can we do anything fun in here? This looks like a nice play place. What do you, looks pretty uh, congested, actually, in hindsight. Where are the cool roads we can go down? Gotta find a line. Like this one. Alright, well that one ends very prematurely. There's no way you can make that turn to the right. It's so much fun though. Like, honestly, the plane physics are just so good, especially with the flight stick. Like, if you got a, a yoke or a joystick... Dude, I'm looking forward to playing squadrons too, for that same reason. Squadrons is gonna be crazy. VR in squadrons would absolutely make me motion sick. There's no way. 4D space. All axes. Ooh, the lightning. All right. You ready? That's 
really hard. All right, that's really hard. <sighs> have I played Ace Combat? No, I have not. The spin was good. The recovery from the spin was not. Ace Combat's on the list, though. The last Ace Combat looks like it'd be fun for just like a campaign story. All right, this one's just going to be The Landing, okay? Vanilla. Let's see if we can get a good score. I just kind of wanted to fly around. So what's the, like... I mean, I understand the concept. You just push away. I think we should have quite enough room because this isn't that tough to, like, maintain. And it seems fairly nimble. Streaming, I've already bananaed this stream. You have some thanks. What brings you back at this hour? What's up, Smile for Fun? Everybody omega lolling. All right, get ready to omega lol a one million point landing. Okay, I'm not gonna give you any reason to laugh. At least a million points. Hello, niece. All right, I gotta get over a million points, and then we'll try a different one. One million, you messed up a mega, omega lol. Sit up in the chair. Flaps all the way down. Landing gear is also down. We're gonna be bleeding speed. Windy. We do have like eight knot winds. I think we're coming in a little low. Give us some juice. There we go. Million points. I told you all. I called it. Well, make a little vet. That's a top 17,032 score right there. Uh, smoothness, room for improvement. Ground roll, pretty good. Precision, pretty damn good. That's that's pretty high. Details right there, number one. I think we could do better. One, one last one, last one. I'm happy with that though. Now get number one. <laughs> how many times do you think? Okay, assuming they didn't cheat or hack, how many times do you think it took to get like top 100? How many times did they sit here and go, no, 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 I can do better. Only an average town in Minnesota amount of people beat you. It's pretty good. An average town in Minnesota. I mean, an average town in Minnesota is certainly not the best that the United States has to offer. <laughs> Just kidding. We can do better. <laughs> I mean, that's, they're basically Canadians, right? Minnesota is easily a top 10 state, all right? If it's a top 10 state, of what? Hmm. 
like, what are they top 10 in? Accents? Okay. Top 10 accents. Hockey? Do they have a, a competing professional team? Or do they just have a lot of ice? Tater tot casseroles. You can get those anywhere. Minnesota Wild. All right, landing gears down. We got flaps, tier one. How come it always looks like you're so much lower in third person view than first person view looks like I am way up in the sky? I mean, I am. We got four white lights, which means my glide slope is terrible. So we're going to shave a whole bunch of height real quick with full flaps. All right, stop reading chat about Minnesota and focus on getting 1.5 million points, chat. My glide slope is actually just awful. I like vertical takeoff and landing, okay? Uh, this is intentional. Obviously intended. That was part of the landing that I was definitely trying to do. I just wanted to see if I could float it on in there like a helicopter. That's all. <clears throat> One more try. One more. Real quick. <laughs> that was that was almost off the, the charts in Z-Road. All right, is Minnesota... Okay, the first... This is not a lie. If you type in is Minnes, M-I-N-N-E-S, the suggested result is, is Minnesota a state? So if, you, if the first question is, is it even a state, could you really be a top 10 state if that's the first suggested result? <laughs> I think so, maybe. <laughs> Minnesota rankings and facts, okay? It is, it turns out it is a top 10 state. You're technically correct. Chat, according to usnews.com, Minnesota is number three best state, period. I, I guess it is. It depends on who you ask. I, I'm going to say uh, that, the, that a Minnesotan wrote that. Listen, chat, though, Minnesota, I don't know if I can trust them. They're number 25 in fiscal stability, okay? They're just wasting all their money on, like, hockey sticks. And, uh, I don't know, snow machines. It was me. I wrote that. Okay, natural environment number three. That's, like, cheating, though, okay? Minnesota is an extremely advantaged state when it comes to natural environment. That's just called dumb luck. They didn't do anything to deserve that. We have lakes. I know, you've got a bunch of lakes, but guess what? Your lakes, you can't live in those. So what does that have to do with your state rating? Like, I can't come live in Minnesota because of the lakes. Top 50 states, you won't believe number three. True. All right, come on. We got to do good this time. We got to do good. Come on, Pappy Lights. Give me a good glide slope. We're getting really low this time, so we can just kiss the ground whenever we want to, okay? We're just going to kiss the ground when we want to. There we go. This is the glide slope. This is the one. Too red, too white, too white, too red, too red, too white. Okay? That's the one. Honestly, I don't even think we need full flaps. I think full flaps is what's screwing us up. We're 
We're sinking too fast. All right, that was a soft touchdown. Maybe a little too much wobble from the center. Didn't touch down where I wanted to. It was still a nice, that was a 1.25 million play. That pushed me up into the top 12 and a half thousand. So I'll take that. That's still a higher score than we had last time, okay? We just beat our previous best. Do you think the top 10 are hacking? No, they're probably just really good. The top score is like just two mil. All right, that's enough. We beat our we beat our last best next one. The bonanza's bugged. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, all right, what else? All right, you know what's weird? Who? Minnesota, number three in overall rankings. They're not... What's weird about state rankings is you just have to have the overall best, i.e. like generalized best. They are number three in opportunity and number three in environment. Okay, the next highest one is number six, infrastructure. Then it shoots to 10, which is healthcare. But what I'm saying is like, I love how it's number three just collectively, even though their best is two number threes. So like on average, Okay, if you take all the averages, which this is not how this works at all, I know, but I'm just, it's just because it's funny. If you take these numbers, add them together, then divide to get the average of all their ranking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Divide by eight. They're actually 12.25th in the nation, okay? Not even top 10. See, I told you they weren't top 10. <laughs> Who's number one? Best state's overall rankings. Number one, Washington State. Number two in infrastructure. Number 22 in fiscal stability. So top states are terrible with their money. Is what I'm learning. Number two, New Hampshire who is number one in opportunity, number one in crime and corrections. Okay, it's easy to have good crime and corrections when your population um, is the size of a small city in a flyover state. Total population of New Hampshire, 1.34 million. All right, wow. No crime here, also no people here, but that's just a coincidence. Number four, Utah, which is number two in economy. I want to see how far down the list Nevada is. <laughs> um, keep scrolling. <laughs> it's number 37. All right. There's no way Nevada is... Only number four in infrastructure? Yeah, right. Absolutely a lie. Thirty-seven out of fifty. <laughs> uh. All right. C C B CNBC says number one state for infrastructure is Texas, which I've driven through and that's actually terrible. Their first statement is no state handles more of America's cargo than Texas. Is cargo the number one rate for infrastructure? That doesn't even make any sense. Well, it's all because you have Dal Dallas Fort Worth is not Texas, okay? You can't just rank. Texas has like five or six major metropolitan areas. And half of them suck. California Opportunity rank 49. I give you economy. Like, if you want to rank Texas economy way up there, sure. 
But infrastructure, absolutely not. All right, let's do, um... Imagine giving the, like, number one infrastructure award to the state with the most cities that they just made up as they went along. Nobody planned them. They, it's the most sprawled out area of the nation I've ever been to. They just keep adding on because they have so much space. It's just all horizontal. There's no planning. Everything is just made up on the spot. All right, activities. Wowee, Washington is so high up. Kyra Toby, you see something you like? What are these bush trips, actually? This might be fun. Breckenridge to Mariposa, Yosemite. How long are these? Flight duration, 9 hours and 32 minutes. Is that for real? Number of legs, 25? Wait, is this a legit nine and a half hour? Airport to airport? That's kind of cool, actually, because you can do it one leg at a time. It's got 25 legs, so if you do the math... On average, 9 times 60 plus 32 divided by 25 is only 22 minutes per leg. That's pretty neat. Might do one of those, actually. But first, let's do some more landing challenges. How many states can we get Etel to insult tonight? This is great. More whiskey, more fun. I haven't had a single drink of whiskey. The whiskey has nothing to do with how bad most of the states are. Famous, epic, or strong wind? Insult mine next. No state is perfect. They're all easy targets. None more so than Florida. Oh, well, yeah. Florida. Everybody knows Florida sucks. It's a meme for a reason. Not that there's not good things in it, but that's true of anybody, okay? You can find the most awful person on the planet and say there's at least one good thing about you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh. Listen, the best part of Florida is that when when they were making the states, they tucked that one as far into the corner as they could, like my dirty laundry when I'm trying to avoid doing the chores. You know what I mean? It's It's one step away from just being swept under the rug. That is the Atlantic. It's that close. You tried to hide it, but your mom came in and still saw that you needed to clean up before company came over. You tried to push it in uh, and hide it amongst all the other little states, but there it is, sticking out like an eyesore. Name one good thing about Hitler right now. Okay, he's easy. He's dead. Done. Famous epic or strong winds? Which one? Epic? Okay. We've done some of the epic ones already because you guys always meme epic. We've done Tegucigalpa. We've done Saba. We've done Nepal. Um, I don't remember what ones we have or haven't done. We'll definitely do the A320 even though we may have already done it just because you guys will... I mean, it's A320. You gotta... I, I wouldn't mind hopping back in for fun. I don't know if we've done St. Bartholomew. I don't think we've done this one. That's a TBM, right? This is a really cool um, landing spot. First, let's do a little bit of research before we jump into this. We watched a video that was similar to this, but not this one. This is a different landing, different airport. <laughs> uh, here we go. St. Bart Airport landing close up and scary.
So check this out. First of all, let me show you where it is. Scope it out. St. Bartholomew. Down here by Marigot and Phillipsburg. There's actually a couple of Marigots around. There is an important one in Dominica, which I have been to. Looks like there's another one up here. Speaking of Florida, if you play hopscotch and head through the Bahamas, you will end up past Cockburn Tower, the capital of the Turks, and Caicos Island. Is that Caicos? The colonial era, Her Majesty's Prison retains its cells and exercise yards for the local Jeffs. Island history exhibits at the Turks and Caicos National Museum. Caicos. You had to write that in all caps. Caicos! Okay, so is that the correct pronunciation? Do I need to put the emphasis in Caicos? All right, so it's pronounced Caicos in all caps. The colonial era, Her Majesty's Prison is a, a beautiful place to be. You would know, chat. So check this out. This is where we're about to land. Nice car, by the way. I like that car. Like a, like a golf car <laughs> that you upgraded. <laughs> Hi, I'm a plane. I'm coming in for a landing, if you don't mind. <laughs> Did he have to go around? I think he had to do a go-around. <laughs> it takes a brave person to just stand here. Do you think the pilots are annoyed by the people that just stand directly under where they're supposed to be coming in? I would be. Be like, there's another guy here, dude. Now I ha now I have to have him. It's like a guy on the train tracks. Um, the the they, they have to have that on their mind. Like if I do something wrong, I've killed someone. I was just trying to fly an airplane. He okay, finally moved over to the side. This is a good helicopter approach here. Did they build the airport before the hill? I don't know. <laughs> they have to land this way because if they screw it up, they can keep going. But if they did it the other way, if you screw it up, you slam into the hill. Dude, I see all the grand caravans. I'm peeking at them. I love that the car... It's not just a guy standing here. It's just regular traffic. Nobody's paying it any mind. There's just a plane coming in. Look at that drift. That crosswind. About to crab it up. He's think he's thinking right now, can I touch down or do I do I keep going? Coming to some breaks real quick before you hit the beach. Why would you put an airstrip there? Because they gotta get to the island. People gotta go. That's a chunky lad. Dude, that's me! It was actually a pretty nice landing. All right, so that's where we're going. Right here. The real trick is the approach obscured behind a hill that forces pilots into an extremely steep descent. Runway length is only 2,100 feet. Top score in the world is 1.86 million. Flight conditions, every single flight condition is stormy for no reason. Is that the only flat spot on the entire island? I guess so. Can you reverse the TBM? They gave me a really fast plane too.
Uh, Big Buzzy Boy says, when you get back to the U.S., are you going to visit all the states? No. <laughs> uh, I want to know if I should get a stinky Florida postcard or not. You can still get one. But we are definitely not. That would be 50 flights, potentially. That'd be a lot. Well, minus whatever we've already been to. Okay, so step one is going to be, I don't know where the airport actually is. They gave me a heading and then I instantly forgot it. The TBM is a fun little plane. Not as nimble, but very powerful. Okay, so, I don't remember what my heading is supposed to be. We don't have an approach. So I'm just gonna do a little noom to see what we're working with. So we're just gonna do a little flyover real quick first. So they know it's gonna sneak up on us. And they got the sun in my eyes, just to be cute. I can't even see. Yeah, I hear you, but I don't know where the strip is. It's got to be like literally right here. Yeah, this is it. I mean, we can just go for it. Seems like a dumb idea. But we, I mean, why not? We can just restart. Okay, so the approach is like east, basically. <laughs> oh my god, I can't even like I can't even line that up. Oh my Stall. Just go. Dude, they got like a cruise ship out here too. I didn't know they had boats and stuff. That's pretty cool. But there was no way I was gonna make that. That's really neat. I wish they had those in like the Panama Canal. If they could like make that shine a little bit more. Cool little area. They definitely touched this up. I can see why. It's a pretty famous uh, airfield. Technically didn't crash. This is still the same attempt for all intents and purposes. Gotta get the trim up. We don't really need to be going this fast. Yeah, you already got uh, flaps back. This plane's so cool. We've only gotten to fly it the one time. I'm looking forward to the next one. Like the next major flight that we got. No shame in a go-around. Not, not in this landing, no. First Ital Air, next Ital Cruise. We were joking about it, having a Microsoft boat simulator. I wonder when they're going to get the other stuff. Chat said that they're going to have, like, air balloons and blimps and stuff in this game eventually. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> Especially with the visuals, the way they are, going up in an air balloon. Who knows, maybe more. Besides. Alright, is that it? I can't really get a feel for how I'm supposed to be coming in. I think, like, right here. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think we need to glide on over. Alright, let's give it a go. We're still coming in a little hot, but the flaps are going to bleed a little bit before we have to touch down here. Okay, flaps are full down. Got the sun in my face. I'm basically full idle. I'm worried about the trees, as I'm sure most pilots are when they're coming through this. Also, it's hard to avoid. Oh god.
Not bad for a first try. Not bad for a first attempt. At least it was a smooth touchdown. Almost one mil on the first attempt. It's a top uh, 6,000 right there. Landing precision was bad, but the ground roll and smoothness was pretty good. <laughs> At least there's not some idiot with a camera in your way. Yeah. Nobody else is doing the challenges on my friends list. I only have, to be fair, I forgot this is not Steam friends. I don't have any friends <laughs> on the game. So that's why no one shows up. <laughs> I was like, I know I know at least a few Steam friends that are playing this. <sighs> Feels bad, man. Let's do it again. Really fun, though. How to hit the blue. How to hit the blue. Going for number one. Dude, how crazy would it be? If I got first place, and I'm not even trying. Where is Italic streaming from? I'm right behind you. Don't turn around. I'm on your computer. I mean, can you see my room? Right? You can see it, yeah? So just aim for the lowest point in the hill. Go ahead and flaps down number one. See, if you just aim for that low point right there between the two um, slopes, that's the target. Landing gear down. Flaps all the way. And I'm kind of having to just like... figure out how to line it up en route. Oh, we're going way too slow right now. About to be stalling. Okay, just give it back when you're done. The computer? <laughs> this approach is really scary. The sun does not help. Okay. I don't hate this. Tree. Oh god, the wobble. <sighs> the blue is so hard to get. Blue is so tough to get, but that was smooth, too. I like it. Plenty of clearance. Higher score? All right. Top 1,000 in the world. 1.19 million. 620, baby. Not bad. These are just so out of reach. Like, just in the top 1,000. Just in the top 10. Going from... I mean, this is a 100,000 point jump. One more. If I can just get on the blue, that's the hardest part. We might get a higher score from that. Top 1,000 in the world. This is actually the highest I've got on any leaderboard yet. Okay, flaps are back up. A Newmon in there. Everyone better than you is hacking at this point, yes. Fun plane, though. The real problem is I keep accidentally, um... turning the rudder. These pedals are a little sensitive. Alright, let's get Flaps Tier 1 down as we bank... banking a little earlier. I think we can kind of use these islands to line up and approach, almost. They almost make a straight line. I think you need to be to the left of them, though.
Okay, yeah, we need to be way to the left of them. Landing gear. Landing gear. I hear ya. I hear ya, don't worry, we got plenty of, of space. We got plenty of time. Already at 105 knots. Gotta watch out when you have to nose up to clear these trees. That's the hard part. Okay, I like this approach. Watch the, the red line down there on the speed for the stall. You definitely don't want that. Try and steady this up. Oh god, I don't like this. Something feels off. Feels bumpy, chat. I was trying to be more aggressive, uh, to hit the blue. I don't know if it gave me a better or worse landing. Way worse. <laughs> Smoothness way down. I think precision way up. I was trying. Nice wave graphics on those islands. Yeah, let's do a different one. I'm pretty happy with top 1000. That's really fun though. I think it was still a pretty nice landing. I wouldn't have been mad at that if we had the actual, like if that was a, a real flight for around the world. All right, let's do... Let's do... Famous? Or strong wind. done Ireland, and I think we've done the Bahamas. Let's do this Portugal one. A320, strong wind, uh, strip 9,126 feet, the Portuguese archipelago of, is it Madeira or Madeira? Cristiano Ronaldo Madeira International Airport is a marvel of structural engineering with its runway perched on a foreland jutting out into the sea. Considered one of the most peculiarly perilous airports in the world due to this extreme positioning and that says nothing of the added challenge when severe offshore winds rise up. Madeira, sort of. I haven't flown an A320 in so long that this is going to be a terrible landing. I can already see it. But that's what makes it exciting. 30, we have 25 knot winds coming at you directly against you on the whole approach. So we should be at about 140 knots by the time we're at this point. Huh, this is cool. I guess the engine's gonna work. It is six o'clock in the morning local time. Oh boy, what just happened? Chat, my screen just went off. Uh... We didn't need that, right? Hardcore mode. Feels good to get back in the A320, though. Over speed. What? Over speed. Over I, well, I can't tell, because you turned off my graphic, dude. Over speed. What? Dude, I don't know what's going on. 
That's my- that's how I check to see how fast I'm going. This is not a- this is actually hardcore mode. I have to see my speed by this. We're so low to the ground? Why am I not- Why am I like falling to the earth? Is auto throttle doing this? That angle of attack? Yeah, but I'm not losing any speed, so I have a feeling that auto throttle's kicked in. <laughs> the angle's insane. What's what's the airspeed doing? Like I genuinely don't understand. I didn't push a single button. This this happened as soon as I loaded in this particular one. All right, we got. Man, it's fighting me the whole way, chat. I'm putting up spoilers to try and lose speed. Landing gears down. I have to check my speed on the third person view because I, I don't know what it's doing. It's the wind. The wind's hitting the pito, I think. Oh, this is gonna be sloppy, dude. I'm not even coming in at a good approach. I can't pull up. I can't pull up! <laughs> Why I was pulling all the way back and nothing was going on. <sighs> Boink. I've landed an A320 before and it's never done. It's never just fallen like a rock. I also have no idea why the screen turned off the first go round. All right, at least now I have airspeed indicator inside the plane, which seems stable. Wait, no, it doesn't. Dude, I haven't flown the A320 in like a real flight in so long. Auto thrust is still confusing as hell. It really is. Yes. Uh, the answer is you're you're not supposed to idle the throttle until less than a hundred feet. Then you full idle, and then it kills. It automatically disconnects. It may not be exactly a hundred feet, but it's around there. So we're gonna go one step further on flaps now. Try and start shaving some of that speed as we go down. Uh, the reason why this is is going so crazy is because this is how speed is measured, the pito. It measures based on the air that's hitting it. So what's happening is we're fighting 30 knot winds, like 25 knot winds. So it's giving us different readings based on when the gust of wind hits the pito. No, I'm not I'm not trying any add-ons, Kelly Muchess. I just don't like downloading and updating. I'd rather just wait for the patch. This is just a challenge mode. We're not doing this for around the world. This is just a little challenge flight. Alright, landing gear down. I think flaps are almost full down. We got a lot of height here that I need to shave. It looks fine looking at this. Look at the crosswind, by the way. <laughs> I'm pointed left. But I'm drifting right. <laughs> and I'm really high. So let's uh maybe shave more speed. Oh my god. I see why I drop like a rock. Because I'm kind of just floating in there right now. I'm gonna put the spoilers down. I really am just kind of falling in there. All right, flaps are full down. 
I'm worried the same thing's gonna happen as last time. Don't idle yet. Technically not dead, chat. Woo, that was a big bounce. I uh, might need to see the chiropractor after this flight. <laughs> uh, didn't even do reverse thrust. <laughs> Hey, you guys want to do a challenge where you see what the lowest on the leaderboard you can get is? <laughs> What's the best technical landing where you didn't lose, but you see how, what the lowest possible score you can get is? <laughs> 50... 56,462 is my lowest score yet. <laughs> Uh, popping a wheelie on the runway. Okay, here's why it's hard. Because, here, again, this is the windy challenge. This is literally why it's that difficult. Because we're gliding in, there's 30 knot winds hitting us. So, by the time I finally get under 100 feet, I have no control over elevation anymore. Because I'm literally just flying on the wings of an angel, wherever the wind decides to drop me. So, I gotta come in faster, lower... Faster and lower, I think. So let's start shaving um, altitude right now. All right, I'll try. I'm trying to get an actual score. I really am. I think auto throttle is doing something. Smoothness thirty-seven. It's pretty good, man. All right, let's go lower and faster. I think that's the play. We're starting too high. We got plenty of space to get a better glide slope, okay? So once we line this up, we've already got flaps. Uh, the flaps were already almost maxed by default. Over speed. Okay, this is already pretty low. We're gonna take the flaps down again, back to where they were. I mean, we're already, according to indicated airspeed, we're at 180 knots. True airspeed is not even close to that. Um, true airspeed is 158. So I guess it is, but it's just bouncing around. How does he see his screen if he's looking down? Because my eyeballs rotate inside my head. And I'm looking at the thing I want to look at. Alright, this is the part where we throttle up, flaps down. Don't beep at me. Not even close, dude. Not even close, chat. This is beautiful, though. Alright. Shave altitude now. Stop looking at the scenery. Throw up those spoilers to stop the overspeed. Start pulling up. I hear you. God, it's so easy to go too high. 300. 200. 140. Here we go again! Oh! <laughs> Why? At the last second, it just loses all control 
with like 400 feet. Welcome aboard, Etal Air. And I can't pull up anymore. Was I? I wasn't going fast enough. But I'm almost going over speed. That sink rate. <laughs> I know. Uh, Commander Cornflake says crash for 29 months. But I would recommend this to everybody that has the game, dude. This is the fun part. Is like, these are challenge modes specifically for you to play in situations that you're not normally ever going to play in. So, the whole point is you can get in here, restart, and keep doing the same landing less than three minutes per attempt. Until you understand what's going wrong. But yeah, the angle of attack is crazy. I'm just dropping like a rock at the very end. Chat, did you, have you guys done this one? Post your high score. Let me see. Let me see some imagers. Pog roller coaster simulator. <laughs> See, we're already hitting over speed here. Which I'm trying to avoid, so I want to come in low again. That's basically max flaps. So we kind of want to stay off of max, at least for now. I haven't done this challenge yet. You guys got one point? That's really good. Good job, guys. Keep trying. You'll do better. I love that uh, the first bounce didn't kill us, but whatever happened after that bounce did. That was the funniest part to me. You guys want to fly the A320 through that little uh, ravine right there? All right, here we go. Again. I know, dude, but I think I just have to throw caution to the wind and say ignore the overspeed. Woo! Alright, try taking flaps up. Maybe flaps up, but spoilers down might help. Alright, flaps back down. We're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be the same thing, I guarantee it. I'm just gonna try just landing instead of trying to hit the blue. Still big bounce, dude. Holy crap. Game's hard. Still a huge bounce. Game is hard. See that <laughs> one one point. <laughs> hey, we got the same score of one. <laughs> hold ow, hold on. Dude, I can do this. I need an actual score though. I'm not moving on until I get an actual score.
Okay. So for those of you... So... So for those of you who got here late... We need to restart because auto throttle just took over because my throttle was too low from the previous attempt. And I don't feel like doing the disengage. Tox, my last message might help on your approach. Oh, interesting. So we have a confessed backseater in chat. I have a pro tip, get whiskey. Is imager allowed for potential results? Uh, yeah, if you're a sub, you can post your imager. Add it to the list. That is number 57. We're approaching 60. No, auto throttle is just engaged for some reason. What's going on? Oh, it's me. It was me. Auto throttle's not engaged. I did that. I did that. It was me. What is that, rotating? I don't know what you're asking. Next to the throttle sticks. Oh, that's the trim. So basically, uh, the A320 and the other passenger liners have automatic trim. So, really, if you just hold it steady, pointed at where you want it to go, the plane automatically keeps the trim such that you're not going to nose up or nose down. You know what I mean? It's trying to keep us steady with whatever I'm doing. Get landing gear. Yeah, uh, Ace Tech. The problem is, this is just a fun challenge mode, and I don't need any back seating. So you've you've expressed in detail exactly why they were timed out. Offering unsolicited help for a for funsies. Um, challenge mode. <laughs> that is literally why. <laughs> By the way, after asking if they could, so they said, hey, do you, is it okay if I, uh, back seat? And then they blew through the stop sign and did it anyway. So there was uh, intention and malice that can be proved. Also, not a good rap sheet. All right, we can go lower. We're gonna blow past 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard, try it. A little sloppy, but that was the closest to the blue I've gotten. It's getting better. It's getting better. A little bit wild to the sides. But I'm trying to like touch down sooner. So we don't get one point. That was almost a million. That put me in the top 1,500. We went from one point in landing precision to almost the highest score you could get in a single attempt. <laughs> uh, ground roll was where we goofed. That was when we almost wildly scraped the wing on the pavement. So if we could fix the ground roll and do that landing precision again... That could be, like, a really high score. Smoothness was fine. Little bounce. 
But yeah, the left to right. It's, well, that's the whole point of the challenge. It's 30, almost 25 not wins coming at you. So, because of those wins, we're coming in basically crooked and uh, have to make adjustments very fast. I also remember to do reverse thrust, but I don't know how much it mattered. All right, I'm kind of addicted to this one. This one's really fun because it's just so hard. And the A320 is fun in itself. So what you're saying is, chat, um, this view the entire way. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. We'll try and do that view for the landing gear because I think it'll look sweet. I'm going to flaps up one and then start lowering. That way we can actually use the speed that we're getting. I heard that spooling down. I didn't know if it was me or auto throttle being annoying. I think it's auto throttle. Yep. I was not getting the power I wanted. Hey, Tal, can I offer you some advice on what not to do? Okay, great. Don't get drunk and pee your pants a little like I just did. <laughs> Too late. Too late, I already did. Alright, let's shave some speed. Get those flaps down. Get that sweet landing gear view, which I've never used for this, but now I understand what it's for. Okay, lining this up is going to be fun. Not sure how I feel about full flaps. We're going to find out in a moment. So white's too high, right? Four white lights equals your two high. All right, there's one red. Start pulling up for the second one. Oh, the bounce! Oh my God, such a high bounce! I didn't, I didn't idle. Woo! <laughs> hey, we made it! All right, everybody, everybody back there feeling good. I'm feeling good, guys. That was wild. Did you guys see that? We got picked up by like a 40 knot wind there. It was gnarly riding that wave, everybody. Thank you all for being a part of that with me. That's right, 87,000, still higher than my lowest score. <laughs> all right, we can do another one. That one I want to do that one again, though. I do, because that one's fun. All right, activities menu. Do a different one. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't hit the wing. <laughs> I touched down where I wanted to, just not at the slope that I wanted to. Let's do a famous one. Let's do... Dude, this is where we just landed, I think. We just landed here. You guys want to see what it looks like landing here during the day? Because I think we landed here at night with the jet. And we just did Nice. Yeah, let's do let's do the one we just did. It's gonna be a completely different experience. 
This is one of the busiest airports in Ecuador and one of the busiest in South America, located near the Ecuadorian capital of Quito. The airport offers a relatively straightforward approach, but with a runway elevation of 7,874 feet, pilots will be wise to keep a close eye on their aircraft performance. I've been on a plane that's landed that hard. Well, maybe they were coming in at 30 knot headwinds. <laughs> Cryohazard, thank you for the bits, by the way, who says, thanks for helping me get through quarantine and tell your streams have really helped. Well, I'm glad you're having fun. Uh, I am right there with you. <laughs> Not really going anywhere. So I feel you guys' pain. And also your claustrophobia. Commander Cornflakes is back for 29 months with who said crash. I read it, but thank you for the sub. Anyways. Much appreciated. Yeah, this is a totally different environment. We got to see the night lights. Now we get to see the daytime. These landing challenges are honestly so fun. I hope they add even more variety up to them in the future. Not like it's a top priority, mind you, but it just really is so much fun. Wow, is this what this was looking like? I guess this is what this was looking like before as we careen to our death. Where's the airport? Yeah, look at those valleys. Such a difference in height and elevation. The frame rate here is not great. But, uh, I will make do. Why is my landing gear already down? 500. Airport chat. It's hard to see this low. Uh oh. Well, it's been nice knowing you all. Thank you all for flying Etel Air. I have been enjoying your comp. That was embarrassing. <laughs> About that aircraft performance. <laughs> Turns out the air's a little thinner up here. <laughs> uh, oopsie. <laughs> hey guys, it looks like your pilot uh, just did a little oopsie there. All right, that's the airport, yeah? Oh, the frames, I can count them. That's the airport. All right, so here's what we need to do. Am I icing up? Is that the pro? What's going on? Uh, where's the King Air ice, chat? Did I do it? Was that it, the issue? What's the temperature outside? I don't know. The frame rate is 18. <laughs> Maybe the temperature is negative 18, I don't know. The problem was I, as soon as I take off flaps, we stall. What's... Really? No flaps equals stall from this height? That's insane. It was not this hard coming in, I guess because we were in a jet. Chad, I'm gonna die again. I don't know what to do. I'm just going down only. What do I do? How do I stay airborne? Stall. 
My flaps are all the way down, and I'm just sinking. I'm at full throttle, and... Dead. Uh, are the prop RPM and condition levers defaulted to the right spot? Like a hundred percent? I'll look. <sighs> Cause I'm just sinking. Cause yeah, I was gonna say, I've flown the King Air before and this is a really strong plane. So the fact that it full RPM or full throttle, it can't pick up and go. Doesn't make any sense. Oh. Is that the problem? 40% fuel mix? Chad, I know what the problem is. You guys are gonna laugh your ass off. I've got my <laughs> reverse thrust is on. <laughs> Do you see this? This throttle is down in the reverse position. <laughs> I was literally like it's toggled on my thumbstick. So I was just not accelerating at all. I was actually gliding, but not only was I gliding, but I was at maximum reverse thrust. Oops. I was trying to turn around and fly backwards. That explains a lot, yeah. That's why we kind of just sunk like a rock. It was still locked in from the last, um, the last landing. Wow, we are coming in Landing. real fast. Oh god. Here. Here. Oh my god, we're really high up here, chat. Do we have uh, spoilers? No. Dude, we are really high up here. You can't just back it in. I was trying, though. This is so much prettier during the day. And the King Air is so much fun, too. Bet I'm screwing it up. We got a chance, though. Five. Coming in a little fast. Are those pappy lights even changing? Why are we still Newman? Why are we going so fast? I had the throttle cut full flaps down. We just soared over the spot. Still a nice landing though. Landing smoothness was good. Ground roll was decent. Landing precision, eh. eh. I could do better. 10, that's better than, that's 10 times higher than one. They want me to come in at 105 knots. The problem is I was coming in at like 140 knots. <laughs> yeah, this one's not like air challenge. This one is just like famous airport. And chat said that it's actually brand new. This airport is replacing the other one. And I was looking at the other one that is built into the city. And it's got the same title. All right, this time reverse thrust is off. You'll be happy to know. Do I, okay, what should fuel mix actually be on here? You know how hard it is to get those on the same one? Dude, reverse throttle in the air, Pog. I love how the wheels raise one at a time. All right, we're gonna get flaps tier one since we came in so hot last time. That's so cool. Okay, we should be at like l way less than 140 knots. Let's go flaps tier two. 
from way out here and uh, come in at hopefully a better angle and a better height. Dude, the king here is so nice. This plane is really cool. Alright, we're down to 120 knots. So even slower would be ideal, but I'm not going to be able to get slower. I can't believe this is like 8,000 feet up. Also, I don't think these Pappy lights work. Because I'm at five, 500. Coming in low. Throttling down. We did the cam. We did the undercarriage deployment of the landing gear. And I was like, this is so cool. Remember? We literally watched it come down. I was that I was gonna nail that one. I heard the tire squeak. Yeah, I heard the tire squeak. Can one of the wheels get stuck? And I just changed the camera too fast? It got cold and then went back up. <laughs> I don't think hydraulic failure exists, but yeah, it, it could. Uh, I mean, it is icy, but I don't know why that would matter. That was very weird. I guess I'll just leave the landing gear down for this. You were gonna beat the devs high score. Maybe. I felt, I felt pretty good. They won't let me get a real score on this one. All right, so I wanna go real slow then, yeah? It seems like because the propellers are so strong on this plane that you can go full flaps down and still have a, a lot of control. You had the gear down? Yeah, I, that was very, very weird. I don't know what it thought was the problem, but I was I was about to touch down directly in the blue. I don't know if I can duplicate it. Well, we get another look at beautiful, beautiful Ecuador. It's kind of fun being able to do this because we get to land at the spot like the last place we landed at around the world and uh, just check it out in a little bit more detail because it is a lovely area. In Quito. All right, we're at about 105 knots. Much slower than last time. These hills and valleys are crazy. Alright, landing gear is for sure down. <laughs> I can see it. I like this approach. Looks very good so far. Maybe a little low. Despite the pappy lights, which apparently aren't working. We're at about 90 knots. Stall is like 80. This feels good. Maybe a little bit more center. Reverse thrust on. Right down the middle, right down Main Street. I feel like this is going to be a pretty good one. I remember got, I got reverse thrust on. 1.2 mil. All right. We got over the 1 million hurdle. Still not even a top 5,000 score. So apparently this one's easy baby stuff uh, by comparison. At least we got a respectable score out of it. 
really good ground roll control. I thought it was smoother than it's given me credit for, but apparently we hit it a little hard. Um, precision, I did pass the blue, but I still thought it was pretty close. You beat random name. I did. <laughs> I did. So much fun. All right, that's probably a good stopping point. Ending uh, the challenges where we ended the um, the actual around the world trip. Good stuff. Where we pick up next time, we will be uh, flying from SEQM where we just landed. Mariscal Sucre International and we'll be going to Peru. So we're going to be heading down on a very windy course. I'm looking forward to it. There's a ton of POIs. Peru in general is insane. If I if there was one area <sighs> I'm allergic to Peru. It can't be helped. Just bought new computer parts. The hole in my wallet just got deeper. Well, now you can play some flight sim, maybe. But yeah, Peru has like the most interesting topography and general sights to see. We're going to be zigging and zagging next time. So I'm really excited about the that particular leg. Um, we're going to have like a major sightseeing out of Ecuador. Ecuador's got a ton of beauty, as you just saw there, too. Then we're going to have like kind of a, a more normal flight. So we're going to have two of the next three are very sightseeing oriented. Uh, if not three of the next four. So we'll we'll see how it goes. I might do a little rearranging. One or two of these. And uh, we got our first passenger jet full flight coming up soon-ish as well. We did our first jet today. That was good. We got a while yet before we get through South America, but I'm happy that we finally got into it, and I think we're going to make some big progress scoping all the beauty out there. The hard part is the time of day, dude. It is tough. So let's say we leave out of here. Actually, let's just set um, Pacific time as a departure. So it says Pacific time down here, 529 p.m. So you can see that where we were in SEQM actually gets dark by 4 o'clock. 4 p.m. is sunset for my time. <laughs> that was four hours ago. So it's going to be tough. And the further, you know, east we get, that only gets exacerbated. So I'm curious to see what the best way to handle this is. There is a temptation to just start some psycho, like, 3 a.m. stream and have it be nighttime and then day by 4.30. And then just go from there. But once we get out of uh, South America, the rest of the world is completely different. Like, Europe, for example, for me is... Oh, God. Yeah, Europe for me is going to be a midnight stream. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, 12 all the way through 10 a.m. Uh, Africa is a little bit more forgiving because of how big it is. It's huge. So on this tip, we got 8.15 a.m., you know? That's, that's doable. 8.15 sunrise to... Wait. That doesn't make any sense. No, that's sunset. My bad. That's sunset. Oh god, yeah, that's... Sunrise is 8.30 p.m. That's actually fine, because I can start some late night streams. Africa's gonna be fine. I don't mind starting my stream at like 8 to 10. We can do that a few times. Australia is the most friendly of the bunch, I think. Sunrise at like 12 to 1. Over to you know, the rest of the day till midnight. So Australia and New Zealand are gonna be beauty, uh, as is Asia for that matter. Asia's like 140, doesn't even set. So Africa and Europe are gonna be challenging. I don't think they're gonna be as challenging as South America though. 
Because the thing about these is I can do these at interesting times. And still get some fun flights in. Because this this will start sunrise at like... That's a sunrise at like 9.30. Yeah, we can do that. I thought I still had my TR on. <laughs> I, like, I've been wearing it for like 11 hours. <sighs> There's so much land to cover. But we haven't even busted out. Don't forget we got three passenger planes. And we're going to use them multiple times. Same thing for the jets. So we're going to use the jets multiple times as well. It's burned into my brain, dude. All right, we're getting a nice early finish today. It has been over 11 hours. I don't want to burn out on, you know, 16-hour stream like we did last time. So I say let's just go ahead and call it nice and early and get a nice and early start tomorrow. We'll probably do some No Man's Sky. I don't want to burn you guys out on playing game or myself for that matter. Um, it's really fun as a once-a-week journey right now. I, I kind of want to do some No Man's Sky. So we might we might do that. We might do less likely roller coaster tycoon. Um and we got like a couple more streams still on Crusader Kings. Dude, look at all the East Coast flyers over here. Look at all these little green all these green pips are people. A lot of Canadians right now. You see green, green, green. A lot of people flying in Canada. Green, green, green. I bet you there's a ton of green flying around here, too. Hey, that's my city. But yeah, we got, got a lot of more fun sights to see. I don't like stretching it out week over week because I want I just kind of want to do more. Because I'm I like flying the planes and I like checking out the different ones. I like doing the community flights and uh, learning more about each of these areas of the world. But we got some exciting stuff coming up. Um, I would say the art stream will likely be, I don't know exactly. How many flights did we do today? We did roughly four around the world flights, I think, which is pretty good. Uh, I expect to do about the same next time. Maybe five, actually. It's possible to do five next time. Unlikely, but possible. Because the fifth flight doesn't require daylight, which is nice. So if that's true, then realistically, I think the art stream is no more than three flight sim streams away I think so maybe like the fourth one from now would be reasonable and there's a there is a good reason why um, that is the way it is <laughs> what, what is that monka s for <laughs> Well, I would like to do two back-to-backs. You know what? There, there. I am of a mind to just do, like, two flights tomorrow and uh, split up the stream into two different parts so that we don't have an ultra-early start, but we still can have enough time to do, like, a couple of flights. Just to kind of fly and make some progress. The only problem is I have to, like, tear this down in the middle of the stream. It's really not that big of a deal, though. Split streams are always kind of tough. But I I think that's the only conceivable way, because I'm not going to wake up at 5 a.m. again tomorrow. So why don't we do, like... What we did today, I don't know how much is a reasonable amount of time. I think the next couple flights take roughly five hours. Because the next one has like six points of interest. <laughs> There's a lot of sightseeing. 
So what if we just... Let's say the stream tomorrow is going to start early, but not this early. Why don't we start it at like... 11. That's a good time. Why don't we start at like 11 to 12? 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, hit up a few flights, and then let chat vote on the next game. Between Crusader Kings 3 and uh, No Man's Sky. Sound good? A brunch flight. Indeed. Uh, you can't do 11. Does 1059 work for you? You're going to show up nice and early? All right, those of you who are still left, thank you all for hanging out today. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I enjoyed it immensely, and I actually just want to do it again. Because <laughs> I really just enjoy the vibe and hanging out and rocking out with all you guys. Uh, I see that uh, we've got some friends playing some video games right now. So why don't we go say hi to another fellow psycho who is playing a game I think you'll like because it involves mining stuff and gathering resources. Right up your alley. All right, Raidus. I'll send the remnants. Let's go say hi to Avic. He's been streaming for like nine hours, so I don't know how much longer he's going to be streaming. But he's playing a game called Echo, which I have not played before. So, Raiders, prepare your pog planes and swords. Get them ready. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm going to drop you off nice and early, and I'll see you again early tomorrow. Not quite as early. And we'll get a nice two-game stream in. Sound good? All right. Goodbye for now. Good night. I'm going to go eat uh, a refrigerated steak sandwich. I enjoyed my stay. Rest well, Italian chat, to you as well. Good night, gamers. Have a good one. And I'll see you again for a Sunday fun time, okay? Two game special. Bye for now. Raiders, I release you! <laughs>